Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Esports Stadium Arlington One Piece Offline Regional. And we are here today to see who will make it out on top as the next, I'm not going to say Pirate King, but, you know, just Pirate King prospect for this day. Um, my name is Uniex, and I am sitting here with my co-host. Oh, Reese the Squirrel. Hi, everybody. Very excited to come back, see some OP06 uh, meta and uh, more uh, decks uh, pop out of the pop out of everything. We're in our, our regionals, and uh, to your credit, yeah, I mean, we're not. It's not going to be the Pirate King, but like people are playing for the chance to become Pirate King here today, playing and trying to get their uh, serialized cards, trying to get uh, their invites to our nationals that will be in the midway point of the year. So that'll be really interesting to see. What are what are you what are you feeling about the meta so far? Um, I think it is every time cars get certain boosts and they, you know, they have generic effects, you have like swings in tempo with different colors. And right now it is a season for black, um, whether it is Sakazuki or Gecko Moria, there is a surprising amount of saturation between these effects with their powerful recursion effects. Uh, Gecko Moria bringing out cards that you've already sent to the grave. But between Sakazuki drawing and discarding and having that consistency or Gecko Moria just discarding a bunch of cards into uh, the trash to be able to get them later, you have multiple decks that just toolbox. Following that, you have the presence of Yellow with uh, Katakuri being able to not only be a powerful offensive leader, but just the most devastating triggers in the game, plus life gain. You have a lot of powerhouses here. There's, um, It's all gas, I think. Right now, I feel like it's all gas. <laughs> And his ability to just put one dawn and get it a make a make a one dawn commitment into a seven k attack every turn, I feel like is is under understated. It's it's almost like a slightly better than like uh what we used to see with Whitebeard being able to be able being able to just be six k every turn is very powerful. And here we're just for one dawn we're going to be seven, demanding two cards from our opponent just to counter out every turn. I think, I think like people folk don't focus on that enough just because it's like I mean Big Mom's really good, all the health's really good, but this guy's yeah. coming in for again asking for two cards non-stop but there's a couple other decks that uh bubble into our top 16s and and make of note i mean i think didn't we see a we, we saw what reju perona yamato are also the big uh decks from op06 that has seen some success nothing has won but we even had a i believe we had a white beard win at one point we 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 think that <laughs> oh wait no we had a white beard top I, I'm, I'm taking the I'm um, gonna roll that back real quick, but uh, we we're, we're expecting to see any of those other decks show up, or um, I mean, when you're looking at this, I think um, at this point, a lot of decks just don't have the same amount of consistency, and they need to see certain matchups. Like you could have a Raju get up there, but it would have to, I think, high roll. Raju kind of fits into the scheme of uh, playing a bunch of cards for not a bunch of Dawn. Uh, mm -hmm. And that that is what kind of carries it. But I mean, you have a lot of decks right now that can make the uh, that can go the distance if if they see the right matchups. Like uh, Red Purple Law isn't terrible right now. Yeah. It's not exactly the best, but it's not terrible. Um, and Whitebeard still has that big body and aggression. It's just that uh, I think Gecko Moria being in the format has caused a uh, is given these decks a much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's it's, it's giving them a it's giving them an offensive threat that Whitebeard isn't used to seeing from those sort of decks. So, I mean, I think that it's I do think that other decks can definitely make it in here. I'm just trying to think of which one has the best chance because the consistency that that's the main thing when it comes to this game. A lot of a lot of decks will be trying their best to see their crucial cards, mm -hmm. and it's just crazy that. Gecko Moria will have a one drop that puts five cards in the trash simply because it knows it's going to get all of that back. Yeah. So it's just uh, also in, in a sense in, in incentivizes them to counter out early, so you're staring down more life more often. And then uh, and then once they have access to all that in the trash, they're uh, looping Ambosoms or uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember <clears throat> Absalom Absalom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Am Absalom's just popping everything, and then like, I don't, I don't, are they are they are they still playing Luchi's? Is Luchi still in the deck? Or um, no? So Luchi, yes, uh, Luchi yeah, definitely can find a home in the deck. Uh, you don't have to run as many of them because Absalom is just it. It just thematic archetypes out with the leader. Um, mm -hmm. But Luchi can still take down multiple people at the same time. It's Rebecca that I believe is the one that trends in and out, more of a tech spot right. in Gecko Moria, while it's like a staple in uh sakazuki but we have those um really just thinking about it really yeah i mean we have i think we have a big three i think we do have yeah, a big absolutely. three in this format for sure 
Uh, interesting how popular Nell was last format compared to now. But I think that with the inclusion of cards like uh, Reject, it just benefits a more aggressive yellow leader. Yep. Is like yeah, so we 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 have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff going. Uh, we, so with that said, like you think it's it's we got the big three, right? It's Katakuri, Gecko Morio, Sakazuki. Does the big three initially necessarily mean it's just a rock paper scissors? Does just Gecko Morio beat Katakuri, Katakuri beat Sakazuki kind of angle, or is there where, um, which way do you think it goes? So it's kind of interesting to me because um, I actually I don't think it's rock paper scissors because when it comes to Sakazuki and Gecko Morio. Like if if both players draw evenly, I think in lots of cases Sakazuki does have the edge. But there are some caveats. Uh, it's almost like a red versus red back in those days, where one player sees two white beards, another player sees only one or zero. That could slide the entire momentum. If a player sees more Gekka Moris than the opponent, that could just really slide it. And then Katakuri is uh, is Katakuri. If Katakuri yeah. just fires on all cylinders, there are very few decks in the game that can withstand that. You were you were getting if you if you attack Katakuri just to get some chip damage in, and the first hits a cracker, <laughs> like that's, that's it, bro. The <laughs> Sorry. Worst feeling. Oh you're you're goodness. you're losing you're losing two to three life the following turn. Um, on top of whatever they want to do outside of that, it's just. It's funny if if a category sees enough triggers and cruises effortlessly into their big moms, and then you're just sitting at that one point where you know you get burned down to one just for them to reject you, and then you know like Amar will block her to the side and just start swinging it. There's nothing you can really do, so it's weird because I don't see it as rock paper scissors. It's like three good decks and uh, the extent of the high roll. Yeah, yeah, the extent of the high roll on that one. Yeah, I, I if I had to pick a best one for me, it would definitely be Katakuri. Just being able to see seven drop mom on curve, and then if you get to see multiple ten drop moms, you just get so <laughs> much value. And then they just have a, like a, ni- a nice answer for everything. Oh, your opponent decided to counter out heavily, so they have more life. All right, now my Gadatsu is stronger. Uh, you win aggressive first life cracker. Now I can double attack you and just get all that all that tempo back um there's just so and then on, on top of that all the trigger all the other triggers i'm not even talking about oh you oh gecko moria very okay oh heavy all right i have paraspera yeah uh gecko uh, gecko i'm sorry katakuri uh paraspera uh, on ko replaces the replaces itself uh ilkiku heals a card so like you're always getting like you have these little answers for everything the other decks are doing that as long as you see it you should be good but uh Correct. i think we should uh transition talk about the tournament uh layout format a little bit more so let's swoosh us that yeah. way we we know it's a uh, 35 minutes rounds best of best of one so uh, no no uh no ties it's, we only have one winner <laughs> the whole time and then the the traditional extra time uh five minutes and then into turns uh, i think uh zero one two three or both players get two turns depending on how you want to think about that uh and then uh going surprising yep so we got some brand new participation prizing, pretty much brand new. It's very, very, very fresh. But you've got the uh, 2K from the OG starter deck for green, Scratch Manapu. You've got a Gum Gum Jet Pistol from the OG red starter deck. And that art is amazing. You got okay. Sanji. <laughs> you got Sanji over here, the 2 cost. I mean, I might let Reese talk about Sanji because I'm uh, I'm Team Zoro. I'm, I'm, I'm a Sanji you. stand, dude. This card is so <laughs> sick, man. I'm Civil so, War. So more alt arts for Sanji. That's doing my man justice. That's, I'm so stoked. And then we got a uh, we got cos- uh, cosmetic makeover brand new. Like they actually fixed his hairline. It's insane. If you actually look at the original card versus the uh, <laughs> reprint, like there, there's there's a good four inches that it, it has been pulled up. But it's it's a beautiful card. It is literally a beautiful card. Everything here is pretty relevant i think um mm-hmm. like to just running your deck scratch and a poo maybe the one that's a little little bit like the art here is actually great the, the oh, colors so how it pops yeah but all these participation prizing cards are just top notch it's very nice to see them go back and start replacing some of the uh because in set one we had a lot of the anime clip arts and seeing them go back and like you no know, giving all each, each card its own proper love its own proper art is so so cool to me and i love that they're doing that and then on top of that, we're going on some uh, event pack three. It's also being mm-hmm. giving out, giving out some promos. Uh, we got the promo Zoro. I believe this is the first way to get this Zoro. The Zoro is very talked about in terms of uh, how good yellow decks and Katakuri is strictly off, purely off of the uh, the, uh, the trigger, trigger effect. effect. Yes. Um, and then it's on Land of Wano. I, I feel like Yamato, if Yamato can get uh, his hands on a, a couple more copies of this card, I feel like we may be able to see it. K-O-ing a four cost out of life, or being able to play this for four, 
and the or which plays off of uh the mihawk from the starter deck that yamato also runs he's a slash mm -hmm. character of course um and then being able to heal it with momonosuke like i think i just feel like this card has a lot of potential and then uh again so a reprint of the the opo one law promo we got a promo purple yamato and mm -hmm. the monet from a lot also run ran in the fortress yamato who doesn't have a proper altar as well yeah i mean like that this uh this zoro has been sought after for a while like the moment <laughs> it was like spoiled people like we started seeing it in lists across seas and uh we've just been kind of wondering when we were gonna get this card so it's good to have it now it's good to see if uh after it circulates people are gonna see um trafalgar law always clean really cool so character good. um yeah like blocker from starting this is tight but we have like we have just a good slew of cards with unique art um some sought after things but it's one piece when have the when is the prizing not been sought oh after but God, speaking of sick. for real speaking of sought after prizing though i think we have the we have the top cut prizing like the top top cut prizing oh, oh no, wait we're, we're doing the drugs <laughs> we're still for his his i apologize <laughs> i apologize i apologize i didn't hear the music i did not hear the drums coming oh, yeah. Oh no, you didn't believe. No, we're <laughs> we, we have moved since moved on from the straw hat dawn of 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 yore, and we now are giving out uh gear fifth moon luffy uh dawns i don't even know the proper name for this car quite I yet, mean, but it's obviously gear it's, fifth. It's, it's the moon boy. in the background, sun god nika ready to go. Joy what a cool god. what a cool card! It's it's going to be foil. It's got the the text on it all over the place. It's so sick. I don't know very clean and look at this top 64 eustace captain kid and this is the seven drop that came in the three captain starter deck uh he's coming down you can dawn minus one you know get your thousand when he swings it happens to very 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 good top end to purple and this art is magnificent uh no spoilers but you know it's like not like kid gets shine everywhere so it's good to see him get shine on these cards i think actually to be honest kid has been kid has been that dude in the card game more so yeah. than he's ever been in the actual story. <laughs> like, like, he's got some dude. of the best cards for sure. I mean, dominated set one with the A drop. A drop even coming back with the Yamato deck once again, and then mm -hmm. his purple his purple collection is pretty sick too. I think the five drop blocker has been very relevant for a lot of especially for purple Luffy. This card has been seen in and out a little bit, but it's definitely always a consider a card you're considering putting in if you're not even going into this oh, yeah, he's, conversation. He's a powerhouse. And now speaking of purple powerhouses again, we've got a uh, four cost law. From the same deck the uh, three captain starter deck this guy is is a bit of a monster not only is he a blocker but as long as your opponent has a uh, healthy hand he's gonna be able to rip two cards from them randomly and that could just spell disaster for a lot of decks maybe not for gecko moria but gecko moria is literally built different um but for many decks you know this guy <laughs> can snag a lot of cards from your hand um potentially putting your next couple turns plays into mm -hmm. the trash um but yeah like he's also a very cool card and this art's amazing Nothing puts the fear in God in me when I'm playing a purple player and they just go, how many cards in hand? Seven. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. And then you just lose two cards at random. And it's random too. And they have to start rolling the dice to be fair. I just don't. I'm terrified of this card. And it's a block or two on top of that. Scary. And now we are at the big shebang. You have two Yonkos chilling here. And I love it. This, uh, this Luffy, also coming from the three captain structure deck. Oh, a lot of love from that. Is just mm -hmm. a really, really good top end for red. Seen in and out of the format, um, very like it, it was popular when it first came out. But this is one of those cards where I can easily see it just coming in back into the game when it has the correct place. The ten drop rush on this card, the ability to destroy a card if it's blocked, just pretty much says I'm doing damage or I'm taking two cards off your board. If you want to block me, go ahead, get in front of this 11k body. But I'm mm -hmm. also taking something else, and that's crazy. And then you also sure. have. Yeah, his uh, his inspiration, his mentor, you have Shanks. And Shanks is just, like, this card was amazing when we first got it in set one. Mm -hmm. This art does not let down. And uh, this is this is a kingly, this 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 picture has kingly aura. Like, both of these cards yeah. are right here. This, <laughs> I, this was considered, I always considered this Luffy just, like, the straight the straight upgrade of this Shanks, which, like you said, like, his mentor and everything kind of kind of fills that that role. Like, the Shanks was interesting because, like, you couldn't block with the, your, all the weenies that were a prevalent uh, starter deck slash uh, set one format. Mm -hmm. Now, like, the, the game's evolved a little bit. Now, now we, we're inclined to have an effect that just is getting rid of bodies, which is pretty Hey, once um, we get the four emperors, once we get four emperor cards, ooh, four emperor deck. Okay, 
Uh, four Emperor deck. They don't. They're not supposed to be working together. And we're gonna move on. Second place gets this Matt Don Quixote or Don. I guess I'll call it a Don Quixote man. I mean, at one yeah. point while was a Don Quixote pirate. We got Trafalgar Law, the Vanilla from uh, the Dressrosa uh, set, and then on top of that, the Rosanante Secret Rare, uh, highlighting those two arts. Second place gets a really sick Matt. Um, yeah, the. I'm sure people are going to be after this card. Like you said, John, uh, Trafalgar Law is a very popular character. And the, take us in with the grand prize. Look, they knew the assignment. Uh, <laughs> first place, Matt, with the absolute waifu tax. Uh, <laughs> like, this is this is it. Like, they actually, yeah, nah, I can't, I can't even hate on this. They understood the assignment completely. This Matt is beautiful. It's bright, oh, so it's colorful, and it's got some of our favorite characters from One Piece right on it. Uh I'm trying to think of which one I'd like more because this is this is this is a cute mat. The other one just goes hard. Law and Resonante is a crazy combo. Oh, so like, man. ah, yeah. Now people are battling it out for great, great prizes. And while most people here are just going to be happy to make it to top eight and receive mm -hmm. all the uh the prize cards as well as the cereal, we are gonna have somebody walk away with one of these mats. And we are here today to cast through those rounds to see who does come out on top here. Uh, I think I think we skipped it over at uh, the top sixteen. Uh, top sixteen will also be getting uh, invite uh, their invites to the national tournament later this year. We will be having two national tournaments this year, so there will be a mid season uh, nationals air quote uh, national qualifier. I guess I think I th mm -hmm. world qualifier. That's what it is. Um, so now this year we'll have we'll see uh, two chances for people to qualify into worlds for a total of four players out of the North American region to qualify for worlds. Will be very interesting uh and then let's let's uh, we talked about a little at, at the opening but uh we definitely had a lot of events before this one this isn't the first one mm -hmm. um uh yeah we'll get to see some of those results uh, we got a great record keeper uh keeping track <laughs> of everything a great source for it all um but as you can see we were talking about like there is a big three and you you see them taking up the pie chart again and again yeah what's actually crazy is seeing that like gecko moria and Katakuri are the ones that, for the most part, are vying for dominance. But you do have Sakazuki always leading or always being like one of those three. Uh, the mm -hmm. first, like the Latinum Online regionals, you see like the dominance of Katakuri. But it's actually interesting to see that, uh, like we were talking about Reiju, Reiju's a steady contender. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like Yamato can kind of sneak in there. I even see a sliver in the uh, latest one for uh, for a Law. But we have a lot of decks here that are. The trend. The trend seems to be a big three with Reiju slipping in. Reiju or Yamato kind of just like mm -hmm. slipping in to fill that up. But um, looking at this, what are your thoughts? Uh, it, I mean, it, it's interest. The biggest interesting to me is like, like we were saying earlier, is like it is a big three, but it's not like a solidified big three. Like I advocate that Katakuri is probably the best of the big three, mm -hmm. but like in between these three separate tournaments, we have different the different orientations of pie charts with um uh well, gecko won twice katakuri won once so sakazuki hasn't been able to take a win yet but it's definitely relevant like in the in the latin america it's got the lowest uh share of the pie chart but then it's second place in uh the ppg online regional and then in top cut it's just as big as just as represented as katakuri yeah um, a little less but yeah whatever math um <laughs> but you see what i'm saying like it's not solved like one deck isn't just slowly taking over like we've seen in the past with uh like white beard white beard would be 10 percent, and then 20 percent, and 30 percent. you're like wow it's just completely everyone's on this deck now um, I, definitely variance at least in the big three yeah not the same amount of dominance and real quick i do like it says here on previous events courtesy of eggman events thank you for compiling this info it's a very very good tool but like just looking at this it does you do kind of see some trends now i hmm. i am interested to see what goes on today because there are some fringe leaders like i i would be happy to see some more um some more red purple laws and now i'm not gonna let my yellow bias get the best of me uh it's interesting to see anel get that far when you have decks that like one of the anel's biggest weaknesses is just people building boards hmm. and then proceeding to hold on to them because you have to have a certain amount of attacks minimum just to get through but uh, it's interesting seeing a Nell get through in that top cut to uh, in the uh, the top cut on line regionals top cut. That sounds weird. Mouthful. It's yeah. weird seeing it get there with the way the format is set up. But I am just very excited to see some decks really go hard today. Uh, see if any of the fringe ones make it in. But I think it's safe to say we should be expecting the same big three in. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, and that that too, like to me, the craziest thing will always be like, and now goes from in a single set went from winning our national tournament to struggling to break into top 32s and top 16s. Like it's just we that that deck is just fallen to the wayside and i think it just comes down to yeah like black just has way, the biggest tool in its arsenal now to build bigger boards and let you establish the amount of bodies you need to break into a category's uh or a nails uh, life right usually typically requiring three attacks every turn if like you don't have three attacks mm -hmm. you can't you can't beat a an now and Physically. sometimes four with yamato and then goes on and on from there yeah and previously if an anel breaks your board then they know that like they're pretty much the momentum is almost irreversible but now with the gecko moria they can break your entire board and you tap eight and then they have to break your board again so mm -hmm. it's just they're they don't have the same amount of protection via game mechanics that they used to and yeah we that does that, that in fact it impacted a lot but yeah we uh i am definitely excited to see what comes out on top today and i hope we get some spicy spicy features yeah. So, I mean, uh, today, uh, I didn't, I think that I think it's a thousand person tournament today. Um, so it should be a lot. It should be nine, 10 rounds. I forget. Uh, it should be 10. Oh. Nine, nine rounds. rounds so, Excellent. So, yeah. So it's a thousand, thousand, thousand people, nine rounds. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> At least uh, four and a half hours, depending on how fast everything can get done. But it's going to be a day. Hope you guys uh, stick around. We'll get we'll get into round one as soon as we can. Um, probably uh, we'll uh, we're probably set to start in nine minutes or so. So mm -hmm. we'll uh, see you then. Hope you hope you guys enjoy the show. We're excited to cast it. So see you guys momentarily. We'll see ya. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. We got a welcome back to the play TCG online TCG or play TCG on on One Piece TCG Arlington offline regionals. Um, I'm Reese the Squirrel, and my co-host here, Uni X T C G, chilling. Uh, we're we're uh we're we got a little bit of delays. We're we're sitting here. Uh, we we we're filling out the wait list, making sure we get the maximum amount of players playing in this tournament, which is gonna end up taking some time. So we're just gonna you know start to just fill in some space, talking about some of the decks we've been playing, talk about the upcoming ban list that uh, could shake up the meta. I know. What, what, what exactly is going to hit? I know Reject to one, or is it straight up banned? Uh, Reject is gone. Reject completely gone. Okay. Um, What? Is it Houndblaze, I believe, as well? Uh, I'm trying to think. I know Sakazuki is banned. Sakazuki is banned. He's getting an errata. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> they announced how we're receiving that uh that errata or that errata that uh that promo sakazuki yeah uh, i don't believe so yeah great eruption okay uh, there yeah. we go there we go there we go yeah, great, great eruption i knew i knew how blaze got worse but i was like is it been like no yeah so you essentially right now uh with the with the banning of sakazuki and the reintroduction of his new errata card mm -hmm. sakazuki actually now has to discard um uh, marine to get the minus effect and he just doesn't draw so that's like oh it's there is so a, it's so a lot. like i feel like they overdid it i i can't help but feel like they overdid it um like because like the draw like you could have kept like you could have just removed one of the effects and i think we would have had an established leader that wouldn't be crazy because part of the reason sakazuki is so good is um you always have access to that one the draw one discard is like like doing two things at once for you but like also like just straight up the combination of black blue is really good and like i would almost argue like if we had just kept the draw one trash one with the removal of great eruption you probably would have been in a realistically strong state still and fine Let's but see. i don't know i don't know how i feel about the band because i like i know rejects played but people only play reject at one and is it is it really is reject really the card winning all of katakuri's games like i'm sure there's I, plenty of games where they don't even play the card and win so i don't think it's it's winning every single game but i do think that every time it's played effectively you win like oh, that card, okay. so you think it's that, that card good. is yes that card is just very very nasty i mean there's just the ability to take that last life away just immediately is just kind of wild and then you're looking at um mm -hmm. great eruption is great eruption is the one that makes me that turns my head the most because great eruption is such a it's such a connector card 
You draw one, you minus two, and it's nothing about that would scream power, but it enables so many other cards. It is interesting to me. It's the, the draw one. Eruption. Yes. Right. It's the like, draw one. That's the thing that makes it so good. <laughs> <laughs> Sakazuki, they say, are you drawing cards? But the part that kills me about that is that, like, without diving too much into it, we're already seeing leaders in OPO8 that mm-hmm. make Sakazuki look baseline. Yeah. Like, it. Like we're getting more and more mm-hmm. cards that just allow you to plus. Um, and so it, it's it's interesting seeing Sakazuki take that hit for mm-hmm. OPO7 when it looks like Sakazuki's level of power will become the We're starting to get met, forward. maybe. I could see, like, uh, like again, I think banning the leader might have been a little too much. I, I feel like it should have been a, a little off the gas pedal. I think, I, I definitely, I personally think that Great Eruption should have been removed. I think the draw one, like, the whole point of Black is the, the ability to re- combo reduction with a removal. But if your reduction is already replacing itself in terms of card value, you essentially got rid of a card for one card. You go one for one with your opponent at that point. And that's a, that's starting to get a little too good, especially when you're supposed to be the combo deck, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like, And so, yeah. Like, I, th- I think great that's where i would have been i was like the whole time i was like let's hit great eruption mm-hmm. maybe like a different black card like rebecca or moria maybe should have been it but I, I was always on the great eruption train yeah i was uh i was about to say like when it comes to great eruption i think great eruption is literally the product of when a card pull changes when black first came out it was incredibly hard to keep a hand because everything worth playing it's- required to discard something sakazuki kobe garp your destruction cards were dropping so great eruption mm-hmm. was a card that was supposed to stem that but as we got to a point where they realized wow people don't want to go minus three in hand destroy a six drop so we should yeah. probably start printing some cards that maybe you know have thresholds in your trash or you know have yes. different things and that's when great eruption became a plus really instead of a break even or that's you know fair. a slightly less minus so i can get that i think the card pool evolved around great eruption and made it better than it initially was because like I just, that was crazy but like i definitely i definitely agree that the the directional shift of black going from oh uh play my sakazuki pitch a card destroy your or ko your card um, that and then transitioning it from a discard thing to uh, oh now my trash uh, send it back I'm using it my trash as an engine as a source and it's, I'm the only color that really does that I think that was definitely a, a high point of like the directional shift of like that made it good like that's why we're seeing it dom- or perform so well but I, I think that was necessary because again like you oh, said it, no it, one it, wants it, to be playing Sakazuki and it, pitching three cards for oh my gosh it, it it was it was it was so awful it was like take my marine for <laughs> play suru play sakazuki discard a card blow up that and i'm like bro did you just go minus three to get rid of a seven drop <laughs> like, oh it feels rough it definitely felt rough back in set two um but yeah i, I can see that like the, the game got a little too fast for great eruption i um i think that right now I'm not going to be sad to see Sakazuki go next set. I just don't, I, I feel like in the future, like just like how Whitebeard eventually, mm-hmm. like all that stuff came back. I think we could see a point where that, that leader maybe comes back to its like full form, but that's just, that's just my speculation. I, I'm in this uh, space right now looking at these cards and I do think that, um, I do think that reject is, I think reject is a skill shot. And I think that's what okay. that's one of the things that makes it a little harder to judge. A lot okay. of players will use reject wrong. Oh, okay. A lot of players who use it correctly, it's just it'll just end the game. But I think that a yellow has even a Maru is a card that like looking at it, you could kind of side eye it. Like its trigger can be very very good. Mm-hmm. Its normal use could be backbreaking. Like the four K on top of just putting or wait, sorry, four K or three K, three K, three K on top of putting something to the side. There's just like. It's not just get your blocker out of the way. You know, speaking of Sakazuki, though, we're circling back to that. Do you think if he had more of a Perona effect, it would be good? Like you can draw one or you can minus. I think I would like that. I think I think Perona, even though it's 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 like we in terms of the big three, there's the big three, then there's in my mind Yamato, Reiju, and then right below that is is Perona existing, trying to like creep up. And so I think Perona is not the best leader, but it's not by any means a bad leader. It's definitely 
in conversation it does top and i do like these mod these 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 more i'm always a fan of i, I call them module cards mm. where i can do something or i can do the other thing and I, I think we're seeing a lot of that coming up where it's like oh i'll rest your guy or i'll kill or ko a guy that's rested um I can feel that. and so if if it was like oh I'll draw one, discard one, or I'll do the win attacking. Um, it, it'd, it'd probably be hard to to bound, like actually get that written in a card because like oh, one's a main effect, one's a win attacking, but you can only use one one, one once per turn. Might might read weird, weird on a card, but I, mm -hmm. I think that might have balanced Sakazuki a lot. But I think the biggest at the end of the day, the biggest thing for Sakazuki and in general why Black is doing so well is because we're starting to discover that Black is the only color. A, a lot of the removal in this game is cost based right mm -hmm. the only color does not remove a card based on cost is red but they have their own way to combo into a ko um they they'll you know uh otama into jet pistol was the classic against green mm -hmm. for a long time um but black is the only color that can reduce cost making other removal better right so hound blaze is realistically a big problem because black when comboed with black we're starting to get rid of six cost cards and now i'm also attacking for 8k off of 5k body assuming and it makes it really it just makes every color like everyone's talking about you know zephyr was really talked about early on oh black my gosh and, yeah right because comboing black with purple is really good comboing black with blue is really good um everyone talks about how black and red don't work because they're essentially like i've explained they're they're good two, colors they're two touching. different ways of yeah they don't touch each other but green and black we're seeing it with perona perona does a lot of stuff too like bringing back the set one x drake on play ko rested forecast uh uh perona's resting and then they can like, uh, as long as you have an ice age you're removing a nine cost um it is that part is very strong like so while we're on perona i'd like to know your thoughts because I personally feel like Prona is the on paper princess. Her ceiling theoretically is so good. And you see that sometimes playing her or watching her getting played. But my Lord, like when you play two colors and um, I, I kind of refer to them as uh, enablers and payoffs. Black has always been an enabler and payoff type color. You have the enablers mm -hmm. that reduce the cost, the payoffs that blow them up. And when you mix, that's what you get as well. Like the blue, yeah. the green, the purple, those are all payoff cards for the most part. And it's the black cards. I mean, Rob Lucci gets in there, but the black cards and the enablers. With Perona, there has not really been a black X leader that I feel you uh, you feel more when you don't open or draw them in equal amounts. Like when Perona does not see her enablers, X Drake is just sitting there like... Yeah, it doesn't do too well, right? And then when you when you see like all of your payoffs, but you don't really see like I, I feel like you can draw really out of sequence with Perona. Absolutely. And it just makes you wonder why you're not playing Gecko. But that's yeah. my take on it. It's I, I think it's a little bit of the color combination. Um, like Sakazuki has plenty of black navy cards to go along with it. It has plenty of black blue navy cards. So we get a lot of value, especially this set with both Tashigi and brand new searching out navy cards. You're getting so much value out of those two car, uh, color combinations in navy. But Perona suffers from a, a little bit of, yeah, just not being, ha it doesn't have the, uh, the discard outlet that uh, Gecko Moria does. So you're not filling your trash as efficiently and getting all the pieces you need early enough to make a lot of that thriller bark stuff really where you want it to be. And then on top of that, like you said, like there's just no green cross. There's no, <laughs> there's not a lot of cross between green and black in terms of archetypes for searchers. Like there, there are a few green navy cards. Like I mentioned, the the, the X Drake. There's a Kobe. There's, there's just they, they they're there. Uh, Rosanante is another one. Um, but then there's not enough to like justify a full black package because you're not drawing into a lot of it and a lot of black cards can be you know bricks in hand which is another thing that means talk is so good and it's like I, I think perona probably gets hit by the great eruption more than anything maybe i'm crazy maybe that maybe that's no, no. i don't think so because it needs the consistency um like me and a bunch of friends we used to joke or like dog anytime your leader is x green it just got worse. You you lost a life to have access to Green's uh, card pool, and that's just that's a detriment. More than, more than it's, uh, the only the only the only one who's made it work. Uh, uh, maybe maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm missing one. But the only one that's made uh, Green work, actually, in my opinion, is Law from set one. 
they were mm. able to combo like again they were able to combo two archetypes the supernovas because they were supernovas in red and green and then they were able to fuel the life loss by looping a bonnie looping a nami to draw that extra card that essentially you're down against other decks and then you would supplement being one life less by flooding the board with blockers so you're just each oh, one yeah. of those blockers wears an extra life so green's oh, yeah. done it i know the other two green cards that were uh, the other green leader, air quotes, that was any relevant was is the Yamato. But I feel like most people lean on the the yellow. I, my preferred, that's another topic, is like all the Yamato builds are... It's cool that we have a, a relevant deck that's just, you can be playing in five different ways. Oh, but yeah. I don't feel like Yamato is good because of the green cards. I think the double, it, you're, when you're using the green cards, you're just kind of relying on the fact that you're a double tech leader and sometimes you have yellow cards to trigger. But it's that's just me. 100 percent when uh when you have a leader that does what it does regardless of the deck build you have the freedom to build whatever type of deck you want uh mm -hmm. we saw that with eustace kid in set one he yep. literally had a very defensive deck with a lot of utility because he was the aggro by himself if needed be yep. uh yamato is the same thing like yamato is that like they're the same thing so it's like it's cool to see how the format can how that deck can shift depending on what the format needs from it. So I am hoping that we see some Yamato players on uh, on cam today. I would love to see that deck, and if it could be in different variants every time we had it on stream, that would be mm -hmm. cool. But uh, I am very much so interested in just seeing how this one plays out because the trends are setting, and there's not a lot of room. I think the black decks are kind of tight in terms of what they have to run. Uh, the yeah. package is at this point pretty solidified, but Agreed. I still do want to see what other decks can prey upon that because that is the flip side of a format as as uh, settled as this one currently is. People mm -hmm. know their targets and can build or play into those strengths or weaknesses. So I think that that's going to be something that we're going to see today. But we'll, I mean, I guess the question is, is, is tech... And uh, tech and play style going to outweigh sheer consistency because that is 100% what the black decks bring. I know in, uh, in in other card games, I would always advertise that like the greeter, the greedier your list, the the less chances you have to win. But it's the most likely deck to win is what I would say. Like mm. like all because when you think about it, when you're greedier, you're less consistent. But at the end of the day. As long as you're consistent for 10 rounds, it doesn't matter if the 10 rounds after the tournament or before the tournament were awful, bad draws. As long as those 10 rounds, you went good, you won the tournament. So that's, that's I feel like there there are card games where, like, or scenarios where we'll see, like, you know, the greedier lists are the ones winning a game or winning a tournament, winning the day. But in One Piece, I just, I don't think we're there. I think we're, we're still in, like, consistency is king. And we don't have enough draw or search power to really bring out all these cards that we need to just win a game in a high roll scenario. So we just need to be able to guarantee we see it every game. Correct, correct. Uh, I guess as a dark horse, what do you think about Uta right now? Now that we finally got Mihawk, uh, um, the green Uta, right? Not the correct. not the red purple one. Uh, no, the red purple one. We what's that? <laughs> <laughs> huh? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> a flashback. Flashback. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think I like it. I I do. I feel weird about that deck because I I know some of the promo cards that like I think one or two of the promo cards that were released and very hard to get are somewhat relevant for the deck. Maybe as a one of or two of. So it's hard to truly see an Uta like air quotes full power. But plenty of Utas do well without even any of those promos. It's just uh, I'm invincible and playing all the film, drawing two cards a turn is always going to be good. That's why Reju's. It's one of the biggest reasons Reju is good is being able to draw two cards Correct. a turn. Um, it definitely has one of those uh, one of those eye razor cards. Like whenever I read New Genesis, I'm just like, okay, Jeff T. <laughs> okay, yeah. let me let me just uh, search That's, top three and refund my so uh, my good. Gun. Like. Uh, it's so good, man. Oh, man. And then it's just, I think it suffers from like not enough 2Ks. You really have to be, ideally, you really have to be on a 50 card film deck. I know, I know, I know people are on Mihawk and there's a lot of combos with Mihawk. I know people really like Eustace Kid, um, the, the eight drop Eustace Skip from set one. And it, it just comes down, I feel like. When I watch an Uta game, all I'm watching for is did they hit off their leader effect? If Correct. they and and if they miss, if you whiff twice 
as Uta, I think it's over. I think you lost the game. And it, it, it seems so minor, but it's enough. I oh, think. no. It's, you put a Dawn on your leader to literally be a 6K. Like, that's a vanilla effect. Um, it's it's kind of interesting because the film package has always been there since set two. But this is just the only deck that doesn't hand out after using it twice. And that's, like, the, like, yeah, the coolest the big... thing about it. Like, that's literally it. But, like, I think that... um. It's one of those archetypes that's very interesting because it's it's an archetype that I don't think ever runs the risk of accidentally getting too strong. If Uta, yes. if Green Uta gets better, it's because Bandai specifically went out of their way to make a green film card to make it better. Yeah. Like, and they it's also not have just... of two Ks, right? That's the oh, dude, it's if, if very they hard got to... two two Ks, two <laughs> green film two Ks, that deck would be that deck would be type nice. Because, like, I will tell you, so that's that's some of the only times where it just feels bad when you just, like, you run four Ezo and you bottom deck three Ezo in, like, three turns, and you're like, how? Like, literally how? Yeah. But, um... Is yeah, that your I pet mean, deck? Is that, like, the deck you're, like, hoping we see? Maybe sneak oh, in? Oh, I had a, I had a terrible, terrible <laughs> run. Uh, so, it, it, no, this is, this is awful. So, last time I took Uta into an online regional... Uh, I had spent the previous week just round robining at my house. I built like Purple Luffy, Enel, Katakuri, Sakazuki, and I was just going through the rounds with it. It was before OPO6. And I got in, and my first round, I faced um, my first round, I faced Purple Luffy and destroyed it. Second round, I faced Enel, destroyed it. Third round, saw Sakazuki, and I was so happy because that was my favorite matchup with it, and I destroyed it. And I said on my stream, I said, if I can just face Sakazuki for the rest of the event, I'm looking at a serial card. <laughs> I proceeded to lose to Sakazuki five times in a row. I said, hey, it was, oh, no. huh? and some of them were hilarious. Like oh, I, I, no. I had games where I missed, I missed my top deck three different times. I had a game where my opponent thought I was going to play seven drop Luffy for like four turns in a row. And I was like, wow, I wish I had that card. Like <laughs> it was, it was bad. like my stream. They were like sitting here, like donating and also giving me condolences. I was like, Bro. like I'm like sitting. Oh my gosh. It was so bad. I think I cursed myself. I think I cursed myself. Yeah, when I, when I literally declared it, like you the commentated, first time, cursed yourself. How could oh, you dude. do that, bro? No. Dude, I tried not to let it get to me either. They were like, no, "Wow, you're hard. doing really well." I was like, "Yeah, I'm doing all right." And then I have that soccer I was like, "Yeah, let me just see it again and again." Oh, nah, nah, bro. Well, it's over. It's over. Yeah, yeah. I would say I'd say my pet deck that I want to see because I see it at locals all the time. And this guy kills with that deck. It the uh, Arlong. There's so many good yellow and green triggers in this game. And being able to watch Arlong pop off on people with all those good yellow card yellow trigger cards you have now. It's so awesome. Just every there are some nasty every ones. time I, he, he kills it. And I'm rooting for him every time. And like I just I don't see the success beyond locals with that deck. I, I want to see it do well. It it can get some high rolls because like uh, I'm not gonna try to embarrass myself and pronounce her name. But um, I believe uh, she's the one that when she gets KO'd, she can uh, restore her life. Oh, oh Kiku? Uh... Kiku Nojo, I guess? Yeah, but... yes, there we go. Kiku Nojo. Uh, just, oh my gosh, hitting those off of Arlong on like your first couple turns is just so gross. It's like, who, like literally who asked for this? Like, it's just got like it's so much pressure. Oh, I love Cracker. Cracker, that like, goes hard. Oh, it's man. Crack what, 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 what deck does Cracker not go hard in the minute, please? I still, oh, still this day. Well, yeah, but you could tell, you could turn two, play it, swing, play it, and then if they attack you on their turn two, it's your first life. It's over, dude. You got two double attackers. They're crying. It's over. It's so gross. But speaking of things that are not gross, the anti-gross, I do believe we are going to go to break to start mm -hmm. to set up our first uh, feature and uh, get that on screen so you guys can start enjoying the marvelous gameplay that is a One Piece card game. Yep. All right. Yep. We'll see you in a bit. We're going to see you later. All righty then. So we are here for round one once again with my co-host 
Risu. We are seeing a funny matchup this go. We've got Nami versus Katakuri. So excited. <laughs> best Navigator versus Best Brother. Millet yes. versus Healing. We're going to see uh, this Katakuri <laughs> heal to like 10, man. This is going to be so funny. Oh, this this is probably a dream round one for Nami because like just all the all the things that make yellow good or no, I guess not all the things, but like no triggers. We don't have to worry about triggers because that life doesn't exist to us. That's not how we're trying to win the game. We're trying mm -hmm. to mill out. We're hoping that we get a little lucky in uh in our life, getting a couple triggers like a, a Sanji's peel off or two would be great. But are we still running? Are the builds still running the uh, impel down all stars to get the sneaky draw two in? I, think I haven't are. seen that. In, I like oh, I haven't have seen that in a while, but I mean, I would be I would not be surprised. Like it can mm, still okay. be in there, but like that's that's one of those cards where it's like if it's in the life, it's in the life. So mm -hmm. like that's that's the whole thing. I just haven't seen it. But then again, I don't just sit here hovering over Nami players. And these events so it, i mean very well could still be there it's just i i do agree this is a very interesting matchup mainly simply because uh these decks do not interact with each other mm -hmm. in the typical ways uh katakuri is not going to have a chance to get lots of its triggers popped um it's also going to have a really weird like life gain thing but at the same time katakuri has the ability to do life damage through effect and right. with that combined with a potential reject while you're already sitting with maybe two, three big mom tens on board, could spell insta game mm. for the Nami player if all those turn sideways after a reject is used. However, on Nami's end, um, it's the magic number to hit Nami with is nine. And Katakuri will be coming in for seven. There's a lot of good value swings from Katakuri's side, but a lot of those swings are for the most part, easily available by Nami while they get closer to their goal of zero cards in deck until you start seeing cards like a drop category and uh big mom. So yeah. this is going to be a very, very interesting matchup where both decks are going to have certain things easier to them. But uh yeah, they're just not playing the game that each one of them would like to play fully. So yeah, I, I kind of wonder, like even though Nami has that sort of inevitability to it, Nami probably actually doesn't want the game to go too long because Katakuri will turn a corner the moment it hits 10 dawn. 10, 10 mom. If you can see enough 10 moms, like that's just, that's over, right? Like 12k body that's going to heal one and you're, well, you, the heal, it's going to remove one life, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just way too powerful. And, and we, as the stream gets to see, this is our uh, matchup setup. We got our Katakuri player on the left, Nami player on the right. Red versus blue, Bryson versus Daniel. Uh, we got our graphics. We got hand cams. We got player cams. This should be a fun day. It's. Just, I think this is one of the. This is this is us stepping up our game and showing us like what you know what production value really is. I I agree. I'm also kind of sitting here. I'm still. I'm already. I'm deep in the tank talking about this matchup. Looking at this, one of the things that's going to be a kind of nerf to Katakuri is normally when you gain life that's essentially a draw it may not be a draw the turn you set that life but it's a draw whenever they deal damage to you nami doesn't have to really deal damage and likely won't so anytime a card goes from the top of the deck into life that's just a card that's potentially lost so uh, yeah, when those big moms come down that's going to be a little interesting yeah just just being able to ignore an entire mechanic of yellow from nami and still win the game is, is an advantage but I would I would say that what like you said keep what keeps not or Katakuri like strong in this game is again being able to attack for seven every turn for one dawn commitment will catch up. Uh, you'll you don't Nami doesn't want to be using uh, like usually typically I see like you know you two k out of any six k attack but once they start hitting seven you have to start using those options or those events. And then once you're using those events like using you know let's let's say like a four k counter into into a 7k starts feeling bad it's still only one card and and sometimes these cards mill but uh, just being the, the life damage that uh the the direct life damage or the the onamis i know kind of plenty of categories are running onamis to to just run the banish and if you get that attack in just making nami's life a non-factor because nami does rely on some of those triggers like mm -hmm. I, I think keeps it even and i think i i think like at first, you're like, oh, Nami no, means no triggers from yellow. It's a Nami favorite, but I just don't, don't. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I definitely, I definitely feel like Nami has a a much more comfortable ride until Katakuri hits its top end. But I was actually thinking, even some of the cards that Katakuri would normally like 
you know, mm-hmm. scaling up don't exactly work the same way. Like such as um, when Katakuri, if Katakuri had to play the seven drop, there's just in no universe where the Nami player just takes that damage. They can just add a card. And by the way, while I'm adding that card to your life, I hope it's a card that I didn't want to see because I'm not giving it to you. Like there's going to be, uh, it, it's going to be interesting. I am very interested to see how this works out. And uh, also random tidbit because I am a stand for them. Um, the set three, the set three alt art leaders with the Samishi ink. Very, very, uh, I, I love that art style. I, I feel like I'm these? in the minority. I, I feel like I'm in the minority, but the, the ink, the ink brush, like, oh my gosh, I okay. loved these Katakuri, Luchi, Ace. Those are just, those are generational masterpieces. And mm-hmm. I hope at some point they come back. I know wow. people are going to hate me on that, but I hope they come back. At some point. I, I, I don't think people would hate you. I think there's a lot of stands for these arts as well. For me, however, I'm not a big fan. Um, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm a stand for the faces. I'm also not a fan of like the leader plus the gang alt arts. Like mm. maybe that's probably the hot, hot take. I think, I think more people prefer the, the, the leader plus gang uh, style alt arts. We've been, the squad. That, that's what I want. Leader plus squad. I feel like people really want that. They really like those. Um, I don't. I just like the faces. The faces are good. That being said, my biggest problem with these brush uh, alt arts for the leaders is you'll have something like black, yellow, big mom. Ah, but there is yeah. no black or yellow on the card. It's like, just pink. <laughs> it's just pink or purple. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> what? And the Nami's like orange. And like, I get it. It makes sense. But... <laughs> It's like supposed to be their hair <laughs> color, I think, most of the time. Except for Ace. Ace is actually red. And then Kuro, Kuro's actually green. And then Arlong's blue. Something it's some it's some crazy, Peak. some crazy colors like that. Like the, none of them match. Um oh, but uh yeah, no, I'm really we're, we're gonna go into this match. Uh, already using our uh, uh yeah, gear five our, gear five dawn on uh Bryson's side is very exciting. Very excited to have that. Oh, we got the Nami sleeves for the Nami deck too. Look at that. Uh, yes, I'm always yes. a fan of judging people's uh us uh choices with a uh, gotta look good to play good. <laughs> oh, but um probably going through there i imagine the players are going through uh, orientation or whatever it's called like just early player meetings and stuff getting all the rules set up it's again it is best we are our best of one 35 minute rounds with a five minute overtime both players at overtime will either go to five minutes or play two turns or in the other in another words zero one two three as people like to count um and then yeah we're, we got a thousand we got the full 1024 players and should be a total of nine rounds if i'm not mistaken and no top cut. We're going straight into standings after that. So what we see at the end of the day will be the finals. Oh, oh, we, we top have cut. It's two. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're, we're here. Top cut. My, yeah. My we are. We are day. here. Oh, we'll be we'll be here tomorrow for top cut. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a big change. I don't think that got advertised. Too well. I, was, oh, I, was about to, I was about to interject, and I was like, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> oh, that's so sick. No, we're here for it. Uh, people who get their uh, their cereals and their 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 top eight cards, they 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 are going to be working for it. There will be no no disputes, <laughs> no no cut to standings. You will oh, know that, who got them. Oh, top cut changes so much though, right? Like, because I feel like there was there are plenty of decks that or or like deck choices or play styles that like. It's, I think people were talking a lot about this back in set two or three, where like when Whitebeard when it was in his heyday. Whitebeard was the best deck to go 10-0 in a in a day or 9-0 mm. in a day. It was very like that was the deck that you played because you needed to go undefeated. But I feel like a div going X1 opens up the potential for so many other decks to just sneak in and just cut through the format. I feel like I remember the format a different event we had top cut. Zoro uh, didn't win out the day. I think it was Rebecca. Oh, it was the first. It was the first tournament of Step Four. Uh, Rebecca wins Swiss. Goes undefeated in Swiss. We go to Top Cut, and Zoro takes the day, and no one saw that coming. And it was just. I think it was just one of those things, right? Like it was just Top Cut changes things. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, when you build generic, that'll get you through Swiss. But when you 
start teching for exactly what you expect to see when you're meta call for the exact room, not just for the meta, because we all know the top three, top four decks, but when you successfully gauge and play for the, the matchup you're going to see the most, you get rewarded so much more for top cut because those decks, if your meta call was correct, are going to be the decks you face repeatedly. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's been cool. So, yeah, essentially. For you guys wondering in the uh, chat, we are just going to the player meeting right now. I know that audio isn't here because uh, it would be deafening, so be thankful for that. But they are going <laughs> to the player meeting, and after the player meeting is over, we will then be able to get into the game. So this is that part where if you guys have been determined, they're talking about how many rounds, you know, uh, the procedures that we have top cut, things like that, uh, end of round procedures, and then we'll be able to get into this game. And while we are waiting on that, I'm not going to hold you. I, I, I don't have a dog in this race, right? Mm -hmm. Horse in this race, dog in this race, something, something like that. But mm -hmm. I there's a special part of my brain that feels happy when I see Nami tap 10 for Kaido for game. Tap 10 for Kaido for game? Oh, to draw? Uh, I, yeah, Wait. I've seen it only like twice. Oh, wait, but that's like, that's all shields down for Nami. Is that, can they do it, that? It has to be the finisher. It has to be the finisher. Oh, that's so interesting. It I, has I to be imagine. the finisher. Oh, I, uh, maybe we'll see it. My favorite, my favorite blue card in a while is John Giant. So I'm, I'm, my stakes in blue are really low. Uh, <laughs> blue John Giant being uh, the nine, eight cost vanilla 10k for Navy. Uh -huh. I, I love that card. As a Sanji stand, that card went straight into my Sanji deck, and then I proceeded not to play Sanji, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> But I'm so excited for hand cams. Like that's something that I feel like has been missing from production in a long time has been being oh, able yeah. to see the player's hands. Because there is so much commentary work that goes into guessing what a, a player could do, theorizing what the best play is. But having the hand information is going to change the the game for us today. I might, I, I, I kid you not, I'll probably be staring at that bottom right side of the screen more than anything else. Look, um, I'm so excited I'm for that. Hand cam is great because I am tired of activating my ocular jitsu to uh, scan the cards at record breaking speed as the person <laughs> flicks through there. And I, I swear, the only time the only time a person will shuffle at Mach 10 speeds is the conveniently when the camera shifts to their hand. Of course. And they, all of a sudden at that point, it's like body flicker jitsu. And I'm like, okay, I guess, I guess. Mm -hmm. But like now we have the hand cam. We're always going to see. Um, that's a blessing and a curse because sometimes the guesswork makes it exciting. But now we're gonna have full information, so uh, that's 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 a blessing and a curse for people on stream. Mm -hmm. There will be questions, and we will have the answers. I'm so excited! And like, look at this guy's drip. That the Luffy Law shirt, sick, very sick. Dripped you out know, today. I'm mm. just, I, I feel a little hurt, BC. You're 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 gonna talk about the Luffy and the Law shirt, but I'm wearing a blazer with a Luffy shirt, and I have gotten not one. Not one. Not one all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll remember this. I'll, re okay. I'll remember this. Ten rounds. Ten Two rounds. Minutes. That we we just got we just got the magical voice from Sky saying ten rounds. This is, I'm not going to hold you guys. Ten rounds and a top cut. This will be the most. If there was any regional to attend to and attest to your skill and dedication as a player, so far in this format, it is this one. Not a lot. singular tournament has had this many rounds plus top cut. It's like I, nationals. I think that's true. I think I think you might be right. Uh, it is it. Uh, that's this is gonna. We're in for a ride today. Then holy. <laughs> holy. If, if you if you if you top this tournament, you're officially a top tier player, Mike. <laughs> you're a top tier <laughs> player, my books. Back on the drip conversation, you and your blazer, homie. You know, I just found out what a blazer was like last night um because uh I'm, I'm my commentary game has been slacking on the uh the the blazer blazer end of things mm -hmm. um i just didn't i just didn't know i just didn't know that was a thing i didn't know it was a standard i just i wore my button down collar shirt thinking everything was five it's like no homie we all we all wear blazers to this um it is, so. it is. oh okay okay we got some face cam oh we got the zoom in wave bryson this could be one of the most detrimental or uplifting things ever like <laughs> i want to see what happens when somebody swings for game 
and we flip over a beige, a uh, beige, and uh, then you you immediately get the face cam of the swinging player. <laughs> like that's kind of what key what I want. Life is getting set up, so mm-hmm. you guys know we're about to start cooking. Um, we are now starting to see. Okay, we're starting to see hands being drawn. Both players opted not to mulligan, which is very interesting. And they're getting uh, they're getting their life set up. Um, there yeah. is a certain order that the life should technically be put mm-hmm. down. So we're just getting some some slight changes. Yep. And in that hand, hmm, what do you see? You peep anything good so far? Um, we got Dodds Bones. Ooh. Uh, we have oh, okay, I closed up again. <laughs> I see oh. Katakuri. Right now we're on Katakuri's hand. We see a Pero Sparrow. We're gonna see Kaya turn one off of Nami. Uh, draw two, discard two. What are we going to discard? A lot of options on Nami's end right now. Mm-hmm. Or events. And because uh, we get Dots Bones, he has the ability to discard some stuff and just take it back in a second. Oh, double breakfast. Getting rid of double breakfast right off the rip. That mm-hmm. I feel like we like either we're <laughs> either we have too many in hand or like because this is a key that isn't breakfast the the key card that we use to the, the loop the the Kaya to get us to our win condition. So. Breakfast is crucial, but again, like we have, oh, I need to see the rest of his hand right now. We are focused on Katakuri. I do see uh, that was Para Sparrow. Is that a uh, oh, uh, from when I peeped, uh, Katakuri is gonna curve out real good. He's got seven drop mom, he's got mm-hmm. he's got a five or a four dawn play with a Sanji coming up. Like, we're gonna curve out, and then I think he even saw 10 drop mom in his hand, so we, we're gonna curve out amazingly. Oh, that Nami hand is uh, like, we mean, I get it from life, but I see peel off, does bones. I see, uh, is that oh, so we're going to be able to loop the, the, uh, we haven't seen a one. Oh, but we're going to counter. No, are we, uh, two oh, we're discarding two. Yep. Oh, for There's the a fair amount of doubles. Yeah. So three Dawn up now, we one are going to be able to counter out of any attack that, uh, Kata Creek comes in with. We did recently, we, last turn we went in for, uh, we went in for a uh, nine attack right off mm-hmm. the rip, looked at the top life, put it to the bottom, and then the one life was in the trigger. So Nami is at four life. But... And, I mean, we talked about that going into here. Nine is that good number. In a, in a deck like Nami, you don't want them to be able to one-for-one one your attacks. So anytime you swing for nine, some of their best cards, like Love, Love, Mellow, they'll have to use that plus something. It looks like he just picked up a Sables, and he's trying to decide whether he wants to keep it there or not. Um mm-hmm. And we get the love, love, mellow to yep. counter out of that. Uh, that feels bad because we're not at four cards or less. So we're not getting the draw off the love, the love, love, mellow. Yeah, he's really trying to preserve that life, which I do mm-hmm. understand because it is dangerous to uh, fall to low life on category. But also he kept the card on top. Mm-hmm. And so you saw, in some cases, you may think that that's not necessarily a card that's going to be that great to flip over right now. But Sables is pretty fine as is. Yeah. Nami does uh Nami does uh use peel off, draws into a uh, uh, rubber band and uh Zef. So we'll probably see the Zef come down next turn. I don't I don't is is the strategy for Nami to actually try to land at least one hit for Zef because I feel like if it, it's a risk it's risk reward especially against Katakuri if that first life is a trigger, you put yourself behind, but uh, seven cards to the trash just is so much of what you want to be doing in Nami. We are going to go in seven again with uh, Katakuri. Looking at our own life, just to check the top, I believe I saw a trigger. I think it was a Sanji, but it was a little too fast for me. Oh, we're going to play this uh, card. White oh, out. No, no, is that white? Is, it, white? is that the... Uh... Oh, okay, yes. I see I think... that. Oh, and then we're going to uh, rubber band out, mill another card. All right, so we used all our Dawn for that for, for that defense, and we're going to go in with the Sanji for seven again. And I don't think we have the counter for this. This is, uh, this is pretty intense. Like, this is an East Blue cuisine. Homeboy is cooking. Now, the thing that is kind of rough is we were talking about the Zeph earlier. Mm-hmm. Without pressuring Katakuri's hand, mm-hmm. I think that playing Zeph right now is potentially just a Dawn sink. You play yeah. it, you get bounced, and then you have less Dawn to potentially protect yourself, and that's the scary part here. Oh, oh Nami's attacking into the Sanji. All right, another peel off. Mm-hmm. Two more cards. We see Sables. We see, I think, just two Sables. Yep. And I do like how this is going because he's keeping calm and collected. Uh, he mm-hmm. just took the quick shot 
at Sanji because he knows that that's just going to be another hand or a mm -hmm. card from hand. His opponent needs to uh, lessen his life and he needs to build a board to do that. So he just knows that that's going to stay out. Now, his board, Katakuri's board is starting to get not scary, but I mean, you have the Kikimojo, you have the Sanji, you have the leader. And like Risi was saying earlier, that is a 10 drop mom in hand. Um, we have the seven drop mom. He's going to curve out. Yeah. Super, super well. At this point, you might not even, uh, oh, okay. I was like, you might not even care about playing the uh, seven mom because even if he puts the card to the top of your life, you're still getting that body. But uh, yeah. he opts to actually just press damage here, getting another one yep. of these, the, uh, the whiteouts. I think it's what I know. It's it's it's, uh, it's, it's smoker. Amazon Lily card, right? Yeah, smoker. Okay, it's it's smoker on the card. Luffy's eating eating. The oh yeah 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 yeah. Oh, and then we're gonna play Sables again to counter out of this nine k, or at least try to get us out of this nine k attack. Um, interesting. We left so much Dawn open. I wonder if we're actually gonna try to fully use all of this. All right, and then rubber band. Yeah, going to middle of the top. It's the All Stars, All Stars, All Star. I, I like the inclusion of All Stars in Nami, personally. I, 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 the high roll of the card, and it's such an easy card to discard off of your, some of your other effects. That it, it just ends up being a free card in the deck. Um, so I, I generally like it. Uh, set going in seven with Sanji. We're gonna run out. We're gonna we're gonna run out of stuff eventually. We're gonna have Sables. Yes. So this is the third Sables. Yeah. It's rough sevens and nines. Sevens and nines against Nami. Nine is preferred, but basically you just want to make sure that as few times as possible are they able just to use one card and then get out of your swing. Mm -hmm. As long as you do that math, eventually Nami runs out of cards. And once Nami runs out of cards, it's just uh, just, uh, just uh, almost vanilla leader. Mm -hmm. I agree. And then on the top, we saw double overheat and a... Uh, I didn't quite catch what the other card was, but we saw double overheat on the top of Nami's life. From the stables we're gonna go in another seven so we're gonna leave up three done for uh for a play oh, i think we got a peril sparrow coming up after this uh and then yep. turn out yep play the peril sparrow for turn and then pass and so nami will now go into their 10 dawn turn um we're out of pilafs i don't i don't believe we have another pilaf in hand we're gonna attack five again just ask for a card from our opponent we're gonna 2k out of it just because we're probably not playing. Oh, another pilaf. Nice. So the thing that kind of gets me here is that mm. Nami's whole purpose is to wall while drawing or discarding from the top of the deck. But mm -hmm. ooh, okay. That was good. The little brick fist. The thing about this though for me is um mm. Nami's Nami folds to hyper aggression, and this is Katakuri, maybe not on a high roll, high roll, but this is Katakuri on a very, very good curve. And it just from where we are right now in the game, it looks like the momentum is on Katakuri's side. Like he is yeah. he is stripping more cards than his opponent is drawing. And there's probably only like a couple more sustainable turns of this. Are we yeah. we're at a full 10 dawn? Yeah, and, 10 mom is uh, coming down. There's no way it's not. I think we just attack up. out and play the 10 mom. Uh, I Do don't think they're do you? Oh, wait, oh, wait. So you know, we know some of the cards in hand. Life. What do you, what do you think is the best play? You just go for life, like you said. Uh, with four, with four life, I mean, you you can make them expend. He's going to be mm -hmm. playing these cards regardless. So, um, I mean, you definitely want to see what comes out of hand because that's like we were just talking about. When Nami runs out of its cards, that's mm -hmm. pretty much when you fold it. So there's not really a reason to immediately hit the uh, hit the ten. Like you just swing out, like you said, swing out to expend those cards in hand, then play the mom. This is just absolutely fine. There's nothing that can come out of the hand that would interact with mom, but it's just the sequencing is good. Keep them guessing. Yeah. Make them expend the cards and not just be like, oh, well, I can get out of this, get out of that. The hand is actually looking more healthy than I expected on Nami's part, but yeah, I, we just need to see what comes down next on categories. I think we're definitely, if, if, if we play a second 10-drop mom, I think that's that's probably going to be a wrap for Nami, but this could be a turn for Nami where they, oh, no, we're going to play Kai. I was going to say potentially <laughs> Nami just plays uh just plays nothing this turn and uh just sits on 10 dawn of defenses gonna discard two gonna discard a zeph and probably one of these uh, event cards that we aren't gonna be able to play out um 
a correction to what we've been talking about i'm pretty sure the card is a white snake uh, uh, there we go. it's a navy card it's a counter for two up to one of your leader or characters gains 1k for the turn then draw one card with the trigger ability look at the top five cards of your deck then place them in any order at the top of your, or bottom of your deck very good very so good. slightly wrong it's uh, it was still a smoker card but i was just saying the wrong last word yup yup so realistically ah uh, this is this is going to be the scariest part for nami um i wish we had like a deck count oh wait one two, two three, three four five, six, seven. i think i, I got 12, 12. Or, yeah i got 12 too so 12 to 13 just to yeah. be generous that's still a long ways away for red to be hitting their top curve yeah and i'm I sorry it's red kind of, for category yeah and it's kind of off the back of the fact that like we've played three uh we've had to hard play three uh th three peel offs ourselves we haven't gotten any triggers and uh where you do oh dude what how did we lose that one? Ooh. Oh, we attacked Oh no, we got a we got a second uh, we got a second. Oh, we got the second ten drop. 10. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, it's a little blur on our end. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. It's it's that is powerful, and this is exactly <sighs> what we were saying was going to be rough because those big mm -hmm. mom tens will demand two to three cards out of like our opponent after that Anami's hand, and you can only sustain that for so long. That's one of the things that has been tried and true for One Piece for quite some time. Ooh. There's the fourth peel off though. Okay. From the so two, are we at ten? That's ten cards left in deck now. From the uh, heavens, uh, nine cards. I think we. Uh, I say ten, and now nine. But I think there's a little less. I think it should be like seven because we did play one of the one, two, three, three. four, five, nine. I think I counted. I counted somewhere between seven and nine. Uh, play the Kaya, draw two. Are we gonna? This is where it's gonna. Getting rid of those breakfasts early is probably gonna burn uh gonna burn the Nami player here because if we just had breakfast or loot these Kai's, it would have been so over. But I, I could I could see uh I could see if we get us getting there. It's only Yeah, I'm trying to is that one more Kai in hand though? It is one more Kai on hand. Uh we're gonna discard all stars because it's a dead card to us. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're gonna get rid of the Dos Bones. Bone. So there's no one drop that we were or one drop uh, event card to get us there. Oh my gosh! Two more oh cards. my gosh! Oh, uh, was that a brick? Oh that my gosh! Breakfast? We've already played all four pilots. Oh, I think. One, two, three, four. I'm, I'm counting oh four. Gosh. Yeah, uh, that's five. It's, no, five. it's it's five. It's five. Yeah. So it was definitely nine before. This is so scary. And you gotta think, he's out here. This is the mental gymnastics. Can I do five? Oh my gosh. So now he's trying to discard. His hand isn't that big. We're looking at uh, after this Kaya happens. Now he's got a rubber band. And he's gonna he's still got to discard off the Kaya, I think. So yeah. The over he, the he's going one more. Mm -hmm. But we've got a rubber band left, a Love Love Mellow left, and is that a... Ah, this is going to be rough. Oh, what are we tapping? Oh... Oh, we're gonna okay. Woo. We're, we're gonna use two Don mill two more cards. Oh, 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 oh. Two. the rubber is band the, is the rubber band game. The rubber band's game. There's one card left. Oh my! Oh, and gosh. love love mellow. It's over. Oh, <laughs> oh that's his game. Get him! No. <laughs> Wait, maybe not the maybe not the love love mellow, but that rubber band gets us there. No. We just need to mill one card. Yeah, we attack I mean, that's, that's and so rubber band. Oh, Nabi takes round one. Got him. <laughs> nice. Oh, where did where did it go wrong for Katakuri? Did we just not go wide enough? Did we not attack um, for nines enough? No, so I mean, honestly, he had a very good he had a very good run, but like I think this goes back to our conversation before the starter. First off, congratulations to both players. That was mm -hmm. a great game to see. Um, that was a great game to see, but like I think it goes back to what we were talking about before. They don't play the exact game that the other one wants to play. And whereas Katakuri is used to, yellow decks in general are used to extra draws. And like I said before, every time they get a card in life, it's an extra draw eventually. But Katakuri didn't really access its extra card. Cards that went to life just stayed in life. And you that means less triggers. That means less potential free bodies to press and uh, aggress with. He had to cast pretty much everything he had. And when it comes down to that, Nami was able to bring it out there was a sticky point where we were like oh no but like nine cards as well within 
the uh, the end game of that deck, as we clearly saw. And uh, that was that was beautiful. That, that was, was sick. Nami that was came so through. Good. I hope you guys at home, that Nami fans, exact I hope you guys are, yeah. this is exactly what she wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> that was, oh my gosh, the 10 oh. Dawn play. That was cool. And then, oh, what could it, kind of curry should have just gone wider? Maybe attack for fives more? I don't know. I mean, I feel it's, like it's, it's it's interesting because the category could have gone wider, but every mm-hmm. turn category is using their dawn to like good efficiency, not adding right. bodies. We attack for nines. Wider. That's a rule, right? Sevens yeah, and we... nines, sevens and nines. Big moms came down on curve back mm-hmm. to back. I don't think the category player did anything wrong. I just think Nami had it. Yeah, I mean, seeing all four peel offs, like even though I think one was in life, or yeah, mm-hmm. one was in life, and then we hard play we we actually hard casted the last three so that's pretty good being a, yeah. that, that's eight cards <laughs> now the funny 12, thing maybe. the funny thing was you had to reach it at some point and mm-hmm. i think we do have something to understand or to like a, a philosophical question if you will mm-hmm. category looked at that top life at the beginning of the game and put it at the bottom the bottom was peel off right so like realistically do you just eat the peel off early game or do you allow yourself to get peel off and late? Like, I, is it all? Well, the thing or? is, I think the logic was we'll, we'll put our opponent to oh, we'll we'll put it as the last life and then I will be able to burn it. Burn right. It, yeah. Um, with a big mom, maybe a reject. It's, it's hit or miss if they're on reject huh. or maybe a banish Onami. So they knew it. And I feel like they didn't properly set that- up. That set is, up that you know what i'm saying yeah i think that is the missing link because they did add that down so like there was there perhaps there was a world where you you know you push with that big mom they're not mm-hmm. going to be able to block that big mom it's it's just simply she is too big mm-hmm. and then you get down to one life and then you cast your second big mom and let that bang yeah, um, that's two more cards from from game that, that nami wasn't able to have right and they needed that they yeah. would not they would have been stuck with like yeah they needed that that's they, they needed it on multiple levels the resources because i think the draws were insane as well like the yeah. nami drew good the whole game and oh man i think i think that was probably the key if i had to pick one thing it was definitely not that setting up that. a burn on that left life especially since we knew it and the, the board was there the board was there to poke even if they use all the cards in their hand poke mm-hmm. poke poke the moment they get on the one life tap 10. i think there was a world maybe i, I would have i i'm an advocate for like going wider Definitely, like instead of attacking for nine, just accept that you're a one Don seven leader, and all your other attacks can go for five. Make he can know you a seven to be cleaner. Attack for even or odds into odds, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then just use more of that Don to go a little wider. We could have played that Parasparra probably a little sooner. We could have probably sneaked out something else a little sooner, but either way, so it's like if you go tall, you're hopefully trying to take two cards out of their hand. But if you go wide, it's still a card for a card. It's, it's not an extra card every to turn, you. right? It's yeah, but then you'll little... be able to have a better board later on. So mm-hmm. that's very interesting. That's very interesting. All right. Well, I think uh, we're gonna. That's it. That's it for round one. Got to see Nami clean it up. Very excited. We're gonna. We're play definitely more One Piece action coming to you guys soon. Uh, I think we still got time on the round. We're gonna see round two. Uh, yeah, swoosh us away, Brock. <laughs> Welcome back, One Piece players, to the Play TCG Online TCG. <laughs> oh my God, the Play <laughs> TCG One Piece TCG Online or Arlington Online Regional, featured awesome. by uh, Reese the Squirrel. I'm Reese the Squirrel, and I'm I'm here with Universe X. Say hi. Hey. And, and we got our production crew, Team Robin, Robin Bowl, uh, doing everything in the background. Thanks for everything, Brock. You guys. It's nice. The production thing is without them, nothing, none of this gets done. And thanks. And then obviously we're playing one piece. And today we've got 10 rounds. We just finished round one. We saw Nami win. Still looking out to pair out round two. It's decided to come back and try to just summarize the day uh, that's ahead of us. We got nine more rounds in the day. We will be going to Top Cut for day two. So uh, let's go over some of the rules. Some of the rules for the esports stadium, Arlington One Piece Offline Regional. That is a huge mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> but it is is it illustrious. So once again, rules of the format. We are in a, a best of one format. The games that you need to win to go on to the next round with your maximum amount of points is one. The match time is 35 minutes. There is extra time of five minutes 
or extra turn. So what this means for you guys that don't know, when time is called, the person that is playing is turn zero. Then you have turn one, two, and then the final turn of three. Once those three, technically four turns are over, or you have reached five minutes of overtime, the match is over, and they start going to end of time procedures, counting things like life, cards on board, cards in hand, deck, things like that. And then we have the prizing, which includes playmats, sleeves, event packs, boxes, and more. And we are going to go over those prizings one more time. Uh, I'm going to give little nicknames to all these. You've got explosive colors, scratchman of poo. You have got premium art, gum gum jet pistol. You got a uh, Sanji in one of his cleanest fits of all time. I love the cape. The oh, cape is gosh, so, so cool. Princely. Princely attire with the uh, Diablo Jambe. And then you've got renewed hairline. You've got hairline reclaimed. You know he's new. getting the paycheck because that hairline's <laughs> looking so brand new. <laughs> oh, 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 you're good on that one. You're good on that one. I have to concede. No, to be oh. honest, brand new has the makeover. Look at the look at the top three buttons open. Hairline on point, super sideburns. His sideburns are his his chops are going up his cheeks. It's like uh, it's actually pretty powerful. But the, all these cards look amazing. I will tell you right now, the jet pistol has my heart and soul. Oh, the jet it looks so good. so good. And you just get you just for participating, you get these packs, right? On entry, you get a collection of these packs, and we're going into the this was event pack volume three, which comes with an alt art Monet uh, from set four, which is the blocker. We see it a lot in the Yamato uh, Fortress build. One cost starter deck blocker law. We've been it's been a staple since the beginning. Just one cost blockers sometimes are good. And then we're going into a couple promo cards. We got the land of Wano. Uh, trigger Zoro, four cost, five attack slash character that is probably the talk of the town. We were uh, anticipating this card since its reveal in Japan and how we were going to get it into the uh, North America, or the, yeah, the West uh, Western card game. The trigger ability being the key part of this card, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a four cost or less. So in the Wano, in the Wano Yamato build, you can, you know, Get the free trigger. You can heal it with Momonosuke because it is a Land of Wano card. You can search it with the Searcher Momonosuke. Such a good card. We'll probably see an uprising of this card coming into the future for sure. And right. then we'll wrap up the four with the promo purple Yamato card. Uh, Land of Wano archetype. Not not a purple Land of Wano isn't uh, necessarily a, a feature archetype yet, but maybe one day. And you'll probably want to get your hands on this card. And beautiful artwork for the Yamato as well. 100%. And of course, we're going to be moving over to the new Dawn. You're no longer going to be fishing for a selection of Dawn with a Straw Hat Dawn. Their reign is over. However, this Gear 5, this Joy Boy, this Sun God Nika, these are, ah, these look so good. And like the picture barely does it justice. When you see this in person, you fully will foiled. be wowed. Yes, oh, fully God. foiled from top to bottom. You've got uh, Joy Boy, Luffy, Gear 5, up against the moon and the iconic jumping like pose. This is great. This is one of the cleanest Dawns I've ever actually seen. And it's actually so crazy that Dawn has become such a, such like a, a it's a personal flair. There's so many to choose from, so many moments, so many uh, special arts, the straw hats, this one, and the gold ones, the red ones. You just now have so many options. And you have just... the manga cut ones. Like, ah, yes. I love it. Like it's people so choosing good. their, it's part of choosing your fit when you come to play One Piece now. It's <laughs> just like, which Don, which 10 Don are you showing to me today? Don's a flex. Um, oh, Don's a flex. And then we're going to go into the top 64 card, which is the, the seven drop uh, kid from the starter deck. Mm -hmm. uh, on play when attacking, minus one Don. Uh, give your leader 1K. Uh, this is a, a powerful card. Uh, in terms of relevance, I feel like the five drop kid was probably a little more, but this the, the gold bordering, or is it bronze bordering? No, this gold bordering is like, gold. Ah, the, it's just so so shiny. You need I you need a, you need to put shades on when someone's playing these cards in front of you because <laughs> you're just you're gonna be blinded. You can't play anymore. I mean, the colors pop. I know the the mechanical arm goes really hard with the foil being on the silver kind of S. Uh, the reds in here. It's a really good looking card. And cards like this are cool. I know not everybody's going to want to play this, like this particular card. You want to hard case it. You want to get it graded. Uh, mm -hmm. Not a lot of people are going to slam this on the table. But this is a card that should be relevant for the rest of the game. There will be times where it comes in and out of the format because its effect is just good value. It's a 1K the last on your opponent's turn. But uh, this, then we're moving on to the top 16. 
Uh, now, just before uh, we go into how awesome this card looks, I want to, before we miss it again, talk about the fact that we are having invites to finals, the North American finals for these North American events. And uh, this top 16 will not only get you this card, the prizing before it, but it will also get you your invite to said finals. But that being said, you got him hitting the move. I'm not sure if this is like Shock Willie. I'm not sure what kind of move this is. It looks like he's just squaring up. But this is also great art. One of my favorite parts about One Piece is that no matter what you've seen in the base card, the alt art, you always know they can kick it up a notch. And they do. They so, put them in these these top prizing cards, and they really just go above expectations mm -hmm. when it comes to this. Like this this card looks amazing. It's so good. It's such a relevant. It's a it's a it's a card of nightmares. Anytime yeah. you play a purple uh, against the purple deck, and they ask you how many cards in hand, and you say seven, uh, you're just you're already you're you're already devastated. Your mental's gone after that. You you know this is coming down and just ruining any plan. Well, they you've had. they throw a poke at you when you have six cards in hand. You go yeah okay snap take oh no. Like, you don't even realize oh it's too late. Like, what have I done? Yeah, 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 rip, rip. Uh, <laughs> random discarding is always scary. But now we are on to the big shebangs. And I will never get tired of seeing these cards next to each other because this is pure Yonko energy. I'm actually a little sad. I know three captains is technically before Luffy has beaten Kaido. So this wouldn't be a four emperors card. But when I see these two next to each other, all I can think is pure Yonko energy. Like, yes. this is this is Absolutely. so good. The Conqueror's hockey coming off of Luffy, like, you can see it. It's not just, like, silver foiling. That looks to be darkened, almost black foiling. This yep. is awesome. This card screams power. Even if it's not, like, a star of the format right now, like, this is a centerpiece. This goes on a mantle. This goes in a hard case. This, this is that card. Like, it looks so good. Oh my god! And then to finish it off with the the the, the serialized Shanks, every, come, coming off of the back of how successful the serialized Luffy's were, finally all of those got distributed. So now we got a new thousand to give out. Serialized Shanks from set one. Rush when attacking, uh, your opponent can't block with something too small. Uh, you you can't you can't stand up in, in the face of a Yonko sometimes. It is <laughs> And they picked the well, probably one of the best arts for Shanks as well. Like it's good. There's only there's only I think two moments that I think are uh, are going to be better than that. Like yeah. maybe maybe two. And maybe you know the cool thing here is though something that I'd like to talk about playing a bunch of Bandai card games is that Bandai has always been keen to putting flavor on cards. And what I mean by this is if you're a fan of the manga, if you're a fan of the anime, you can generally look at a card like a boss card or a good SR, and you can see how. Mm -hmm. their effect mimics their characters like this shanks he can't be blocked by little weenies and that's because shanks has astoundingly powerful conqueror's hockey if you aren't anywhere in his weight range his weight class you can't even stand up in his presence which is why like small uh, blockers cannot get in his way his conqueror's hockey is too strong you are not in his league and i find that to be amazing like a flavor like that is just so awesome and we're going into the if you do manage to get all the way to second place we got a couple mats for you uh we got the uh don quixote i like to call it the don quixote uh siblings uh they got rosinante on the left the secret rare from set four and then uh the vanilla from dress the dress rosa law from uh also set four just killer art these two anyone that follows the manga knows that these these two characters are close close knit in story and in, in emotions and getting to see the getting to see have this play mat say second place one piece regional with such cool art that showcases the art of this game it's and you so know, exciting to see yeah before we go over to uh oh we already went over oh, there. Kinda, no. oh no i was just saying he's kind of looking dofy like it's it's something about <laughs> him with the with the entire blunderbuss in his hand and with that smile. smile i was like i see the family resemblance like it's it's <laughs> here right now he's looking like a little bit of a villain right there but that's all i wanted to say about the second place matt we got the uh we got the the beauties on this one though but the this first place insane. matt's shining yeah go ahead. i mean shira hoshi rebecca vivi like we are actually sitting here on i mean just royalty like actually, this is canon canon actual <laughs> canon royalty like this is uh this mat is gorgeous bright mm -hmm. colors everything and this is just this is literally a trophy mat like while the other mat was looking pretty clean this mat is not only first place but it's got some of the most like it's got some of the coolest characters that you wish got on the boat to leave with the straw hats at the oh, end of their yeah. respective arcs that did not 
but like, yeah, we we are sitting here with a nice, pretty first place mat, and, and that says crazy. winner. So you know, people, <laughs> you know, you gotta let people know that you are invincible. Style on them. Style on thousand. This is a thousand two hundred or thousand twenty four people. Like, nah, just me. <laughs> uh, just me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you either you either you either went big in the tournament, or like the strongest card in your arsenal is that is that credit card if you have this winner Matt. so like that's where, honestly it's still a flex regardless but this is great Ooh. so um. all right so uh, i'm hearing that we are going to be moving into round two soon but we have some more stuff to talk about and that will be the three brothers ultra deck now if you guys don't remember the ultra deck first one we've ever had was the three captains it came with three uh leaders with one deck and these decks had reprints that made them very 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 popular uh good staples for the colors but they all shared one color and then they diverge past then i think before they were all uh red purple but here yes. we have something even cooler because we have three leaders that have yellow as a color but then they each go different ways you have uh a red yellow sabo a black yellow luffy and a blue yellow ace and before we get into the contents of what's going on there i think it's really cool to note that these all have synergies in different places there are black straw hats coming out between starter decks and whatnot and mm -hmm. so the yellow black really works here uh red has been a revolutionary army color before and it will be again so this fits there and then even with ace there are going to be more blue white beer pirates so these are leaders that have value now but can go up later you can see some of the cards here. You've got like a Shanks, a Newgate, a Garp making like white beard pirates, making uh, you know, the Navy, and then you have like the my another four emperors. This is all cool stuff, but there's actually some other cool parts to this thing that I think I'm just gonna let Risu dive into that are special per oh, box man. of this. So every time you buy a box of the three brothers ultra deck, you're gonna get access to these alt arts. Uh every card has a chance to become an alt art. And we're using we, we were just talking about how you are a fan of the set three alt art leaders, right? Ah uh, yeah. Uh with the, the ink brush style. So if we, we slide over to that, we will every card you're gonna get a pack and it's gonna come with three alt arts, and it's gonna we're gonna see uh uh, these same cards, but with that ink brush style. So they're going to be black and white monochrome cards. And the leaders, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the leaders will be in those colors. A lot of these cards, I know one that stands out to my mind is the like we, there's a 2K Yamato counter card that is going to be in this uh, part of the uh, alternate inclusion. Um, and no, oh, it's it's going to be sick. It's going to be a reason to pick these up. Uh, Maybe I miss maybe maybe it's not the leaders. I, I forget that in the decks you also get a five cost version of each of the three brothers, and these are the ones that come in with this ink brush monochrome style with a little bit of flair on it. So oh no, that's see for anybody that is uh, is not exactly a fan of the uh, OPO three alt heart leaders. I ask you one question: How? Like just look at these two <laughs> cards. Luffy has great color, but the moment it goes grayscale and they just emphasize like the aura around them, that looks amazing. I just so don't, clean. look at this. Look at this, that's so peak. Good. Uh, that's and peak then on top of that, I think we failed to mention that every card is foil, just like the the uh, three captains, right? Every card yep. has a little bit of foil to them. So every card is basically a rare in terms of quality, the card quality. Um, it's gonna be exciting. I, I, I don't know. Uh, the first one did well. Like we still see red, purple law creep in. The reprints were really popular people, um, but yeah. Oh man! So what do you? We saw Nami win round one. Mm -hmm. What? Well, what do you think? We haven't paired it up. We haven't set it up quite yet. What do you think we're gonna see? What are you hoping to see round two? So being a realist, um, we're gonna see plenty of the big three as we go late in the tournament. So I'm mm -hmm. hoping that we see something special. I'm hoping that we see an Arlong, uh, a, a Yamato, a, mm -hmm. a Reiju. Because the further and further we get in the oh, tournament, Reiju. the likelier we're gonna be able to see the the likelihood. That we're going to see a top contending meta deck that has been seen a lot is going to be here and those those have their time and places you don't yeah. you, you won't know how to combat them unless you you know have a lot of testing and you watch them so that'll be later but these early rounds we really get a chance to see the uh the the dark horses of the tournament yeah. and i also just want to say real quick um we all appreciate the support there's almost 300 of you guys watching the stream right now and that is monumental so thank you guys for coming here thank you guys for uh watching and uh, supporting the stream because that's that's why we do this to give the coverage for you guys and to just build hype for the game. So yeah, they are setting up, and I think 
if I ask nicely, they might let me know who's playing, like like what <laughs> decks they're playing. If I ask nicely, oh, I don't have my observation hockey all the way from where I am to Texas right now. I'm not that powerful yet, though. So. Man, there's just be shanks, bro. I can try. You can I can try. From, I can let's go to the top, bottom of a waterfall all the way into a country. So, Ooh, oh, so. okay. Wait, wait. Time out. JK, I'm I am built different. It's Sakazuki versus Katakuri. My oh, cross it. country oh. observation hockey is strong. So Sakazuki versus Katakuri. Um, this is a tried that? and true yeah. matchup. How do you, yeah, I told you it's the observation hockey. Yeah. It's well, crazy. I hope you're right. That'd be embarrassing if you were wrong at this point. No, no, no. no. It, it, it could never be me. I, my observation is so strong. When, when my cats are chewing on plastic in the other room, I sense it. I sense it from downstairs <laughs> when I get in my car. I'm like, stop that. Like observation hockey Please. is on point. But uh, um, this matchup is very, 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 very tried and true. Um, in yeah. the past, Katakuri has been able to put a lot of pressure on Sakazuki in general. Sakazuki can bottom deck a lot of the cards that Katakuri can get out for free. However, those cards generally, uh, unless you trigger them before you play out any cards with your Dawn, you generally have to let them have a turn to mm-hmm. you know have those cards out. However, the main thing that really kind of gets me is that Sakazuki is notorious for having very tight counter power, um, mm-hmm. counter value. There are a lot of hands that can be five, six, seven cards in, but only have maybe 4K, 5K combo uh, or like counter value in them. And when that happens, you have a deck like Katakuri that's ripping through hands with 7K swings minimum and then following up with free bodies, then following up with, you know, big bosses that, uh, later in the game, like the the thing I like to, I kind of get afraid of playing this matchup is that at the beginning and middle of the game, Sakazuki's removal is beyond top tier. Yeah. Towards the end of the game, you've used some of your ice ages, you've used some of your uh, great eruptions. Um, you're you're having to come a little bit out of hand with your counter power using things like surus and whatnot. Hina does a lot of work, but the later in the game, just naturally, the less resources you have in a mm-hmm. combo deck like Sakazuki to use two cards to get rid of a big card. So with Katakuri, not only are you putting pressure on the early game, but your late game, you start playing bigger and bigger uh, like uh, characters. And that yeah. can sometimes really be this like dichotomy that's not good for Sakazuki. As your hand dwindles and you lose the ability to combo out into big cards, Katakuri is playing bigger cards. And sometimes that leads to a big mom sticking. And it really only takes two back-to-back bosses sticking against Sakazuki to really fold the deck in a lot of cases. Once that first boss sticks and a second one follows it, it's hard. Sakazuki, yeah, they don't have the the counter value to survive. I mean, we've seen it. Like, I mean, back in the uh, back in the previous set, we would see like Yamato, like if 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 an Anel, for example, which very very similar Katakuri and Anel back back in the previous set, if if Anel was able to stick uh, one to two uh, uh, Yamatos back to back, they were they were cooking but i my opinions on this on this matchup kind of go in the sense of it's sakazuki's game to lose and by that i mean not necessarily it that doesn't necessarily mean translate to sakazuki is favored to me but sakazuki has more opportunities to play in optimally or play a turn incorrectly and then katakuri which gives the window for katakuri to just play smoothly and just win take the game from there um, like Sakazuki is definitely seen and I believe to be the deck that it is about being able to play every turn efficiently every turn well and if you're not able to do that you might oh. just see your the, the game slip away from you fair enough so like right here um, I do agree with you Sakazuki I think takes the most player input right now currently mm-hmm. in the game so anytime you have more interactions you have chances to play better than your opponent or play worse than your opponent whereas Katakuri is a deck that'll just curve out um, we yeah. got a little bit of a, we got a little bit of a, I mean, he's sorting his opponent's deck. He's shuffling his opponent's deck. It's realistically, I guess he's taking no chances. He's taking no chances with his opponent, particularly. I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to go into that. I, I'm a little weird about it. I'm a little weird about it because oh, I see. in person, I'm like, you're, you're watching the person shuffle their deck. <laughs> it is a little weird. And maybe they like sneak a peek or something, but no, we're all respectful here. I think. I think everybody and Sakazuki is obviously going first. We're going to play turn one to Shigi. This is the thing that makes Sakazuki probably this is the biggest power creep that Sakazuki received this set outside of Gekko Moria, even if they may or may not be running it. Um, uh, just another searcher. One of the few decks like we saw Law uh, back in set one with two searchers do a lot. And now that Sakazuki has 
this uh, two searches for the same archetype it's it's powerful and to to piggyback off what Risu is saying it's not just a searcher it's a one cost searcher so mm-hmm. sakazuki used to have one of the most abhorrent just like ugly turn ones going first they just look at you <laughs> just and pass. just start and draw and pass <laughs> like but now with tashigi you have a bit of a better turn one it doesn't mm-hmm. fix your often even curve but it is better than just doing nothing. Now we're seeing him play uh, a pudding. Yep, takes the ten drop big mom off of the pudding. It was all tar. Both, both these players both are winged out right now. Both max rarities. He said we are not playing games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he said hey, this is we're, we're going to the casinos. We're playing in full it. max rarity. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is going to be the Sakazuki's first uh, t- uh, turn to be able to attack. We just go in with a simple five uh, k attack into life. Do we counter out or do we try to... No, we counter out. Counter out with a 2k, if all things. Interesting. And then a play Tina on curve just to try to get another attacker on board. Try to, like, outwide the potential uh, triggers in life. Or at least specifically character triggers. Because I think those are the most threatening. Well, so I also feel like uh, while some people may think the counter out is weird, before Sakazuki could go wide, but it didn't really go tall. Now with the <laughs> introduction of Gekko Moria, you do hit the uh oof nice you do hit the area of um of play where sakazuki can arrive at these boards where you either have a blocker or you're taking damage and so i don't necessarily hate the idea of protecting your life while you can because in one piece that is a huge thing just inevitability nice inevitability is a big part of the game bosses right. come down and eventually saturate the field he's getting in some extra damage twice actually and um i think that is actually another thing that we pointed on before sakazuki can have some very counter light hands and now we are seeing him already at two life yeah on turn two and that's going to be very scary because katakuri doesn't have a break point in Mm -hmm. uh in the pressure it puts on its pressure just accumulates throughout the game and only gets stronger so sakazuki is going to be working uphill here we've got a hina we got tashigi and now we even have a sabo which is going to be pretty good i mean it's not like it's the best in this matchup like the we don't really have people like noshing on thunderbolts or anything like that but it's still going to allow him to filter and if there is anything sneaky out of life we'll get that out be able to exactly we'll be able to protect things like hina and whatnot and it's a manga rare sabo as well we go playing with playing with the paycheck right on the board um something to note but from the previous turn from the katakuri i love when people take the time and attack with their searchers attack with your one drop play um especially against the deck like sakazuki where they're just going to remove most of your stuff anyway um we're like the why what what would be the point of playing a four drop and like just have it removed instantly get the value out while you have it if you have an attack on board use it have it available to you um the hina is going to go in and we're going to take the life and uh no trigger yep as simple as it is it's making the most out of your value like you said Mm -hmm. that one drop will be removed on accident you might as well get some value in off of it protect a card that could potentially be two for one yep. if you were to play it and then on top of that it's also a little bit of a shield one of those attacks went towards the uh pudding instead of his face and mm-hmm. so you can just see like even a simple play like that was that that's a point where you have skill expression in this card game it was a very very clean move and it, it just denotes like that this person is comfortable in the matchup and has played a lot of games so now we're moving into this next turn board is clear And one of the things that Sakazuki is, like I said, able to do is go wide. And we are already seeing that. Even though Sakazuki would be considered the control deck in most of these cases, it is the deck with three valid swings next turn versus Katakuri's empty board. Yeah. So, Um, uh, yeah, we need to see this kind of turn around if Katakuri wants to stick the momentum. Because Katakuri is a tempo deck at heart. If it doesn't mount momentum, it's going to fall behind. We're on six dawn, but we're going to go for nine. Where are we going? We're going to look at our own life. Can't quite see what it was, but we are going to put it. So that's two of our own lives we've set to the bottom as Katakuri. And interesting Oof. enough, we take it. And we're going to play the Peril Sparrow, which is probably the... Honest, honestly, I just agree with the play. If it gets removed, as long as it's... I mean, we we are running playing into Helmblaze a little bit, which feels kind of bad. But 
Um, if if they don't, if for whatever reason they don't have the Hound Blaze and they have to use a KO effect on this guy, um, you're just going to be able to replace it very easily. So the thing that's uh, the thing that's getting to me the most mm -hmm. is um, a huge part of games that have these counter values in hand is intuition versus educated guesses. Mm -hmm. That swing with uh, with pudding did not have to go through. It was right. actually an incredible show of the strength or lack thereof of the Sakazuki's hand that it did hit for damage. Yeah. And smelling that, he's like, okay, I've seen what you searched. You drew two, you discarded two. I'm looking at your discard. You discarded two cards without counter value. You are counter light. And so instead of just adding another body, he said, let me give you an attack that's either going to rid you of the rest of your counter value or do mm -hmm. damage. And just that check for nine is showing him how weak his opponent's hand is. This could be a potentially nasty thing where if the Sakazuki player does not establish a blocker, that Katakuri may just win off sheer singular pressure alone with his leader. Like he's I he's, mean rejects live, right? It is I mean, gross right now. <laughs> Reject could very easily get rid of oh my god, this is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting turn from Katakuri going into eight on next turn. Mm -hmm. We are able to hound blaze the uh Paro Sparrow, which I, I feel like we kind of expected. If 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 we were able to stick it, great, but doesn't mean yeah. and up. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was I was about to say, I was about to say, like, this is the scariest part. Swinging into life, like that Sabo is standing between him and necessarily dying immediately. Mm -hmm. But um it's just very scary because him swinging into life just potentially adds more for him to out or uh, to get around next turn like this is a precarious position for sakazuki yeah and now we don't really have the dawn to minus this uh minus this power sparrow and hound blades it again so i mean i guess maybe we could maybe meteor volcano or great eruption great eruption, great eruption hound blades would work but but you would it would allow you to attack for eight as the hina and then maybe. I was about to say the attack is actually very scary. Like if he has another blocker in hand, I could see him playing another blocker. But like the attack is scary. Like he has to press. At this point, I think he realized that he's not surviving for too mm -hmm. much longer. So he needs to press and hope that he can get there. Um, that wow. being said, mm -hmm. this this is that risky kind of uh, this is that risky play where you realize you can no longer be passive. So you have to be the aggressor because. Yep if he if all these attacks are going through and looking at his hand right now uh a rebecca it looks like a borsalino i you think i saw a, you know a hina in there oh no i'm not sure what that yeah okay so that was a hina he is counter light it looks oh is that marineford he just yeah it, yes. we're actually playing so, stage sakazuki and that I don't Correct. know if anything was supposed to tell us that before this, but it's definitely the stage or a stage, well, right? The, yeah. The thing I'm saying is that seven drop Borsalino? Uh, as the alt art because i thought i saw the leg in there i don't think that's a the thing I, that's, I think i think it's the top 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 32 top 16 borsalino so it's oh, still the, the okay, black okay, blocker okay. one yeah okay. yeah it's hard to see so, from our end but yeah i see uh okay so looking at his hand he i don't think he has more than like three or four k combo i see another manga sabo yeah that's good uh, we're seeing is that oh, a, that, that's Kuzan. Oh, it's Kuzan. It's Kuzan, it's the... yeah, that's top. So realistically, mm -hmm. he's in a pinch here. A yeah. a 9K swing might just be a sure damage if he doesn't block it. And so here's just this point where he has to figure out what he's doing. He's playing the Kuzan. He's getting draw a draw. Card. He is banking that yeah, he will a 2K, not die. Nice. A 2K in hand is great. Um, But yeah, you, this is this is actually very, very, very scary. But pressing, pressing into this life, he mm -hmm. is trying to line up potentially a, a game ending turn and a mm -hmm. turn or two. But I think he still has to worry about a lot of things. He's playing the Shigi to get a search. He desperately needs the uh, combo value or the, uh, the counter value. Definitely needs another 2K. Like, I think, oh, I what do you get? Is that a Virgo? Yep, gets the Virgo. That's huge. Okay. Adding 4K counter value is very, very, very good, especially when he traded the 1K for it. But we're still not out of the woods yet. With only one blocker on board, there's a plethora of cards that can potentially hurt this. Like if he is playing a uh, Amaru, then that could potentially get in the way. Um, we are looking at a board where, of course, reject could be very, very mm -hmm. handy. But we also have to realize that there's not a lot going on for Katakuri's board right yeah. now. So it's Katakuri's eight on turn. So I, I feel like we don't see a, a big, a big play here, right? We don't. I don't. I don't expect to see Katakuri play a 
play a seven drop mom i feel like this is a turn for katakuri to play more low to the ground potentially i mean it's something i wish more categories probably try would try to play is maybe the the four drop rusher but it wouldn't work here because of uh, how life totals are katakuri is at two life not 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 three that's on the screen but uh what's the optimal if like if you have reject do you just try to go for it and just try to pinch through the blocker um i think honestly beforehand you are looking at this and you're you're saying you're testing the strength of the hand however mm -hmm. right now you are currently looking at a position where he has added two 2ks mm -hmm. and yes you can maybe assume the hand may be weak but dude's got a bit of a grip now and he just added two 2ks to his hand i don't think right. a shotgun is safe in any i don't think it's safe right now however oof we do okay. reject reject to get sabo out of the way um right. it's it's interesting right now now this last life i think is just kind of like expendable because you either keep it or you maybe get it rejected at some point anyway mm -hmm. um and that's just another card in his hand but without his blocker on the board this is very scary because while we don't have a rusher coming out um you're really just having the category guy being able to just check the strength of his hand again get some of those 2ks out that he just added to his hand but i think this is a very scary point to uh be in because we're really just a turn away from yeah. either player actually not even either player anymore we're a turn away from uh the sakazuki potentially getting folded but but the kuzon sticking if the kuzon yeah. doesn't go anywhere we at least have some solid pressure and removal on top of it. Uh, that almost makes me question would it have been more worth to to ko the the kuzon because kuzon's going to be able to follow up next turn and do do a lot of the cost reduction for the sakazuki and get a lot of his effects going just just off of a single attack well uh, i don't think he has the board to really mind kuzon like it's not like he has anything he needs to protect right. here so right kuzon... we already used for dawn so there's nothing big coming down that's fair and we're going to take this for eight all right um now we do know the other manga sabo is in hand and going up to nine we could just see a double blocker turn here to keep him out of uh reach from getting a uh, from getting ko'd but this is still a scary place to be in the mm -hmm. sense that uh yeah now granted those blockers are more selena and sabo or rebecca and sabo <laughs> Yeah, or, so, so KO effects are not going to be live if if they do go with that play. We are going to minus one. We're going to attack with the leader minus one cost to the Perospero. Mm -hmm. Um, Does that mean we have the third Helm Blaze? And we're going to counter out of that attack. Yeah, I think uh, just because of the threat of a card like Amaru, on one more time. you you have to. I think you. I think this just has to be a double blocker turn. One blocker is easily bypassable. Right. So. Uh, I'm gonna miss out on the Paro Paro Sparrow Sparrow effect, unfortunately. Oof. Uh not gonna activate it, uh, unfortunately. And but uh man, uh Toshigi, do, do you now that you've removed the I mean we are staring down uh we have we are, we're at zero life. Yeah. Um Katakuri is at you're you're gonna do you 10 mom next turn? No way, right? That's I don't think 10 mom does enough in the situation, but if he doesn't have a better card, he doesn't have a better card. Um, we we know his opponent is going to like I I would be flabbergasted if we don't see a Rebecca into mm -hmm. Sabo to protect it because that's going to be able to at least get back something. Um, we're going to be able to see two blockers, which is so hard to bypass when you only have mm -hmm. one valid attacker on the board. Big Mom would not be a bad card, but with Kuzon on board, it's just it's not it. Um, I mm -hmm. do think uh, this is. See, now Sakazuki is, like, of course, swinging it back. Um, mm -hmm. Going down to zero is fine here. He had the defense in his hand. Yeah. But this is just – this is one of those fields where it's good because Katakuri is is empty. Yeah. The board is just not in his favor whatsoever. Uh, there's no way to get past – or to attack past. He's at very minimum. The closest turn he could potentially close out game is next turn, which means yeah. that this entire – like, most of this board has the potential to go sideways the following turn it's it's not looking good even with three life it's not looking good for a category he would need multiple bodies coming out yeah. and to pray that his opponent does not have the ability to remove them after that so we are really just sitting here uh yeah momentum is not on category oh uh, it looks like we is are he reminding to... him of the Parasparrow? 
Yeah, so uh, I think we had a judge call, and then they're reminding about the Perospero effect because it did not get bond deck. It did get KO'd, so we are going to be able to get that extra card, get our some of okay. our value going. No. It is a mandatory effect, but we whiff, apparently. That's yeah. So I guess it's mandatory. Or maybe they ruled it since you missed it. You have to look, but you're not allowed to take anything at this point. Um, mm. I didn't quite catch what the, the top three were. Um, if it's grab up to, then yeah. Yeah, it is grab up to. Yeah. yeah so, so you can you choose nothing. Bottom. So they might have ruled it a little awkwardly because of, of actually, you know, game state and rule, rule, losing it. Uh, so, uh, category going into the 10 down turn. Uh, and looking at, look, you're staring down a full board. You got 10 down. You have two life. So if you 10, 10 drop here, you can go to three. Three feels kind of safe with, uh, I think, five cards in hand now for me. Nah, try. And you know these last two life. Like the Katakuri specifically put these last two lives to the bottom. So surely there's something there to be protected or to sure. be like, you know, swing the turn in his favor. Hear me out. Hear me out. We're we're mm. triple. We're we're gonna double Amaru for game. Um, so we're getting another heal. That's good. Going back to three life. Um, this is kind of just a odd turn. I mean, you're going to get the swing out. It's not doing anything. I mean, because mm -hmm. you know, Sabo's bigger. Um, realistically, you're just adding another life, a little bit of a buffer, a chance to get another trigger, another body potentially. But you're also giving him a swing next turn that he has to just block and lose a block or two. Um, now that being said, Kuzan is here. Yeah, and when surely Kuzan this is big here, mom's not long for the world. Yeah, Kuzan is not, and you get to press the, you get to press the, uh, the leader, and you get to start reducing this. This mm -hmm. is gonna be rough, but um, look, Attacking I'm a fan. You know, for five, we uh -huh. are gonna take it. Trigger. Yeah, oh. this wide board, this wide board. See, man, uh, I'm telling you, double Amaru, double Amaru would have been it. <laughs> I think, well, yeah, double Amaru might have been, uh, that would have been busted. But what are we so, okay. now? I mean, from the Sakazuki player, you just you just play the Borsalinos we know you have in hand and call it a day, right? They, they even it's not like they're gonna play quadruple Amaru against you. Yeah, no. Um, Sakazuki is countering out pretty. here is interesting to me. I feel like you kind of want to go down to one life because you want Amaru to be live, or is it two life and less? I thought it was um, okay. Amaru. Amaru just needs to be triggered, if I'm not mistaken. Ah. But, like, he's got so little in hand. I'm not sure if trading his entire hand for one more life would be worth mm -hmm. it right now. It's just that this is just rough. But now we're getting we're getting the big Moria. Oh. Oh, and oh, that's, that's true. Amaru, Amaru cannot rest. Uh, that was my bad. Four it's, it's, less, five. Yeah. it's five. Yeah, that's – it's too big. But, like, ah, oh, this, is, this is bad. All right. So we're going to – what are we playing? We're going to play Luchi. He's got to replace – yeah, he's got to replace. Oh, he's going to replace the Kuzan. That's interesting. I feel like there was so much value we were getting there. Oh, but we're well, going to play Virgo minus yeah. three. And now Lucci will be able to finish off the big mom. So, I mean, just because of this, and you don't know what his opponent's running, um, you never, like, he doesn't have the full knowledge, of course. So you mm -hmm. can't get rid of the blockers, and you're certainly not going to get rid of Moria. So those are those are his only chances. But yeah, getting rid of the big mom is huge. Like we, we said, the moment Kuzan just stayed in the field, we just knew. Yeah. That uh, Big Mom was not long for this world. And now we're sitting at a point where Katakuri, a, a, a deck that's normally very aggressive and has a lot to add to board, is just it's empty. Mm -hmm. And Sakazuki is fully stabilized. And uh, that's that's it right there. Like, um, I, think we were, I don't I mean think, to be bleak, but... Hmm? Uh, I, th I think we still wanted to see, like... I think we still wanted to see take that top life because if we put it there, we know what it is, and probably you don't put something that's not a trigger to the last two of your life. So we, I still feel like it would have been better to take this life and then trigger what it is. It could be a dud. Maybe I'm maybe I'm overthinking because I didn't see what what actual card gets into the bottom here. But we're we're looking at another ten dawn turn. We could just play another big mom, um, but something like a reject Amaru. Reject Amaru. Reject Amaru. Trust. <laughs> and then just hope that they didn't draw into enough combo for the what would it be reject is four and then so you have seven plus eight yeah so you're you're looking at 13 I just hope they can't get out of the 13 powerful i mean i i don't know it's not even i don't even really think that's like a hope like 13 is just uh that's one of those unobtainium one piece numbers <laughs> like if you get someone by 13 you're probably you're probably out hmm 
Fair enough. That being said, I don't think I would have countered out of this because if my only shot for game is reject Amaru, I'm probably if I have Amaru in the deck, we know he plays reject, but if I have him on the deck, I'm probably taking as many life as possible just yeah. to make sure I can hit. Well, that's that, that's but. that's what I was trying to get at with like we countered out of that life, but we we kind of want to be at one life. Um, but maybe maybe we're just it wasn't worth the commitment because it, I mean when you're staring down a 5k attack, it's really hard to not just say. Um, and getting a good look at the the Katakuri player's hand, I don't think there's a reject. I think it's a double Amaru hand. And, yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, Sabo, Sabo's chilling up here, being a little too big. Mm -hmm. uh, the double blocker is always, like, the bane of, like, these turns, but... He... Well, Sabo's, like, such a key card, because, like, the only way you can get rid of it is the, uh... The, um... Oh, my God. The only way you can put it out the way. Yeah, I mean... Mm -hmm. All right, so where where do we go? I mean, we're looking at the trash, trying yeah, to see what his outs could be, but he really did need to go down to uh, he really did need to go down to one life. Like it's it like no matter what, no matter how we cut it, going down to one life just would have been the move because right now Amaru's not live. Right now mm -hmm. he can't re like. Ugh. I think I think if we had a second ten mom, maybe that would be that'd be good. We just reset to... the turn, except now the the Sakazuki doesn't have access to Kuzan for. The extra uh, bit of removal. Yes, but like uh, with Lushi, his leader, and Gecko Moria on board, mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, attacking for nine. Yeah, it's, uh, that's rough. Seven mom, trash your own life. Oh, that feels so bad. No, of course. I mean, he's trying to get the bodies on the board, but realistically, like, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, we needed none... to see this big mom so much earlier. So yeah, we don't know his, uh, we, we don't know his deck. But, mm -hmm. like, I feel like if there's only one line of play, you just take that life. You get down. Mm -hmm. You get down to one, and you hope. Like, yeah. you hope it was a reject. You hope it's something to, to uh, the extra attack you're looking for. Um, it's, it's not even hoping. We know what it is. It, oh, it was a beige. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, oh, no. Yellow, 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 yellow. All Already right. Yellow. So, what's the last life? This will be interesting because now we only have one viable attacker we could potentially go in with the uh, the hell mepo but uh with 10 you got to commit some dawn to that and, uh, or 5k put minus one the big mom yep but i i think i think if we just play borsalinos this is over or if we just play a second sabo would be disgusting oh and then oh choosing to 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 stun the sabo i feel like I feel like I would have stunned the Helmeppo. What do you? What was your take on that? You think um, Sabo's the right play? So it's very strange because Sab. Okay, yeah, I was like wow. Sabo is presenting an attack. Like if you couldn't out combo or out counter mm -hmm. the uh, Helmeppo, you couldn't out counter the uh, Sabo. But right. it's like if he knew he was going to lose, he knew he was going to lose. But personally, mm -hmm. it's like yeah, since that was his last life, there's not really much to do there. You can't really bait him into swinging with the Sabo when right. you can't out counter the Sabo. Period. But yeah, like again, we don't even know if he was running Amaru. So when right. we were talking about him going down to one, if he doesn't have him in the deck list, he doesn't have him in the deck list, and there's no reason for him to go down to one. So right. we probably are like, I, I bet if we had his deck list, we would know that maybe he just doesn't have Amaru and he didn't want to go down to one because there was no Hail Mary in that. But yeah. um, that just honestly. And knowing they were beiges at this point kind of changes the context too, right? Because it's mm -hmm. like, well, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna just give up a beige and just essentially turn off an attack that's not important right yeah there was there was a little bit it's uh it's not often that you see that happen but throughout mm -hmm. that entire match katakuri just did not have katakuri was not able to stick anything to board which is fair against uh against sakazuki that's generally they, what they sakazuki's game out, plan yeah. is but even just bodies coming out from life i think we had a pair of sparrow but just more bodies coming out for life generally is like okay you get a body from life you play a body for turn Sakazuki has to deal with both of them. Rob Lucci's, of course, get that done, but eventually you do run out of resources. Um, but yeah, there we really did just see what happens when a control deck stabilizes. He stabilized, yeah. he locked it down, and then it just got to a point where, you know, Katakuri only had one attack per turn. And that's just the nature of the game. Between summoning sickness, also between things not being able to attack when they uh, when they uh, the turn they are played, mm -hmm. you really just have a point where you can count the amount of attacks on board. 
he's got two blockers. So there are a lot of shenanigans. He's at two life. So you know that you're not getting a Marud when he's at that high of a life total. Mm -hmm. And then you're just sitting there knowing that your two blockers are going to keep you safe no matter what he plays. Like the worst thing his opponent could have played would be like a rusher Anel if he had it. And even Which, then, both yeah, attacks right. would have gotten eaten. Like, mm -hmm. if he did tech that card, both attacks would have gotten eaten, and he probably would have been destroyed on the clapback. So, um, realistically, Momentum was not in Katakuri's favor, and Katakuri is a very tempo-oriented aggro deck. So, it just wasn't the cards, quite literally. Yeah, it yeah they just, just the little things like not being able to play t uh, 7 Mom on curve, playing it late like they did, it was just kind of, kind of a, a, a throwaway, like, yeah, he he knew what he was doing. He knew he lost. So all he could do was add a body and hope it survived. <laughs> like yeah, so that that is one of our our meta meta matchups too. Like this is a, this was two of the big three, and we see Sakazuki. It was so it's so easy to see Sakazuki just take over and win Katakuri. And I, like like I said, I I'm on the camp that Katakuri is the better deck. But we did see three. Like even then, we saw three triggers out of six. Uh, three triggers out of six life for mm -hmm. Katakuri. Um, one being Perospero and then two beiges. Pretty, that's, that's pretty good. I, I feel like you're probably hoping for a little more characters than just beiges at this point, but mm, I'm not sure. I mean, I think Katakuri has more power, but when it comes to both decks, Katakuri has power that hinges on variants a lot of the times, whereas Sakazuki is like cold, dedicated, search, draw, recycling. That'll That'll get you there. So it's like more like less power, but it's all on command, you know? So with that being said, it's just he was really just able to take that down. I mean, using your life as essentially a draw four is pretty powerful. Uh, he started off counter light, like yeah. early in the game, looking at his hand, he actually could not get out of those swings effectively without dropping half his hand at the time. But then late game, it was just like he just had sealed Five it. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sabo Rebecca is nasty work. All right, so we just finished that round. We saw Sakazuki easily handily take it after going to zero life and then stabilize and go off of blockers. And uh, but yeah, we're gonna end the round. We're gonna go to round three. We'll come back, see some more uh, One Piece action. Uh, we're uh, see you, see you guys then. We'll <laughs> see you, fade us away. Alrighty then, welcome back to the eSports Stadium Arlington One Piece Offline Regionals hosted by Play TCG. We are here going into round three soon enough. Um, we've had some interesting matches. So far, Katakuri has been on stream both times, facing both an off meta and a very much so on meta matchup. Uh, we've seen uh, actually Katakuri... Take the L twice. <laughs> Just fight yeah, Katakuri take the L twice. That was, <laughs> that was really good. I mean, I, the first game we saw Nami be able to pull off four uh, four pilafs, which is very helpful. And then uh, like not maybe improperly dropping down a 10 drop to trash the last life. And then in the second game, we just didn't see Katakuri see what they needed. Um, I feel like they could have played it out a little better, but it just seemed like their hand just wasn't what it needed to be. And Sakazuki stabilized with just way too many blockers, like just kind of like how they traditionally do anyway. Correct, correct. We uh, we at first were like, oh, we love the we love the uh, pudding swinging with the four dawn, and little did we know that he might have actually just that was, not had that was the only play. play he had anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it, it it is what it is. Uh, I think this is actually kind of like. Uh, good showing. Uh, lots of people just see Katakuri holding up almost a third of the uh, top cut slots and not really knowing that Katakuri may actually have a lot of people placing, but its actual conversion rate may not be the highest. Katakuri in a lot of these tournaments is some of the most played decks, but isn't always the yeah. most topping leader. And even that's in just previous formats, right? Even in previous yeah. formats, Katakuri was one of the most represented decks, but just didn't have the conversion rate. But now we're seeing that conversion rate go up, actually. We, we see it uh, in, in a few places where Katakuri, I think, ha is the most represented deck in the past previous few tournaments. And its conversion rate has gone up since its previous stereotype of like, oh, everyone's playing Katakuri, but it, its conversion rate is trash. It's awful. Now, now it's trying, it's seeing a, a climb in its, its, in its uh, conversion rate. Is it, is it a perfect conversion rate? It's hard to really gauge what a perfect conversion rate is, but it's definitely better. Um, yeah. 
it's and just, it's just it's a, it's an easy it's it's a, it's a simple deck, right? You're trying to curve out, you're trying to do simple decisions, and and then your life just kind of gives you that extra uh power to hump over a lot of a lot of board states, right? Yeah, essentially with Katakuri, there's just a certain amount of variance involved. Like Katakuri, even if Katakuri had to pay for all of its cards, it's doing a fair amount of stuff. You have your Pyrrhus Sparrows. Uh, the four drops are generally better off of life than not, but your seven drops, your eight drops, if you play them, your 10 drops, they're very, very strong. You have great, great cards like uh, Reject and uh, Amaru that can really tear apart boards when you go for the uh, finisher. And then you realistically have the ability to uh, also high roll off your life. That's that's where that second bar comes in. Your cards are good, but when your cards are good and your life is flipping well, you are in the money that being said you're gonna have a lot of categories that do not as well as they wanted to you have a lot of some categories that really high roll and they see it but that is that is the variance there uh it's 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 definitely interesting because yes it is often represented it is fairly simple simplistic in uh in deck choices but uh personally for me i am i would definitely be more of a sakazuki player uh, I would definitely play Moria or Sakazuki before I played Katakuri. But the one thing that kind of gets me, um, I don't like variants at all. And that sounds okay. weird being a card game player, but mm -hmm. Moria tapping choice. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Moria <laughs> tapping one to uh, mill top five. That gets me. I've never been a, uh, even, though, even though I know it toolboxes, there's just going to be some times where I put a Rebecca if I play it in trash and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh. Uh, or I put like a great eruption or an ice age and that's going to hurt. So for me, I am definitely more of a Sakazuki player because I like having as much control over control. my deck as possible. Um, but the the name of the game is consistency. And that's kind of the thing that like, gets them. You can't hammer it in hard enough. If Gekko Mori and Sakazuki are running all over the place and then Katakuri is coming all over the place, even if Katakuri is up there, even if it's high rolling, right? Yeah, you are getting to a point where if a Katakuri has a 30% high roll and a you know 20% you know normal game and then like a 50% eh, mediocre roll, Gekomori and Sakazuki are at a solid just game state, good draws, good finds about 70% of the time, 80% of the time. And they have a well, maybe a 70% of the time with like a 10% chance to like really, really brick, and then a 20% yeah. chance to high roll with like Gekko Moris on the top end. That's over the course of a day, probably going to put in more work than most of the category players that are hoping to high roll. So it's just a thing. Let me pitch something to you. So you got, we get a, we get a tournament report in. It's got, it's the top 16 deck list. How many decks in your mind do have to be represented in a top 16 before you feel like, oh, that is a healthy meta format. That is a diverse format. Like, is there a number in your mind? Because for me, it's 10. If I see 10 decks in a top 16, that is a very diverse and healthy meta in terms uh, of diversity. Depends on the format. If mm -hmm. your game has sideboarding, okay. then in a top 16, I don't expect to see more than three big decks, two to three big decks, and maybe two to three small rogue representations. When you don't have a side deck, I think that two or less in a top 16 is indicative of an unhealthy format when it comes to balance. Mm -hmm. But I, with when a game doesn't have a sideboard, I, in a top 16, I expect to see five, six. Because yeah. no sideboard, best of one, makes sometimes it more matchup dependent than you'd like. You could go an entire day eating off of your favorite matchups, or you could not see a lot. So um, I think that, I think that 10, 10 is kind of a lot for me. But like I said, if there's no sideboard, I think that can be plenty healthy. But if there is the ability to like change your deck per matchup, I think 10 just kind of shows that like no deck has a handle on anything for the most part. But that's just me. I am a massive fan of triangle form. So you would, so you would, uh, yeah. See, that's where that's where I differ. I feel like trial, like in in terms of like tournament luck, tournament RNG, if you will um triangle formats just end up being like oh i saw my I, I saw the scissors to my paper three rounds in a row so bye um and stuff like that that's where i kind of lean on triangle formats the side of things it is side there, there, 
triangle cyborgs, formats with true. sideboards. That's oh, what I bad. prefer. Fair enough. That's right. Fair I didn't enough. say that, but that's that's what I prefer. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we just got word that round three has been paired. So if you mm -hmm. guys are listening in and at the tournament, please check your apps. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so we'll get to the we'll get we'll get people seated soon. So we'll just fill in a little bit of air. But no, I I, I agree. It's just. Uh, to me, like that, that's why I want sideboards. That's why I'm mm -hmm. definitely like a proponent for sideboards in any 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 I think card every, game. Every game. Yeah, yeah, if, any, if not every card game, right? It's just yeah. sideboards. Like I know there's there's two camps. There's sideboard. Like I think there's inc there there is an idea that sideboards are like, oh, my bad deck will be good because sideboards, and I don't think that's true. But then there's a counter argument that's like, no, sideboards just make the best decks better. And I'm like, yeah, maybe, probably. But that's not why I want sideboards. The reason I would advocate for sideboards is to, like you said, minimize like tournament luck, minimize the idea that mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm paper, you're scissors. I played first round, second round, third round scissors, and so sorry, I'm I'm not in the tournament anymore. Yeah, um, it's. I agree with you 100. percent If somebody doesn't want a sideboard in a game, and they're saying it's just gonna make the best decks better, mm -hmm. I I don't want to hold you, but. I mean, for locals, for fun, you may be playing the right deck for you, but for a tournament, you may not be playing the right deck to get you to where you want to go. Um, the lack of a sideboard just increases variance, but not variance when you sit on the table, variance before you even get there, variance about how That's many true. people are in the room, like you said. Um, hot take, mm -hmm. I like tier zero formats only if the match, the mirror match is, um, is skillful. Right. It's like, if I know for a fact that the better player nine times out of 10 will win in the mirror match, it's not like, a, oh, there's one bomb card that'll super swing. It's a matter of text interactions and who knows the matchup better. I don't mind a two zero format because at that point you got to practice against for the most part one deck and just know it better than other people. But I just find that a lot of tier zero formats have not been like that. I don't think we've had a tier zero format in one piece though. I really don't no, think I so. Don't, I don't think so either. Whitebeard was close, the maybe, closest, but, but like, eh. I don't know. I, that that is a hot take because I would I would I'm not a fan of tier zero formats, but I I do I do understand that there is a value to a format, kind of like in fighting games or uh, anything where when your competitive scene has, you know, we'll, we'll say car we'll stick to card games, uh, mm -hmm. when your competitive scene has you know three decks that that's all you're going to see as a competitor, okay. you're going to be able to prepare for the field very easily. It's not like this brain thing where like. Oh, I'm just gonna lose to a random Nami. <laughs> All right, like that's not gonna happen. I got Kata, I'm Katakuri. I know I need to know the mirror. I need to know Moria, and I need to know uh, Sakazuki. And then obviously it bubbles down from there. But we're being simple for a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to get that clean practice, and like we like I th that does translate well into a viewer perspective too. Sometimes where it's you're gonna see very clean and deliberate play every turn. From those practice players in those like smaller feet like competitive fields correct, correct. Uh, it's, it's so, interesting yeah and uh it's actually i i'm pretty sure we're sitting down the third yep. table and i'm trying to once again tap into cross-country observation hockey to know what the matchup is going to be it's uh it's a little rough right now all right we're hearing we're hearing raise you you're hearing it i don't hear anything i'm hearing the, you don't hear the voice of all things you don't no. have the you you <laughs> really i really am built different aren't no. i yeah no i got the you're voice a, of all things I, I mean observate cross country uh, observation hockey uh, but we're we're right. sitting down with a raju and we're still it's murky it's murky on the other end oh no what's the pose like, what's the pose when i'm casting what's the pose? was i was, was i supposed to bring a reach <laughs> to this like i don't know i don't know <laughs> Um, Raju, I'm I mean, excited for Raju. From set one, I was like, I want a German 66 deck. I want uh, the the transformation mechanic. I want all of it. I, I want I want to be able to play my 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 my. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you've seen it once. You've seen it twice. It is a uh, a third time now. Where are we are hitting Katakuri versus Raju? <laughs> um, I think this is the Katakuri World Tour right now. We are just going to see Katakuri face every single deck. And we will have an intimate knowledge on how the matchups look. Uh, this is very interesting. This is very interesting. So we are going to have this matchup now. This is mm -hmm. very, very interesting. Uh, a four-life leader versus Katakuri 
is always going to be a little scary because Katakuri does have that ability to put on pressure. Yeah. Uh, past that, though, the overwhelming power that can sometimes come from a late game uh, Big Mom Pirates, Charlotte Pirates uh, leader, is going to be countered a bit by the fact that Raju has some of the most devastating board setups past eight dawn in the game. Raju um, just has so many good answers, right? Uh, the uh, Yonji being able hmm. to bounce. Uh, Yon, yeah, wait, Yonji? The blue one. The blue yeah. one bouncing four costs or less is so powerful. So is much of what. Eight, uh, eight? I'm trying to think. Each Niji, each Niji, Niji, Niji. There we go. Yeah, you guys just got to count in Japanese real quick. My bad. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like the you know Niji being able to bounce four costs or lower is very important. It gets you know, most of yellows uh, mid to early game, if not some of the things you're expecting out of life, are all four costs or lower. So you always have that answer to like, oh, you got a cracker out of life, gone or bounce. Oh, you got the 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 Kiko Nojo out of life. Bounce. Now you don't get the heal. You you have a way to circumvent the KO effect. Um, things like that. And then like just the pressure that Reiju is able to offer every turn. Um, like with the rush EG EGGs, no. and then uh, depending on if you're running Yonji, most people either play Yonji, the green one, or they just uh or they just uh, substitute it for queen. So it's it's kind of hit or miss what kind of what list. The, the Raju list tends to be pretty solved with like minor choices. And the, one of those key choices being like some of your 2K lineups, your how many puddings you want to run. And then the big one being, are you on uh, Yonji or are you on Queens? Yeah. And something that I think is uh, good to note here. Oh, both decks stage. mulligan. Oh, yeah. Both decks mulligan, meaning that they are essentially up to fate here uh looking at both these hands it doesn't like they have like particularly amazing starts there was no stage from german 66 or from uh vin smoke raju and uh katakuri has two satori's in hand three satori's in hand oh um attacking for eight oh, they both painful. mulliganed and then potentially bricked <laughs> oh i think so this um, is so well, not, not maybe not maybe raju but Got you. I so I'm on like I love the Raju deck. I think it's when it's when it's firing on all cylinders, it's one of the best. It it would be the fourth best deck. Like it would be taught like we would be looking at the big four if Raju was always playing at, at its at its peak like a Sakazuki can. The problem is with Raju, if you don't see stage or the German 66 option early or event early enough. Um, you just don't have. Oh, we're gonna hard counter out of this attack, which makes sense. You don't want to. You want to lose to this banish, but Rager just has such a bad floor to the deck when it curves out. Like we have not. We've basically played without a leader ability two turns in a row. We might be able to play this turn. Um, I'm seeing we do have Ichig, e e e both the little red and big red cards going in. We're gonna attack for six into life. But Raju can just have such bad games, and in a ten round tournament, you're gonna lose, and so they don't convert. Other than that, any any Raju player will tell you, like if I'm if I see my cards, um, I can win the game. So yeah, it's uh, Raju is a classic case to me of um, when you have too many moving pieces mm -hmm. to make the deck strategy go from. Uh, you have A pieces, which are the little guys. You have B pieces, which are the bigger guys. You have your stage. You have your event. And the stage and event need to be seen fairly early. The little pieces need to be seen in some way or form before the big pieces. You can yep. draw all littles or all bigs, no stage. Like, and it's just, it's, there's a lot of moving pieces that have to go right for yep. you to come out on top. Meanwhile, looking over at uh, this category, it looks like that hand is full of 2Ks, but no action. Oh. Uh, we do have a 10 draw i think we do i believe in the the category or cut yes category we do we do have a 10 drop which will be relevant um which will be important but we're just gonna go another big attack into the ichiji oh we're mm -hmm. attacking this is 10 into the ichiji do we let this do we let this rock i, I mean we'll look at the rock. hand though I'm, i think i see uh what judge the uh oh for radio oh, no. we see a germa 66 event we see a, a judge i believe I believe we have Sora, one Sora. So it's a, is it a three card hand? No, it's a, yes. I thought it was a four card hand. Oh, it's a three card hand. That yeah, he he tough. got out of that banish, but that was a lot. He got out of the banish, and then he had to go into ETG, and that that is draining the hand. Um, the his only saving grace right now is that the Katakuri is kind of stalling out. 
There is not much action in his hand. And this is the only unfortunate part. They mm-hmm. both did Mulligan and then did not draw Stellar. Yeah. Um, so we're seeing another EGG in the search. We see uh, Niji. So we, we, we could potentially KO the Nami because uh, it is a two drop. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the play because we want to get... Oh, we're going to go for the EGG, uh, small or uh, little red. Uh, being able to recycle another... Essentially go for another uh, 7k attack this turn. So that's important. Are we work, work? I imagine we're trying to work our way to judge too. Um, what, what Dawn count are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is seven. So we can, mi- we can afford some minus once this turn. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll counter out with Gadatsu. Uh, oh, one more stage. I like this. Or not Oof. stage, but one more Drama 66. That's huge. Do we see stage? We do see stage, but I imagine we might pick up this Reiju. Oh, it's also our Reiju too. Yeah. It's, it's just rough because at this point, Stage is a necessary card, but you are so behind right now. Like you might as well just draw more cards. I I think you could have. I think you might just hard play this Raju and draw two, right? I mean, or do you, realistically, or would you, mm, a body oh, no. on the. Oh, okay. I was like a body on the board and uh, potentially trying to dig your way out of this hole is something. But he's trying to apply the pressure. The mm-hmm. only sad part here is that while Katakuri's hand is not what he wants it to be. Yeah, uh, he's got enough two Ks in hand to survive yep. a One, lot. Two, yep. Like, he will not just be taking damage to take damage. We're at least taking we're at least taking a lot of cards out. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, Reiji was at seven. So this is the nine dawn turn for no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight dawn for our Katakuri player. All right, let's see if we can end the drought. Right. Yeah, we definitely find a playoff of this. Uh, no, do we though? Rift double and now? Oh, wait, what is no, no, no. What is, what is, it's a little blurry for me. Para? Sorry, it's Para oh, it's Para Sparrow. Okay, so um, he definitely put back, I believe, a reject. Uh, there's Para Sparrow, there was double Para Sparrow in there. Uh, uh that was, wasn't I, the yeah, search. I saw reject. Uh, you're the one who should disappear. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that was okay. not the best search. He almost whiffed. Mm hmm. I imagine we put down the Peril Sparrow. Oh, we're going to attack huge oh, into the EG. And we're just going to let it go. I'm, our plan is judge next turn. Oh, man. Looking at the top card, knowing that you're behind on the back foot and your opponent looking at your top life and going, yeah, that stays. That's just got to feel so. <laughs> that does feel a little bad. Uh, and then, yeah, we're going to play the Peril Sparrow, which probably, if we're on the judge plan, we'll just get bounced. So yes. we're, we don't care. Uh, all right, draw a card. Do we? So is it? Do we rip the judge? Is my question. I don't think we're set up enough for judge, but mm-hmm. we'll get it. We'll Beach. get. We'll get red and blue out of it. Because um, we don't have. I don't think we have Reju. and I That's don't kinda, know. If, hmm? That's a, this is this is big pain. Uh, <laughs> this is big pain right now. Like both decks are operating extremely slow, but the issue that's going on here is that Reju is a combo deck. Katakuri is not. So right. while Reiju is on the back end in terms of uh, what's going on here, Reiju still needs to assemble multiple cards to actually do what it yep. needs to do. Katakuri, anything live off the top is just live off the top. Yep. Okay, By so itself. we do find the little Reiju. Mm-hmm. And I imagine we're going to play it because we're now, we're off judged at this point. Well, we are sitting at three life, so we can judge uh, the next turn and maybe be set. But Katakuri going going to 10, I think this this turn needed to be the judge turn. Maybe I'm crazy. We just didn't have set up for it. Mm. Unfortunate. Uh, and we're, we're going to play the little Reiju. Uh, minus one Dawn, go to seven. All right. We definitely needed this draw. Yeah, draw three because we are. This is the best part of the deck. Yes, uh, it really is, though. Queen, okay. We can afford to. All right, this is good. This is we'll be able to bounce the Peril Sparrow, and no, know, knowingly like force our opponent to play ten drop mom and nothing else next turn. Mm-hmm. No, that's this is gonna be this is gonna be pretty good. Tin drop mom, a leader swing that we can easily counter out of. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, that tin drop mom or that ten out of cost mom does put does put him on a clock. Mm-hmm. Um, that card cannot be denied. Nope. Oh 
man, do, do we do? Are we out of Judge next turn too? I mean, maybe I'm being bad at counting the Dawn. Is there two Dawn under Raju? Only one, two, three, four, five. He's oh, just, I was. Uh, I, I've been miscounting. I've been miscounting the Dawn. He couldn't. He couldn't judge at all. Sheesh. All right. All right. Yeah. Ten drop mom. But like I said, like bouncing the Peril Sparrow made this turn very weak for uh, Big Mom. Other than the fact that they they were or kind of created. Other than playing the Big Mom herself. But now we can just attack. Three attacks. We're going. We're up. Back up to seven dawn. Um, maybe we. I, I see. We just drew into another little Reju, but I don't think we have a, another big one to follow it. Oh, we do have an Ichiji though. Yeah, I think uh, it's kind of rough because this, once again we're hitting that like yellow fallacy, like where any attack that you throw his way could potentially be another body to attack you on the clap back, or it could just um, be the next big mom for next turn. We are going to counter out of that. I mean, I think we still have to acknowledge that we are potentially going into a judge turn next mm -hmm. go. And you gotta, you, you can't have too much life gone. You know what I mean? All right. This is a trigger. It's Ooh. a Hattori. Oh, no. It's a. Oh, okay, no. We are going to counter. Yeah, oh, Nami is interesting. I feel like we could have, I think we could have saved it. Was it Was it worth? And then we could have banished, guarantee banished with the, the big bomb. I think. Uh... Guarantee Banish with Big Mom is nice. I do think that there is a world where we try to make sure that we get rid of as much of the board as possible so that mm -hmm. if there is a judge turn, we still have more life. But he is sitting here with uh, the good rush. Yep. Able to add a little bit more on. He hasn't attacked yeah. with his leader yet, which is interesting. We also haven't used stage yet, which is important. All right. So what did we... Okay, we're going to attack for seven. No triggers from Katakuri other than the Nami. Oof. Are we going down to one life? And picking up a pudding, it looks... No, is that is that a pudding? Altar? Didn't, didn't quite catch it. I think I, I saw... I feel like I, they just drew a Sanji, but... I couldn't, I couldn't catch the other hand. Uh, yeah, the hand's tough to, to, tough to see. Uh, they, they, do really have, they do have an altar putting in hand though so either way you're, you're right it's kind of it's kind of weird because like at this point of the game turtling up is almost null and void like mm -hmm. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna count the the ragey player out but it's like if he judges and makes a huge board he's probably done the clap back but even mm -hmm. if he plays out the queen in his hand that's not enough to really stem the time you're gonna draw some cards mm -hmm. but you're really just you're not even uh you're not even resetting the turn like, you'll draw two, you'll trash one, your queen will get a... Well, I mean, Reiji was going to do her thing if the hand size is right, which it is. But, like, overall, you're you're not doing enough because he's starting to gain steam. Yeah. Like, his board isn't too, too scary yet, but, I mean, 10-cost mom is 10-cost mom. Yeah. We are going to attack into the Ichiji. Um, I feel like the Reiji could have played the other turn. Like, we, we avoided using stage last turn. Which in a hand where like we really want to be trying to find fill out our hand with two Ks, not 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 doing that feels kind of bad. Um, also, we could have just played Queen last turn and drawn a bunch of cards, filtered our hand a lot. I feel like there's value there. We also have a uh, a pudding that may or may not be really relevant here. I mean, how many? I mean, Katakuri has a good amount of cards in hand actually. Pudding mm -hmm. probably could do a lot for you. Um, I guess. My question here is queen for filter, yeah. um, trying to set up for a huge turn. Does the momentum even get turned back around here? That's my scary part. I don't actually think, mm -hmm. like, I think he would need a, at least two, David would need at least two good turns to even turn the momentum around here. And with 10 drop mom on board, I'm not sure if category is going to give, uh, give him that turn. I forgot his leader effect happened. I was like, why is he looking at his life? And then I realized yeah. that, yeah, I got a great. <laughs> it's like, small peak. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. Draw a card. Nice. Like to see that. I don't think any, uh, any singular card really gets you. Oh, well, it's, it's it was a 2K. Um, How much Dawn do we have left from Katakuri? I think we have so much. I think we have all our Dawn left. We have eight Dawn left to go for this turn. We just play an eight drop kind of curry. Is that their plan, or just, or it looks like we might go oh, go wide? No, they're they're thinking they're on the um, eight drop plan. Yeah, I mean, a drop is a little. I mean, it, it's gonna do its thing. Mm -hmm. You reset a life, I think, in this point because you're not really trying to 
Okay. Like what? Reset. Uh, I mean, it's telegraphable at this point. Do you put but... the Raju or do you heal your one of your puddings? Or I, I personally, I personally like the uh, the Onami out. It gives you a little bit of insurance. Now, of course, like he can just. I mean, he doesn't have any. <sighs> to the bottom. Does he not fear the Ichiji at all? Uh, I think he just has so much. He's got he's got a lot of counter in hand. Yeah, I think. Well, that does change our game plan as Raju this turn, though. I think we could. I think we easily just play Queen, and turtle up on two Ks. We did just find another uh, large Raju, so we actually are back on the the judge game plan. The reason I was off it because was that that was the only big Raju we've had all game, but we just drew into the second one, so we can potentially <sighs> judge this turn. But does Judge get us anywhere? I don't think I it mean, does. I think whether you play your turn offensively or defensively, you're like I just don't in a in a like game that needs momentum like this. I just don't <laughs> see Rage you having momentum. Like Queen at best is a yeah. let me see if I can get till next turn and filter out my hand, but it doesn't really do much to keep you in the game. He's now we're reaching like yellow critical mass where at this point he could just swing with Katakuri big mom and dawn up his leader mm -hmm. and you're probably losing most of your hand just not trying to take damage and yeah. that's a little scary like this is maybe like a what two maybe three turn clock mm -hmm. getting our third rage you out of the deck we did bottom deck and ichi for this but that being said we we can judge i think uh i think we judge I think we just judge here. We get uh, we get all our colors out except for green because we're not clearly not on green. Um, we'll be able to draw two cards because a uh, judge will force us to discard. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll be able to draw all our three cards. Judge have a big board. Attack with leader. Attack with. It does ETG. check them. Uh, so right now we're at a point where. Dealing four damage next turn is very not likely. <laughs> like it's it's like what? Like he has three mm -hmm. valid attackers, and he would have yeah. to dawn up a weenie. Um, just getting another card to his hand. You know, asking for the one k. It's a Sanji, nice, and we we love to see those go to the drop for sure. Ooh, yeah, look at this. All right, here's the judge. We got a. Dawn minus one, discard one, discard two. I think we discarded a 2K, which I don't agree. Oh, no, it's a pudding. Okay, sorry. Um, Literally going, like, his uh, the way his hand's set up, or sorry, the way his life is set up, because the Katakuri bounced one of his cards, the kill shot is out of the question for this turn. Yeah, or for the Katakuri. Katakuri can't really um, feasibly win, right? Like... Personally, for me, that's why I was thinking about bouncing the Onami because at least, like, if he does swing with the uh, Onami first and get kind of get rid of it, and he can't end you that turn outside of like Ichichi, but you have the combo. I like bouncing the Onami because I wanted this turn to be the last turn. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I definitely think the Katakuri should have healed your own Nami. Worst case scenario, they attack with their character Raju, and then Nami KOs uh, you KO it back, or you just say you just you keep the Onami in hand for your follow up turn. And now you have access to banish, so they're they're minus essentially two life cards in hand and all this. I, I, I agree with you. At the end of the day, I just agree with you. No, but yeah, now that now that he's given him another life, he's taken away the threat of being able to finish him on the swing next turn. And there's just no way for yellow already has a rough enough time. Yellow can engage the board via counter uh, via um, triggers for the most part, but there's no way red is not leaving half or yellow is leaving half his board like unchecked uh, like i didn't just gonna... we were we were talking too much but i didn't catch if they properly uh drew off of the judge effect because of the the reju leader ability um i assume they did i i assume they if they didn't they at least did when they did the the pink the the big reju effect because the draw three would happen either way i know unless they're not at unless they weren't at five cards um uh, i wasn't i kind of missed that he might be a little nervous, mm -hmm. but that's uh. How many cards do we have weird. in hand? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
We have seven. Seven, and is one of that is that stage in his uh, in his hand towards the? It's. We would Might prefer, yeah, yeah. We would prefer in a perfect world that he drew off of his minus effect with Raju, but at the same time, again, I just think that him putting the uh, him bouncing his opponent's Raju, the bottom of it has just made it impossible from the game this turn. Yeah, one of those attacks is getting blocked no matter what, and he needs to hit four times. Yeah, and I mean, when you only have three attackers, like the, the yeah, no. committing Dawn to putting is just going to feel awful for sure. And with the counter. With the counter yet in hand, I can't imagine him leaving that Rage on board would have hurt him too much. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, being this... able to loop the Nami, uh, the Onami, I should say, being able to loop the Onami would would have just paid itself off because that's like banish. All right, we're going in. Uh, where is this attack going? This is so much Dawn. Uh, this is what is this six Dawn under this? This pudding, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think this is six dawn. I mean, if this attack connects, he has a chance of getting through game, but that just should just show him that he just yeah. We're evaporated. Gonna, oh, we give up the queen. Oh, interesting. Queen was my follow up play for next turn, but I mean, he's got with with four cards in hand and <laughs> one life. He's just got the ability to dawn up things as he chooses and swing up with his board. So, like, realistically, I'm not even trying to play a card next turn. I'm just trying to push. There's, like, not enough. It was five done under this pudding. So, I think, do we do it? Do we do it? Do we do four done under the other pudding? And then leave one done. Yeah, leave one done for a Katakuri. So, now this is six. We have the 2K. Now we're safe. We can't lose this turn. Now Katakuri is free to just attack into the Ichiji. Yeah, I mean... Which is interesting. Of... I feel like these puddings may, may have been worth taking the damage from these puddings. Maybe... Oh, no. Um, I hard think to if say. You, if you take the damage from the first pudding, I think there's still too much Dawn to, uh, to go around. But, but the like, second pudding, you should have probably the second taken. Pudding, right? I think you could have taken, yeah, yeah, because I don't could, think there's another turn. Because you could attack, you can, you can like counter out of if they try to try to take out your Ichiji, you can go into a few things. I'm uh, gonna look at the top life of Reiju, gonna leave it at the top. Oh, also, not playing the brulee is kind of a mistake, too, right? My question here is, um, if he took that image from the pudding, like. Is there anything in his hand that really translates to more next turn? I think everything he needs to win is right oh, here. We're just going for face. All right. We have to get rid of this EG. Yeah. All right. Attack. If we have, to me, if we have the counter, we counter out, but I doubt we have the counter. Going to attack into leader. Uh, hope it's our last uh, little Ichiji. No, it's a Raju. Kind of confused on the, uh, on the sequence there. On the attack like the, sequence? Yeah. Attacking with the, if you knew you were going to clear her, or clear, uh, clear him, clear ETG. I, I that should have been like the first swing on that one before giving mm. him potentially more counter. Oh yeah, no, I agree with you. All right, so this turn we have four attacks. Uh, Katakuri has three, four cards in hand. I'm counting four. Uh, we will get the. Oh, we found the. Oh, that's huge. We're gonna have another. We're so now we're up to five attacks. And they're all pretty solid attacks as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> this might be I know, just right. Hmm? I know we shouldn't like dwell on the past plays, but I still think that like a massive, a massive point of this one, the part of this one was just not bouncing that Onami. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Because uh, like, look going... at his life right now. Like yeah, this could have potentially been a game ending turn had he just not had that Raji right there. I'm going to attack for seven. Now we have to count Dawn, because now I'm like, is it worth spending the four Dawn on the Ichiji? I don't think it is. Attack five, get one more count card out of hand. All right, so that's still three cards in hand. Um, attack nine, right? Nine's a better number. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to shove no, it no, all. We're, no, we're out. We're out. That's okay. it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Good game. Yeah, Um. again, I, I never like to judge judge fully. Mm -hmm. Um. I just think that, like, it, it's... It's rough seeing that rage you there and seeing yeah. that big mom attack go towards Ichiji and yeah. knowing that he bounced his own 
or his, uh, he bounced the Reiju there himself because that could have been a Reiju not there, and that big mom could have been swinging okay. towards life. Now, granted, yeah. there was a lot of counter in uh, in the uh, Reiju's player's hand, so you know, could have said a would, uh, could have should have. We you probably could have countered out of an earlier attack. Like we, could, I, I see a world where like we counter out of the Katakuri attack. It was only seven, mm. if I remember. So we counter out of that attack, and we're still safe, but. It just yeah, made it weaker. Just, it just, it just, everything made it, everything felt weaker because we didn't heal ourselves. Because maybe we don't win that turn, but at least we have one more life. Correct. Um, which is huge. One more life. Um, potentially. Or better yet, uh, we have the Onami to play ourselves for a ban. I was about to say, I was about to mm -hmm. say, you hit with the banish and hopefully that doesn't add to their counter. Um, I mean, he, he did get there though. Like he did get there. He did get to a point where the judge was game. It was just very hard to gauge how that category player uh, like sequenced and the choices there. But um, they also both said, had hard starts, right? Oh yeah, they both they both neither of them started on full cylinders, and they had to draw their way out. Yeah. And it's just like Rage I thought that category, that. Mm -hmm. yeah, Raju Raju only has to hit certain cards to make that worthwhile. A singular queen resolution could draw so much. The uh, big Raju could draw so much. Whereas Katakuri was sitting there drawing very oddly. <laughs> like, um, yeah, there's a lot of things we were seeing. Another Big Mom 10 potentially to follow up the first one could have been There's cool. so many ways it could have gone better for Katakuri just from draws alone. I agree. Oh, we talked about um, that. The variance, man. The variance. Yeah, yeah. The life was walked through without like a second thought. No real, real triggers. That's just what happens. Yeah, he didn't that is actually what happened. That. Oh, was there any trigger from Katakuri? I can't even remember. There was a Hattori maybe once? Or was it a Paros Sparrow? I think there was one character that came out of uh, life. I can't remember. I'm trying to remember because I know he casted a Paros Sparrow. Oh, did he point. cast the Paros Sparrow? Mm. Like, yeah, he played one. It's, it's, there's a there lot. There's definitely one. I feel like there was one trigger. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy. Well, we'll look over the footage later. Which is low, which um, is yeah, low. Yeah. That like, one, Even if it was one trigger, like, that was still very low. And, and yeah. we're, I'm speculating if there even was one. So that, that was definitely a low roll game for Katakuri. <laughs> Um, and Raju was able to finally draw themselves out. They didn't get to see stage or the option or the event early, but the event eventually daisy changed into everything they were looking for. And then they were at least lucky enough to get their leader effect eventually. And then they just drew out for the rest of the game where they were. Smaller. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, that really realistically, that just that put in a lot of work. Um, like we both said, slow starts. I think the uh, Raju player did pilot well. Um, they did get there. They, I mean, it's, it was close. It was yeah, close because sure. there, there was a couple, there was like two really scary turns, in my opinion, for the Raju player where they were just hoping that Katakuri did not play something relevant. But um, that's always, that's, that's always tough to see both players mulliganing and then the hand still not being good afterwards, but that's part of the game. It's part of the game. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. So we're, uh, that's the end of round three. We, we've seen Katakuri lose. Three times, taking three <laughs> L's. Uh, we saw Nami round one for the recap. Uh, Sakazuki round two for the recap. And then we just saw Reiju take it against Katakuri. Oh, that's, a that's a whole that's lot of blue. That's a whole lot of blue. That's a lot. Actually, yeah, blue. <laughs> uh, Rage is more of a purple deck. But yeah, it's blue. True. It's got blue in it. Uh, it's got so blue, blue in the decks. Sean, Sean Katakuri, what's up today? Uh, we're going we're gonna to transition to a break screen. Catch you guys for round four. Uh, remember, reminder, we got 10 rounds today into Top Cut for tomorrow. So uh, all the action isn't today. Some of it will be saved for tomorrow. So being one of the first events with uh, the top question cut, is, Top Cut. So my question is, can Katakuri get a win next next <laughs> round on stream? <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. The life and times uh, of Charlotte Katakuri. <laughs> oh, no. Poor big brother. All right. Uh, fade us away, Brock. Man. <laughs> Please, Brock, no, don't do this. We've to been me. forsaken. So, I mean, until we do get faded out, um, I am interested at this point. I didn't think these words would ever leave my lips in this stream. I am ready to see Gecko Mori. <laughs> I'm ready. I've seen ready. everything else. <laughs> I have seen Katakuri so many times. I am ready to see Gecko Mori. I want to see. I want to see Yamato. I want to see. I, I'm still on the camp of like Yamato. So fun. I know. I know. Like it's got a, a stigma around it where it's just like <laughs> shove ten dawn, swing double attack, and that's the deck. But like, there's so many different ways to build and play Yamato that like 
I just like it. I like seeing it. I, I want to see more of it. There's Fortress build. There's the the slash tempo build. There's more Wano focus builds. There's just different ways to play the deck. It's just like, I, I want to see it. Dare I say that every round we get deeper in the tournament, we are less likely to see a yacht. Oh, <laughs> no. No, I no, know. but maybe, maybe, there's, maybe there's a Dark Horse champion. There's hope. There's hope. Maybe. There's always hope. I Quite believe. maybe. I mean... We'll it's probably just, we'll uh, see a Moria though. We probably will get there. Oh, uh, dude! I mean, we're we're definitely gonna see a Moria. I'm trying to think of what other things I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. Um, for the culture, I wouldn't mind seeing a white beard once. Yeah. That'd be super funny. Um, I'm a Zoro stand. If somebody Would really was believe in Zoro, are, are you on the no. are you on the revolutionary army Zoro? No, no, I don't. No, I don't really believe in Zoro. This he's my favorite leader okay. in the game, favorite character sure. in the show manga. I uh, I know, no. no. Now what about um, what about Star Deck Zoro? Huh? <laughs> uh, that, you mean the one that's, the one that's no, half some... Sanji? What? Hmm? I said the one that's half Sanji. Yeah, the one that has Sanji, dude. It makes uh, the card no. better. He's got that's, two effects. No, that's that's half W, half L right there. I don't oh, know. Oh no, that's that's hurtful. Anyway, uh, just be just before we go on breaks, you got something to simmer on. I'm a San oh, I'm a Zoro stan, and uh, Risi was a Sanji stan, so we are diametrically opposed. I don't know, to bro. We are. What does the commercial say? We are striking wings. rivals. We are wings of the captain, bro. And Brock, take us away. <laughs> <laughs> Before we debate. <laughs> Welcome back, One Piece players. We're here at the Arlington uh, Stadium play with uh, the Play TCG One Piece TCG uh, Offline Regional. Um, going into round four. We got an exciting match for you guys. We got Sakazuki, and wouldn't you know it, four for four, Katakuri, Sakazuki versus Katakuri. We're going to see, are we going to see the fourth L universe? Um, You know, it's hard to say. Uh, sometimes your luck at the casino is good. Sometimes your luck at the casino is bad. And uh, the Katakuris <laughs> we've had on stream have not had Lady Luck on their side, which can particularly get pretty bad when you need certain things to go right for you. Um. Last time, I mean, I did say that I thought that Katakuri had a lot of edge on uh, Sakazuki, but Sakazuki is able to have an end game that rivals Katakuri's right now, plus all the bags of tricks that they've had since you know, the beginning of the deck coming out. So, I mean, look, we just need to see how these people draw. Yeah. Because at this point, like I said, we, we really need to see if Katakuri... Katakuri's, like we said it before, it's a fine deck, but we need to see if it gets its, its extra bonus... It's extra bonus buffs from its uh, life pool or not. But um, realistically, yeah, Katakuri has not been having a good day on stream. I'm sure there are some people that are doing well. Because think about it this way. At one point, at one point, all of these Katakuris were at an XO status mm -hmm. before losing on stream. So Katakuri right, is still course. doing well today. It's yeah, just not absolutely. winning. All right. So we got, we got Sakazuki, Christian... Uh, on the right versus Tyler on the left using the Katakuri. Uh, it looks, it's looking like uh, we're deciding on mulligans and uh, Katakuri has decided not to mulligan. I see a Hound Blaze, a Great Eruption. Tilt that hand for me, please. <laughs> I would appreciate it. Ooh, Katakuri's got a 7-drop Mom, so we're going to see that on curve. We're going to see uh, we got a Hattori. We got a Parasparo. So if, if Katakuri is going first... Okay. Oh, we got a curve on Katakuri side if they go first, but they're not going first. They're going second. Another Hound Blaze. Which is fine. Uh, all, all right. right. So we got Great Eruption. I think I just saw a flash of a Luchi. There's definitely a Virgo in hand. Mm, okay. A pass from Katakuri? Looks like, yeah, just no two drop play. I, I know they have a Peril Sparrow, so that'll definitely. Para, actually, playing on evens is pretty good for Katakuri because if you're if you're playing characters on odds and then you can still have that one dawn for your leader ability every turn, <clears> your <throat> is still just as it's it's pretty. It's not maybe it's not optimal, but it's still good. Like I don't know. Yeah, I like that. I like that uh, play out. I guess. Yes, and he didn't. Uh, well, now you're you're going over here. He didn't. Uh, it was his first turn. No swing. I almost forgot about that. I've been playing a lot of games lately. That was his first turn. So no. Swing. Yeah. Yeah. But um. Even now, I'm trying to think. I don't know. Uh, we don't know the list, but if he is running things like Gadatsu, then he can potentially like hold back the swing for a chance to just mize whatever comes up next. Um, we did get a... He already discarded Helmepo. Is that a... I'm trying to see. It's kind of off screen. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, the Tashigi? Is that what you're thinking? I think it's an Altart Luchi and then a Tashigi. Yep. That in the in the Sakazuki player's trash, yeah. Mm hmm we're getting a swing on Katakuri. Um, it's a little it. dangerous. You never know what this swing is about to be. And we let's go straight to hand. No trigger. All right. So what do we do? This jacket's tripping me up, too. Who cursed uh, Who cursed all yellow players today? Yeah, right? Like, what What happened, bro? All right. Look, at, right. Uh, look at the normal brand new art with the, with the shiny brand new on the field. All right, man. If Kobe can do it. Not Kobe. <laughs> uh, the other one. <laughs> Fix his hairline with some money. <clears throat> Brand new can do it too. Uh, discarding a uh, great eruption. I wish his trash was a little on field, but discarding a great or discarding a great eruption. Yeah. Yes, it was great eruption, and it, and I know what you're saying. It is. It's pretty telling, like in terms of how strong the like. Where where is the Sakazuki trying to go? If we're we picked up an ice age and getting rid of a great eruption feels weird for sure. Mm -hmm. Especially since we're we're going to unfortunately like Para Sparrow, while a good card, yeah. we know we have the Hound Blaze, and it's just <clears throat> it's just gonna be an easy this is gonna be the, the simplest of turns. It's gonna be attack, maybe with for six, maybe we're gonna attack with leader, get the easy card, then minus one the Para Sparrow, and then Hound Blaze it away, attack with brand new, and then use yeah. the rest of our dawn to maybe play a three drop. Or we just this... make the other attacks bigger, depending. We yeah, do have this Hina. Is such... Yeah, this is such a strong hand. Yeah. And the the best part is, if you get all if like even no matter what he plays next turn, you've mm -hmm. got the destruction in hand to get rid of it. Yeah, because he has a, I believe he picked up another hound blaze off Ooh, of uh, a off Tori. The straw. Okay. Oh, what did we get rid of for that? Oh, it's so blurry. It's it's not even blurry. It's like the shiny. The shine. Oh, is that Shiroho? No, that's not Shiroho. No, no, that's a pudding. That's a normal. Oh, pudding. it's a pudding. Oh, so it is a pudding. I see it now. Okay. All right. So. Second second life was a trigger. That's just, that's great because we already used the Sakazuki ability to minus the Para Sparrow. So now it's up to are we we're gonna try to start dig for the Luchi? We might be like digging for Luchi. Oh no, Hina. All right, and then Hound Blaze away the. Oh, oh Tor. <laughs> very nice. Nasty. Very oh, nice. God. Was it? What is? I, I I I it's one of those cards. I can't say the name. In the uh, name, in the name of value, <laughs> like Ama no Mur Murakam Kumo. There we go. Oh my God! Main effect: Amano return Murakuma. one of your opponents two costs or lower, and up to one of your opponents one cost or lower characters to the bottom of the owner's deck. Oh, that's nah, that so was devastating. that was so nasty. Oh, that's so uh, strong. on curve too. That see, it's not backbreaking by any means, but that is mm -hmm. insane. The value he just got. All right, Gadatsu to to KO the Hina. Easy peasy. Gonna look at our own life. We're attacking for seven one more time. We might take this. The hand's kind of clogged with options or events. Oof. You just get another event to hand? I could not quite tell. Uh, I think, no, I thought it was a 2K. Oh. Maybe it was. All right, so we got three Dawn. Set, set up to the side. I wonder... I, people playing with their Dawn always makes me feel like they're trying to telegraph something or, like, fake something, but I just never... I, I opt to never look at my opponent when they're playing with the Dawn. I just... I try to live off of my own... my own uh, brain when it comes to that kind of stuff. The Hound... True. There's a Hound Blaze on the top of his hand. I thought that's what he picked up, but he's still got a... He's got at least two Hound Blazes in hand right now, plus the yeah. Ice Age, plus the Great Eruption. I think I also... I, I think I spot a Rebecca so that the Rebecca can bring back the Hina. Yeah, he's still got to be a little careful because he is he is counter light. Yes. Oh my God. Nice. All right. So that's well, two triggers out of five lives so far. Mm, Looking good. Do we have another Amano Murakumo? I mean, he would have to have the reduction of of the of the divines to uh, to pull that one off right now. Mm -hmm. But I However, mean, one of though, these one of these isn't staying for sure. We have yes. the Ice Age. We have. Honestly, we do we is there a world where we get rid of both? I don't we don't have enough dawn to get rid of both. Wait. Uh hmm? I was just looking because you have Ice Age, you have um you have Ice Age, you have uh Great Eruption, and I believe two Helm Blazes. He would have to get rid of half his hand, but this field can be neutralized. Yes. Which might but not be worth be, it. Yeah, I was like, that'd be a grievous. That's a lot of cards. All right, I'm gonna play That's the Tashigi. 
Yeah, that'd be a grievous like misuse of his like options in hand. Mm -hmm. All right, so searching, searching for a navy. What do we pull? Virgo. Uh, thinking about it. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, Virgo. Or we know Helmeppo. He said. Wait, no. Did we? It's actually Virgo. Virgo. No, it is Virgo. Okay. Yeah, he picked up the two K. Like, yeah, they both have that like same swirl swoosh from our our bird's eye perspective. Let's see here. A whole four. What are we putting down? Yeah, Rebecca. Play Rebecca. Rebecca Hina. Get rid of the Okiku. Yeah. yeah. But that does mean our Gedatsu potentially stays on board. Oh, yeah, actually, this can't almost a... guarantees it, right? Unless there's another. Uh, no, no. Uh, oh, yeah, that would have been sick. Free yeah. Hound Blaze, you say? No. Um, I mean, this is very, very good, though, because before, like, to get rid of both this, he would have had to leave himself open to just another leader swing, dropping him down low. This is setting up a blocker, but it's also allowing him to push a little harder. And mm -hmm. this is like you're jumping into the Jaws right now you don't want to uh you don't want to have another body in this field via trigger and he's been running a little hot this game but you also don't want him just sitting here being safe with a nice sized hand and a lot of life so he's pressing this is good he's removing building up defense and pressing at the same time which is one of the reasons why sock is the key has just proven itself to be such a good deck you can do all of that so we're gonna go to our eight on turn i know we have seven drop mom i think i think we have to play it I think we have to, I think we just, if this is eight Dawn, we, unless we have a uh, eight drop Katakuri, which I don't think there's a great target for eight drop Katakuri right now. Um, I think, I think we just attack with Getatsu for six uh, and maybe into the Hina attack uh, Katakuri for seven, maybe at life. The, 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 the directions of the attacks aren't really what I'm concerned about. And then just, yeah, seven mom, uh, force your opponent to make that, that tough choice. And it's hard for them to go to one, too. So, yeah, now we get to go up to three. So we're playing with six life this turn, or this game so far, getting access to another trigger potentially. And, okay, six. Not sure where it went. And it's going to go into the Hina. Yeah. Um, letting it go. We're going to need a 2K to get out of this. And mm. we let it go. Okay. Now the question is, do we try to get rid of the brand new or just seven life? I think it's seven life. Needs to push this momentum real quick because he's mm -hmm. like actually nearing potential like kill turns. I mean, this is yeah. this strong. Potentially a rare Katakuri W for the day. <laughs> Twenty five percent success. Success. Also, shout out to this man for assembling ten gear fifth Luffy Don. It he's seems grinding, man. Absolute hero, and I get a, I get to see a, a peep his hand a little bit too. He's got uh, you can only uh, you're the one who should disappear mm -hmm. right at the top of hand. Oh, I took it away, so now I can't see anymore. But uh, does have some counter power in his hand. He's not he's not dead in the water. And then not not to say that uh, Sakazuki hasn't really established any attackers. It's a rough one. Oh, we do have an Onami. We have a Hatori. We have uh, didn't catch the last two cards. It's fine. Oh, Nami's going to go crazy next turn if he doesn't have a better play. Oh, my God. An oh, Nami or Olin. Oh, we do. We chose to block with the Rebecca, too. Interesting. He's got to keep that life to a little pie. He's he's starting to... Yeah, getting to I, reject range is always terrifying, right? Reject range, terrifying. Um, It's just... Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're at a point. Mm -hmm. All right, what is our... What does our Sakazuki got? He's got a few cards in hand. Still has that Ice Age from like turn one. Still, I think he, they have that. They have a, a third Helm Blaze, so finding three Helm Blazes this game is wild. Oh, thinking about going for an empty attack for five into life again. Yeah, they definitely have the Helm Blaze. They have the Virgo, so we know three cards. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can peep a different card. I, I think they have another Rebecca. You're gonna Sakazuki effect, get rid of Virgo, draw a card, draw into the four drop Borsalino blocker. Here's the empty attack. Oh, this actually, now that I think about this, Oof. this, oh, we're gonna minus the Gadatsu. Okay. Oh, we're going for a double KO. 
Yeah, I was like, he's got the ice age in hand, so that's yeah. that's nothing. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're now at four. Four dawn, uh, Gadatsu. I'm gonna take the light. Oh my goodness. Mm. All right, so we've had six life and what? Three triggers. Everything's been a trigger, but one. So the casino, casino's live here. This one. Yep. Uh, this is this is what <laughs> it is. It's peak Katakuri gameplay. Peak Katakuri gameplay. All right. So, all right. So, five. Oh, man. All right. So we ice age. What did we ice age? Oh, we're gonna Moria. Oh, so we're just gonna leave the board as is. We're not mm, gonna do. Mm -mm. The, oh the, no, the Lucci uh, coming out. Lucci, right? Uh, I'm a fool. No, no, no. We we just have blurry camp. Oh, <laughs> uh, so Lucci gets rid of both big bodies, but now that we're still staring down a body and no blockers, um, not that we're not, not with two attack only two attacks on board. We're not like super scared of losing, but. Yeah, only one One Piece character's drip could be so fresh. I could see it through the uh, the pixelation. That was uh, <laughs> the Rob Lucci came out and just clapped. You do have the the observation hockey. Ah, I'm so glad of you to put that on screen. Look at that fit. Oh, <laughs> like so I, I I've never seen a fodder character come back with so much. <laughs> Bro, his hat grew three sizes in all those chapters. Even his pigeon <laughs> received the drip upgrade. That's insane. <laughs> Imagine if his pigeon came back in a different color, just like some, like how. <laughs> uh, all right, so all right, so you're on ten dawn. So mm -hmm. it's either it's either big mom, and then attack twice and just kind of give up the turn. I think big mom does go hard here. I don't think we have it though. We're looking at a Sanji to play this turn. We have Onami. I feel like we should Onami here and now since there's no blocker, so you, we're forcing cards out of hand. Um, we do have a Tori. Yeah, we definitely don't have a, a Big Mom or a 10 drop. So it's going to be probably some combination of play Sanji, play Onami, and then use the rest of the Dawn to attack as a, our a leader for this is This is a very, very scary hand. Um, that being said, though, because like he if he still has the Borsalino on hand, which mm -hmm. I do believe he does. Um not... wait. maybe. Oh, who did we give no, the see. who did we give the, the banish Oof. to? I guess we I guess it must be Kikunojo. Yeah, I think it's coming in hot. I wonder why we chose to attack with Kikunojo. And then yeah, banish and it's a hound blaze. It's nice. the fourth hound blaze. Um house blaze is like Little Caesar's hound blazes, both hot and ready. Now the the not attacking. See, this is strange <sighs> to me. Why I feel like if we were not going to attack with leader, we are better off. I guess we're Swinging. baiting. Are we maybe baiting to like take attacks into Okiku? I don't know why he would do that. Um, but like, the, you, you have to you have to assume, especially after seeing uh, the uh, the auxiliary bottom deck extra, uh, event, you have to assume. That, that, that they have a that, second one. Yeah, that Kikinojo is not staying on board nor mm -hmm. getting swung on or attacked. Uh, attacked. You have to. You have to. You have to assume that. So, with that being said, getting the attack out of the way before you know it's about to be bottom decked anyway is probably just safe. It's not safe mm -hmm. uh, to keep it upright. Um, you know, just uh, just an active. So this is an interesting turn. This Sanji really did put him into a place where he might not be able to reach the same uh the same like range for game but yeah. he's still in a great position as long as he can land a blocker as long as he can put another blocker all right oh. so that's no, oh, no, no, no life, life and we take it no trigger okay so no so like i'm not really questioning the uh not like i understand why you wouldn't attack with leader i'm questioning if you weren't gonna between okay Oh, Kiku and Katakuri, uh, if I was, if I knew I was going into that, not attacking with one of them, I would have rather attacked with leader. You know what I mean? I can see that. Not even giving him the uh, reason to attack it or the yeah. ability to attack it. But mm -hmm. it's like, I think, um, honestly, I think this is the pump fake. This is the IQ check. If you want to attack my uh, my uh, Kikinojo, then by all means, 
Oh, okay. I see. What you're so, so you want? So that's what. So you're you're on the game plan of it is baiting. You're trying right. to bait to get the heal. You're and gonna. And now okay. we play with seven life this game. Yeah, you're gonna get rid of that regardless. Mm -hmm. But I'm at least giving you the option to make a worse play. I just, I yeah. And and if they have the bottom deck capability, then it's gone anyway. All right, I'm, I'm vibing. But I mean, it's it's kind of weak. I mean, you have the Sanji here, and he's just gonna be able to get out of this. Okay, so that's good. He uh, he comboed out of it. This turn is officially not a game closer, but uh, I think he does need to. I mean, it's nice being able to see what he can do in terms of uh, aggression, in terms of what his opponent decides to uh, drop from hand. But he's still got a grip. We know he still has at least one Hound Blaze. I yeah. can't tell if he has any blockers in hand because he needs to I think they have some the, sort of turtle. Yeah, we've definitely, I, at this point, I feel like uh, like shuffling the hand a few times, I think I haven't seen the, the Borsalino again. So, oh, no, there it is. Uh, there we, we have Borsalino, we have Hound Blaze. I think we have Ahina. We have Rebecca? Yeah, this is this is a pretty good hand, and that that's about to go crazy. Yeah, there's there's a world where we might just be able to win this turn as the Sakazuki. Oh, uh, he'd have to dawn up so high on a on something small, and that would be risky. True. I mean, with Houndblaze get, kind of getting you over though. That's true too, but he needs to start ripping the. Uh, he would need to get that Sanji off sooner than later. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I mean, with I, I mean, Ice, we still have Ice Age in hand. We could Ice Age, get the Sanji off the board with the Hound Blaze, going with... There's a war. I think there's a route here. I mean, this could be for not to. We do have to play like that last life is. Uh, you're the one who should disappear or another Sanji. Oh, we're taking it? Oh, it is a trigger, though. It's a Sanji. Bruh. That's huge. Oh, so we that's got a Sanji. His, opponent, his opponent's at one life. Do you mm -hmm. know, like, like this, there, there is a thing. There's a thing here. Oh, man. So now, as the Sakazuki, you just have to, you have to attack life, right? You can't attack into the Kikunojo, because we just take those. The part here is rough. Being at one life is scary right now. All right, attack life, block with Sanji. Um, all right, we're replacing uh, Helmeppo with, I believe, a one drop. Is that Tashigi potentially? Oh, no, it's a Suru. Oh, right. man, the playing of the 2K. All right, bottom deck, the other Sanji. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. And is that game? Yeah, it was. Uh, you, he said, I'm not even should... giving you a chance to reject. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Dang! Oh, uh, and a Katakuri out. I knew there was an out there. I, oh man! So, so Katakuri <laughs> taking the fourth L of the night so far on screen. Ooh. Oh, that's rough, oh, man. man. Oh, oh man! Oh man! <laughs> oh man! Well, um, a moment of silence. For a big I wonder where we got category. the seven drop big mom. Did we get that out of life? Because at that point, I probably would have played the seven drop big mom. Um, um interesting. Look, hmm. wow, uh, <laughs> man, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is just. Uh, I think if if we're pulling from table one every yeah. time, is table one just like cursed for the so, green? Uh, like it's, it's the pastures for uh, it's the pastures for Catacur. Oh no! Take the table one is the sun, and every Katakuri has wax wings right now, and they just get too close, and then just like <laughs> that's so unfortunate. <laughs> Poor Katakuri. Uh, but that, I mean, that was a solid game, though. Like that mm. was, Sok like Katakuri, like they got all the triggers they really could have wanted. Like I don't, I don't really see where they could have wanted more triggers. Um, mm. they, out of six life, it was two Okikus, one Parasparo, a Sanji. Like so. <laughs> <laughs> the like the uh, the Sanji or not the Sanji the, the Katakuri right camera now. curse is very very strong. Mm -hmm. Looking at uh, looking at reject right like, huh? It's that's tough. I'm it's trying it. to think why the leader didn't swing there. Uh, so do you like was there like I I do agree that like maybe we should have like gotten rid of like a brand new somewhere at some point in time. But like, 
I, I just think you have nothing to gain from attacking an empty five. Um, even if like, cause like you, you have the potential to be able to keep your uh, rejects alive and you didn't want your opponent just like, oh, you attacked for five. Let me take it. I know I have this next turn anyway, mm -hmm. or something weird. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I can rationalize a world why we wouldn't attack with either one. Like if we're on, like we were, we were on leader and Kiku Nojo. And if my, in my head, I can justify you're at two life. I'm going to only swing with one of these. I would have just done the leader. But that being said, I get that uh, you you wanted the the bait, like you said. But uh, yeah, it's like at it's that point you should attack with the leader. I don't know. It doesn't change much, right? Yeah, because they didn't. They they won. They lost regardless of that attack being there or not. No, it's like granted though. I will say in a lot of cases, one thing that's going to be a little weird for me is like when you have a combo deck and you know that they're at their best when they can string together two or three card combos. Mm -hmm. Giving him that extra life could potentially just be another piece in hand for him to break your board with. Whereas taking it from him the following turn when you know you're going to have three or so swings is a point where maybe, you know, you're just not worried about a Hound Blaze flipping over. You know what I mean? You're not worried about a Great Eruption flipping over or something like that. But at the same time, like, I don't know. I, I mean, know. we that did was, see Sakazuki right play four hound blazes not oh, he was holding hound trip blazes. for most of the game and then just got banished another yeah, one the that last was... one got banished so we saw four hound blazes i could see a world where the soccer the katakuri player was just like we've seen three already no way you've seen four and like we saw four and that's that's kind of that's that's very strong too. not only so did we see four hound blazes we saw we saw the uh the the on uh Muru, um, amanu murukumo or whatever yeah um, Murukumo, yeah so we saw so many we saw so many uh, removal options from or events from uh Sakasuki, is that, is that kind right? of high that's roll thing amanu murukumo okay yeah yeah amanu, oh, we're good yeah we're good we're good it's uh, we're good. Uh, is there a world where people play raging tiger hidden dragon <laughs> what is <laughs> gravity blade ra uh, raging tiger or uh, that one that one sounded fun it's like Look. too expensive so so essentially yeah uh realistically i think i think uh i think what we were just told uh we're going on a, we're going on a break there's gonna be a break for the people there mm -hmm. um now what this is round four right yep so we have six rounds left yep um I, that should give a chance for the yamato players to kick it into high gear and get up on the stream that give a so chance exciting. for uh, katakuri players to uh, realign their trigger chakras Where's Moria? And, uh, where, we haven't seen Moria. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen Moria. Ah, oh, where's Moria, our Lord and Savior? <laughs> like, I think it's actually crazy that that was the first time that a Katakuri player actually had more triggers than not. And still, they matter. still lost. Yeah, it just didn't yeah. matter. It did not mean, matter. Yeah, like it's uh, it's it's strong. It's strong. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm looking at this stuff right now, people. <laughs> Woo. I mean, it's it's been a pretty cool thing. The fact that all four of these rounds well okay three out of the four rounds we've had different leaders outside of category yeah up here so i mean and they've all the taken Reiju. the w we've seen the raju yeah we've seen nami raju sakazuki twice but mm -hmm. and like it's just i mean we've seen pretty clean play from sakazuki that was a very clean game from that sakazuki play i mean i don't think there was a single wasted uh dawn turn or anything it was just it was as it needs to be through. for that yeah yeah, for the deck to function correctly, you know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm I'm just. This is interesting. We're only half. We're we're not even fully halfway to the tournament. We are close, but not fully halfway to the tournament. So we still actually have a fair amount of things to happen. Uh, this and is we're going into a top cut. You're, you're expecting? I'm expecting some funny business to happen in top cut. And by funny business, I mean like, you know, it's very it's it. Asking a deck to go undefeated is completely different from a deck going undefeated in Swiss into a top cut best of three mm -hmm. or whatever whatever ruling we may have for uh top cut um but yeah top cut I, top cut changes the game we've seen we've seen every tournament with a top cut has like come out with a result that like i don't think people were necessarily expecting like like i mentioned before that the the capstone event of uh op4 was a top cut event and we saw we we saw zoro take it and no one saw that coming if i could just give a little a little, a little suggestion. Hmm. I just need somebody to, uh, on stream. If we can just will it into existence, somebody and table one somehow 
with the Zoro Sanji starter leader, and they just need to secret <laughs> rare. They need a secret rare Sanji into secret rare, uh, into secret rare. Um, oh, Zoro, Zoro, and just oh, just and it, it, it needs to be versus yellow, so they can't interact with it. Because <laughs> uh, that's, be against... that's not gonna fly versus Sakura. They need to be against more. Kaido. Is what it needs to be against. Oh man. No. No, don't tell me that. Oh, the, the voice in our ear. Devastating like, news. We got some devastating news, and I want to know if we can relay that. that uh, oh, man, man. Uh, we, there, there is a Soro Sanji in the field, and they, they weren't able to be on stream. So, unfortunately. That is, that is uh, unfortunate. And they are up there. Man. Can we my hero, them? bro. <laughs> can yeah. we re-sleep them? There, <laughs> I will. There's a... I'll buy yeah. them right now. I'm excited for that. There, there, there's some things that deck can do. Being able to restand things and they're like getting win attract, uh, win a win a win attacking win attacking triggers, uh, twice potentially because not everything. You'd be surprised how many win attacking triggers aren't once per turn because correct. There isn't too much uh restanding ability. Correct. Uh, correct. I mean, for real, like it's just, it is what it is. Like we. We have some fun. We have, we're having some fun today. I think there's still yeah. a lot to be had. Uh, we might still see some surprises. It's still fairly early. A lot, like four rounds in, a lot of people can still be, like, we're, we're not nearly solidified yet. Mm -hmm. I still expect to see a lot of Katakuri. <laughs> um, sure. If we're just taking table one, how how loud would it be if all 10 rounds today had a Katakuri? Um, I'm sure people will be happy. Yep, people will love that. People will be excited every time. I wish there was a zoom function so I could just zoom on your face <laughs> while you just like lied to the entire audience. Mm -hmm. No, I believe in people and I believe in happiness. Oh, <laughs> oh. <Yes. laughs> like, oh my gosh. So anyway, what, we we're, to, uh, we're drifting. Correct? We're drifting. Uh, we're going to have an extended break, like we said. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to, we're going to fade it away. We're going to, we're going to have a little a longer break. Uh, just to get uh, some of the tournament organization done. I think the players even get a break this time. So that's exciting. I love when a tournament gives people breaks. So. Correct. correct. Uh, what time will we be coming back live? That's what I want to know. Uh, 45, also, 45 minutes. So we'll it's be... going to be a 45 minute break. Extended break. Reminder, this is for the players. And if anyone was in, the, in, a, in a tournament before, I'm sure you guys have. This is a godsend. I mean, I know, I know. As, as during Digimon Nationals, we had a, a break after round three, and it was wonderful. <laughs> like, it was the greatest thing I've ever experienced in a tournament. So it's it a little, a little lame for the viewage, but you guys gotta understand these are human beings trying to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I mean, so, I'm like, and and round four and round five is not bad at all because it's not late enough to kill momentum for you, but mm -hmm. it's still early enough for you to be like, okay, I'm on a hot streak, or maybe I've taken an L I didn't want to take, and we just reorient. Maybe get a quick snack, get up back there, and you know, do your thing. Yep. Do your thing. So we'll uh, fade it away. Uh, see you guys in in uh, f uh, around forty five minutes. So. Welcome back to the stream. We are here covering the uh, eSports Stadium Arlington One Piece Offline 
regionals hosted by play tcg uh we are going into round five after a little extended break for everybody to kind of get their wits about them have a little bit of a breather between rounds and uh we are off to a hot start seeing a lot of uh cool matches starting up uh yellow has consistently been at the top tables however has not been able to seal a match on stream meanwhile we've seen the likes of nami reiju and two sakazukis already go off against Katakuri at table one. I'm excited to see what we are going to see next, uh, whether it's going to be a deck with a little green in it. Maybe we will get lucky and see uh, some more. Actually, no, it's probably, it's probably it's, if it's not black, it's probably green, unless it's yellow. So we're really just kind of sitting there with those. I don't really expect to see a lot of red unless we got this like rogue star uh, white beard. But um, yeah, we're, we're going to the second half of the tournament four out of 10 rounds before top cut tomorrow. Uh, a very, very much so decisive lineup of uh, competition so that we can see who is the best who appeared today, who is best prepared. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm here with my co-host, Reese. Reese, you want to just talk a little bit? Reese, the squirrel. Yeah. The whole title. <laughs> no, <laughs> you say the whole thing. You say the whole thing. It's 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 one it's one it's one. It's one I name. apologize. I know it's okay. Oh man, I I I want the I want the meme to keep going at this point, bro. We are seeing. <laughs> I want category round five, six, seven, eight. First round of top cut, second round. I want it all the way, bro. We're gonna all see right. it every time, and I want I want to see ten L's. Like, can we collect all ten <laughs> L's for category tonight? Infinity L's. Oh, that'd be so funny. I'd be so happy. Um. Uh, yeah, but like in terms of like decks that I would like to see, yeah, I would love to see a Yamato hit it up. I would love to see a, an Arlong hit it up. I, I I believe in Arlong a little too much. That's probably my like rogue like sleep dream pick to to, to see. Um, even though Raju is probably my favorite deck of the format. And then yeah, still haven't seen Perona. Still haven't seen Gecko Moria. We've seen the character, but not not the leaders, uh, which it's is there. interesting. They they both have relevance. People are on those decks um we don't we and you don't really have access to that data uh per se but you know those those decks exist we we heard, caught wind of a zoro sanji out there which was very exciting to to hear about i i, I want that deck to do better than than what people it, it's been getting but I want to see it's probably it. just not there i want to see it yeah and yeah so let's go into let's let's do a little recap we still got uh round five getting people sat down getting people ready getting getting everything situated so let's let's go into what the rules are for the day all right so uh rules and format once again we got a number of game wins necessary one that is a best of one format match time 35 minutes extra time five minutes for extra turns etc just to let you guys know one more time, when time is called, the player who is playing is turn zero. Then you have the next player's turn being one, back to that first player two, and then the last turn of the game, three. By the end of that third turn or when five minutes has elapsed, that is when the time for the round is finally over. Time in overtime, in which case the game will stop and end of match procedures such as, you know, life, uh, board size, hand size, deck size will end up being brought into play to see who the winner is now when it comes to the prizing play mats are given out sleeves are given out event packs are given out and more and we're going to go over these one more time when it comes to the art firecracker scratch man a poo uh -huh. uh, kicking it up we got the gum gum jet pistol art alt art which doesn't this all but don't they have a collection of these alt arts now like the ace fire fist look has the similar framing oh, and everything right. and i think sabo is even getting one spoilers but you are so right we got the three brothers more spoilers three brothers of uh removal removal uh, events then we got the 2k sanji i believe this is the opo two one or three mm -hmm. oh, oh my bad my mistake opo three uh mm -hmm. sanji 2k um and then brand new looking looking brand new with the the hair <laughs> man i keep i keep saying it he's even got the tassels on his shoulders like he's just He's, I mean, he's, he's showing up. Gym. Hitting the he's gym. Hitting Look at the gym. chest apertures. Like, this is a whole new, this might not be the same guy. He looked like he just stepped out of Lamborghini in Miami. Like, he is, he is ready to, to file some paperwork. He ate the fix, fix fruit and just completely <laughs> changed his life around. <laughs> and, I mean, on top of these, we also get the event pack volume three. It's got some key promos, but we'll start with the alt arts. Cards that don't necessarily have alt arts, but they're here. 
Uh, Monet, uh, the the blocker, the Don Quixote blocker from OPO five last set, used in the the uh, Fortress Yamato build predominantly. Very good on block effect, just being a one K blocker for three. And then the starter or the starter deck, uh, Trafalgar Law, one drop blocker. Uh, blockers have always had a place in this game, especially the cheap ones. And there's a reason why we have so often these like weird removal uh, abilities that get rid of one drops, just because if these got too good, like everyone would be playing them. And it, uh, it kind of looks like those. I haven't mentioned it before, but it kind of looks like these two arts actually connect, which is kind of cool. Um, the Monet and Trafalgar Law with the <laughs> snow that. and everything. They do kind of, they do kind of have a flow to them. I like it. And to round it off, we got the ever important Rono Zoro, Land of Wano Rono Zoro that everyone's been uh, anticipating. This is a very highly anticipated card. We haven't seen it do a splash like we thought it might. Um, especially today, we haven't seen any categories run it. That might be because uh, the Land of Wano tag's hard to fit in, um, but it's got a very relevant trigger effect on top of the four drop. Uh, uh, 5k could be used in Arlong. This this there's this only, card kind of could be sick in Arlong. Look, there's only <laughs> one thing though. There's only one thing. This is clearly Chibi Nora Zoro. Oh, like he's starting to get there. He's starting to get there. The, oh, the dimensions, okay. the dimensions are there. Oh, true, true. And to cap it off, we got the uh, promo Yamato Land of Wano Purple. Um, yeah, this is a really good suite of cards. The the Yamato in particular is really good art. Yeah, and we we've been we've been on this we've been high on this one for a little bit. Like it's just a clean looking dawn. You've got the uh, you've got the drum notes. You got the drums of liberation. Little kanji there. It looks great. Uh, it's just it's it's just a really sleek looking one. I don't normally go out of my way to collect tournament dawn, but I'll probably just try to get one of these just to have it because, I mean, it's just so clean. Even the detail oh, so in uh, in gear fits like just a uh, silhouette over the moon is just pretty great. We just saw last game. I think it was the Katakuri player have a full suite of these, full ten already, and uh, like it was, it was. I mean, I had to put shades on. It was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> That's actually insane because they probably had to go hunting for like seven of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's enough events. Yeah, there's not yeah. enough events. I mean, yeah. I mean, with a thousand. I mean, now there's a. We've just given out a thousand of them, right? And then we're oh, gonna move enough. on to our top cut prizing. You get an extra three event pack volume threes. That's the one with the Zoro and the uh, Yamato promo. And we get this crisp gold border, rose border. I don't even, is it gilded? Are we calling these the gilded alt arts the, mm-hmm. of the uh, starter deck 10, Eustace Captain Kid, the ever the ever dominant uh, up to one of your leaders gets 1k power until the end of, until the start of your next turn, leaving you, depending on the leader you are, leaving you as a 6k leader for your entire turn. We all know how good that can be for uh, mm-hmm. decks. Oh, and then we're going to, cut to top 16 uh uh we to, we're gonna keep noting it uh it, it, if you get top 16 you get uh you're guaranteed your invite there is a little blurb about if there the event has more than 800 players invites will go out to the top 32 so i oh. assume that's gonna happen since we are definitely at oh 10. my gosh yeah you're <laughs> right we're definitely at a a thousand uh 200 or 1024 players at this event we're fully capped out event we use the Weightless people made sure to keep this filled. But talking about the beautiful card, go ahead. All right, the next one, look. Or this one. Yeah, we can go to the next one. So anyway, you have this Luffy <laughs> and this Shanks. Verbal Q strong. Um, these are just really, really, really good cards all around. I do like it how the rotation seems to focus on a certain deck. Like we had uh, we had a run that was like all the Marine cards. Now we have a run mm-hmm. that's the three captains. I think it's actually just pretty cool to kind of get these uh, thematic bursts of just cards for placement. And it really makes each tournament season seem very, very unique. If your favorite characters all come from one kind of theme, you're likely to like certain tournament seasons more than others. You have some incentives to just go in there and collect. It's, it's just really cool. It always gives you reasons to compete when you have cards that have great art like this, the increased rarity, all this foiling, the additional art or the, uh, the alternative art. And then the serial cards are awesome. Yeah. They're awesome. Just knowing that there's only a certain amount of these serial cards made on the planet and that you've gotten one of them because of your hard work in a day of just like playing your heart out is awesome. Yeah, like this, so is, this is what we do it for. It's so good. And uh, uh, after this, we got we got some special prizing for our second place player. We The, the Don Quixote uh father and son duo i, I don't know i'm gonna keep coming up with names for this but it's the trafalgar law and the rosa nante don quixote pirates uh 
art like i mean we if you follow the manga at all you know this is a a, a devastating duo brings sadness to everybody hope and joy and it's just a it's just a beautiful piece of work showcasing art from opo4 right on the right on the mat and uh the great artwork and and you mentioned before that the, the rosa nante almost looks almost looks as evil as his brother in this one he's got the tuli he's got he's got the sunshades he's got the smile and he's got the he's got the black flamingo boa <laughs> yeah um and then to cap it off the beautiful art piece of artwork uh for first place gets the uh gets the sheer hoshi vv uh rebecca altar uh winner mat and it's got big bright letters winner right at the bottom probably most people who win these will probably frame them but if you want to be that guy that plays with this you're gonna let everybody know that you won one of these <laughs> 1224 event you better laminate that. <laughs> like, I don't know. Spray it with some uh, some uh, some hydrophobic coating. <laughs> like... Oh no. Oh man. But yeah, today today will be ten rounds. Uh, assuming that the down pairs don't like lose us around, I probably it's it's a planned ten rounds. But there is always a possibility that the uh, the down pairs and uh, bubble us out into a nine round tournament. So mm. that's that's always possible. Um, but yeah. Pricing is always so good in, in one piece. And it's one of the things that's making these tournaments so can spots in a tournament. So contested. Yeah. That's, that's why they sell out in seconds. <laughs> like oh, these seconds. Your people don't need a chance. It's treasure. It's treasure. We may not have found the one piece, but people know where the treasure is. <laughs> yeah. like... Oh, what is there to, what is there to say? Uh, we still, we're still trying to get everyone seated for uh, round five. I imagine. I can't, um, I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything about, about what matchups we're here. Oh no! All right, maybe, maybe, maybe soon. Maybe the the elephant will walk in and talk to you real quick. <laughs> um, oh. oh man! So we all right. So kind of. So what what is Kyrie's career going to play against next round? Um, um, this late in the game, I think that Katakuri will get paired up against Moria. You don't I think, think it's going to be a mirror, or our or our voice is going to be do- trying their hardest to dodge the mirror. Um, you know, the mirror is possible. I'm not the mirror is possible, but would it spark joy? I don't think it should. I don't think it would spark joy. All right, so it's probably Mori. I, I think, you know I think I'm agreeing with you. You know what? Hmm. If we found some really, some really nice rogue, it'd be crazy if we found the red purple law. Red purple law is like probably the, the, the one deck everyone keeps wanting to like that, that word to spring up in people's <laughs> I don't, conversation. I don't think it's that like full power yet, but it's like, no. it's. it's it got good cards. I mean, I believe in this set, as of this set, it could run essentially what is six Gordon or uh, sorry, eight Gordons around there. Yeah, it does have right. eight Gordons. It will have eight Gordons, or does it already? Is it will? Already? I thought it was. I uh, think it has it. It has it has the eight Gordons already because it has the the other guy. Um, but yeah. I think next set they're waiting for there's there's a there's a couple cards they're waiting for. I can't remember. It's in the EBO one collection. I, I can't mm. imagine there is like the Rush Killer Kid. I, I'm not sure if they're there. I imagine they're running that because it is a four drop um and then there's a couple other cards that that they're that they're trying to try, trying to wait for i know they want to like in set seven there's a sanji that is very mm-hmm. exciting for them so that that deck is just uh, gonna, uh oh is it is it a vince is a who a who this one this who? Over here. He's hiding. He's who's hiding. that he's, he's got his glasses on he's a, he's, he's, he's the he's the third best straw hat pirate Lonji. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, oh, and the bond clay. I, I I did forget about how good the the bond clay is. That 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 card is kind of funny. <laughs> and the alt art's even funnier. It took me so long to re- understand what the the alt art even was for that that bond clay it was. Oh um, yeah. Oh okay. The voices are talking to us, man. Okay, okay. Oh wow. Wait, wait, wait. Did did, did Reese the Squirrel awaken the ability to hear the voice of all things? Yeah, just for just one time. We talk about Sanji, and I can hear it. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> we dodged it. No fifth right, Katakuri, calls. everybody. We got. I I didn't even listen to the other Yamato, one. We got a Yamato on screen. Sakazuki. <laughs> All right, so the third Sakazuki. Okay, so now <laughs> we got a different conversation happening, but the tides shift. Uh, the tides have shifted, but Look. getting to see a Yamato, I'll be very excited to see what what brand of Yamato this will be because there's so many different ways to play this deck. Um, I know it, it does get a bad rap for being a a uh, just shove ten dawn and swing uh, mm. type of deck, but there's there's a lot of there's a lot of nuance to play this deck and to build it. There's there's a lot of build 
deck buildingness to Yamato, and it's great. Yeah, I mean, and this is going to be like very interesting because depending on the build, Sakazu can have a better or worse time. Like Fortress is nice. But Fortress, I don't think, is going to match up against Sakazuki the way that uh, more of an aggressive build will. Like, the aggressive build in the Japanese meta, the uh, the Yoshinami meta, is essentially what made it hard for Sakazuki to exist and gave way to Gekko Moria coming up because of that extra life and uh, generally just more counter power in general yeah. for the deck. So realistically, this is going to be interesting to see because this is kind of Sakazuki's natural enemy in the format especially depending on the build. So I'm very, very excited to see how this goes. Um, looking down, we've got Altart, Yamato, and uh, it looks like an Altart Sakazuki. So both people are here. Blinging it out. I'm still trying to uh, trying to pick up my uh, Altart Yamato leader. Like This is probably the most expensive leader we've seen in a while, other than some like non, non-current uh, leaders, like uh, Law is still, Red Green Law is still kind of up there in price. I know, I know. There's a there's a couple leaders that have, that have spiked in popularity with price, but we do have William S on the left as Yamato, Dexter R on the right as our Sakazuki player. Be interesting to see who goes first, and I wonder. I imagine we're still shuffling up to 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 resolve Mulligan. So we'll see how it all goes. Oh, we're gonna roll. Oh, he's got green yellow dice. This guy knows what's up. The assignment understood. All right. Rolls oh, an eleven. All right. Uh, Yamato gets to choose. All right, so if you're if you're Yamato, how much, I don't know how much Yamato you've played, but uh, are you going first or second after winning the die roll? I think so you go like, first, right? You just want to keep swinging. You do want to keep swinging, but keeping uh, keeping Sakazuki off its natural curve is also mm -hmm, okay. going to alleviate some pressure. Like it's kind of weird because Sakazuki does specifically have a worse time on odds. Everything yeah. they want to do. Their four drops, uh, even like two drop running. I mean, Tashigi helps out a little bit, but their four drops going into like things like Moria, yeah, it's it's just not as good. Now, granted, if they're on the odds, they get the opportunity to uh, Moria with Ice Age the uh, the first time they can use Moria, which is cool and all, but you also really mess up their uh, their second turn a little bit, and I think that is worth noting. I like throwing Sakazuki off its uh, its normal curve if I can help it. That's fair. I think a lot of their bit like their their blockers that are going to get in your way, um, unless like they could see Sabu on curve, but I don't think you want to be playing Sabu on curve. He, he always feels like a, a later game blocker to be playing. Mm -hmm. um, so playing Borsalino on five doesn't feel great. Uh, so I I kind of I kind of pick up what you're putting down, um, and, and they're not playing lower end blockers. So giving them the first attack or potentially something that, that my my concern is like giving them the first attack, um, kind of. Uh, makes it hard for like let's say if your first life was a uh, no kiku mm -hmm. uh, it does make it a little little difficult but it just makes it a little sad because you do depending on how aggressive you are you could be running uh i know nekomumushi is rising in popularity and on um, as well as uh i've seen a lot of uh not nekomumushi let's see what's his the dog's name uh i can't remember his name right now but he, he's the he's the He's the dog that goes along with Nekomomushi. I can't remember. Uh, Inarashi. In, 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 Inu, which is Japanese for dog. That guy. Inarashi. Uh, look, they. So he just he discarded. Uh, I think the uh, Amu. Yep. And um, he did. He did tell the Sakazuki player to go first to try to throw him off his curve. Um, but trust, he gets the first attack. Just trust. It's going to be a random road cracker. All right. <laughs> Going to play the Hiori to mm -hmm. play exactly what we want at the top of life. Interesting. And it looked like we put a Nekomomushi up there. Okay. Mm, man, this is this is going to be tasty. Like, and you have to swing into this. Like, you're like, you're like you're, what are you going to do? Not press them? Mm -hmm. Oh, gonna, gonna okay. Going to lose another Amino to draw. I wonder if we have... I didn't quite catch the hand from Yamato. I wonder if we're going to be able to see uh, if they already have the Momonosuke ready. Going to attack into life. And you have to attack now. And you have to counter out of this. Because it, you, if it, it, it is truly the Nekomomushi, you don't want to lose that value. Correct. I'm trying to get a... I'm trying to peep the hand, too. All right. So we'll see. We're still resolving this 5k attack. I mean, surely you have to just lose the card and it doesn't look like it was nekomamushi um oh it was cracker that we put up there okay <laughs> what did then... i say <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Double double attack coming in. <laughs> oh yeah, he had to he had to clear that immediately. He said right. no service. Oh my god. Oh, third one? Three ominos? Oh, that is oh that's gross. That's so gross. Oh my god. <laughs> look, he look, I'm saying like I need to work on my observation hockey because I called the cracker, but um I did not I did not foresee the immediate third ominos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I did not. I did not anticipate a third Amino after all that too. That's wild, um, but that did take two cards. Um, we are going to get the double attack in. So now all our Okikus mm. and and Nekomamushi is potentially alive. We'll be able to do something. Um, that just that. Oh, I know. Losing the card off the cracker. This is just uh, that hurts. Pitching a. I mean, uh, hmm? it, it so it hurts, but he did have to get rid of a 2k and yes. then have to rip that like that that was not a that was not a flawless mise he did have to get rid of a little bit yes. and i am kind of just in this position where i'm like huh the momentum is very interesting but now we're starting to put up these blockers oh so we're gonna play rebecca pick up the luchi we just uh discarded but it looks like we're opting not to play anything um it looked like we chose the pest turn we we announced it looked like we announced it no it still feels like we're skipping the effect. I'm not sure if we've resolved. Uh, I'm kind of wondering, did he mulligan? Because that's a crazy hand to keep. Unless he just. Uh, was I don't think he. I think the out. only one who mulliganed was the Yamato. So uh, yeah, the I, uh, uh, Sakazuki chose to keep this hand. And the question is here: like this could be this could be a potentially short game if we can. Uh oh! Immediately. Okay, rest. <laughs> okay, into it. Oh my gosh! Get rid of two cards. Oh, that was that was quick. All right, he's gonna, he's gonna bleed that hand so quickly. <laughs> we need I we agree. need a second blocker, but I do believe he has it. If I'm not mistaken, I thought I saw a Sabo. Uh, I didn't quite catch. All right, we're gonna lose the pitch to the Lucci again. I think he has the Sabo. I think it might be yeah. the Alter one. You might, and on this, this uh, Dexter also having the 10, uh, 10 Luffy, uh, Fear Fifth Luffy's is kind of kind of cool. Woof, that's clean. And then, I mean, look at the theme though. You can tell, you can tell William is a Yamato fan because he's he's got the Yamato Don, which were quite the hot item. At, oh my uh, god, aren't they? They're they're the most expensive. Don has been in a while outside of the the Shrine, uh, right? Yeah, non non uh, tournament exclusive Don. Yeah, mm-hmm. and has the Don sleeves for uh, as well. So big Yamato fan here, and I don't I don't blame him. Man of culture, man of culture. Right. So you're Sakazuki. You're sitting at two life. You're sitting at two life because you just finally took one. Um. Oh my and... gosh! I don't think he has much com uh, much uh, counter in hand. I don't think he has much. I see a Hina Play potential. I see like... a Gecko. There, I think I see another Suru. I think mm-hmm. he's got like three K. Minimum three K. It might be less. Also, there's a world where this Yamato could win next turn. They would need to get through uh, two blockers, I believe, because I I can't see him not playing the Sabo, and he's gonna have to get rid of some dead cards. If that is a Sabo, he has to get rid of some dead. All right. Oh my for gosh. Eight, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be my I managed one minus one to the Ezo. Not nothing crazy said there. All right. What are you gonna do? Do you? Oh, we're gonna take it. Go down to one life. That's dangerous. Yeah, no trigger. So no triggers at all. Oh, no, we did. Technically, eh, I hesitate to we'll say we we had a trigger because we put that trigger ourselves there. Um, but. The Lucci will come down. So only Oof. one blocker. One blocker is nasty work here. Mm-hmm. So what do we do? We got. Oh, I'm so scared. Game. What do we do as Yamato? We're so. F- we only have one life. Can't you can't you can't hoardy here? No way. Did Sakazuki single-handedly? turn around the race i mean the amino just did so much right like you lost a card in hand to play the cracker just for it to just be gone oh the cracker on the board probably would have sealed something right here like that just that might have actually just ended the game right there that was a Mm -hmm. very strong opening play 
Um, and of course, he probably felt it was very safe after seeing two of the uh, two go to the trash, right? And then it's still. Ugh. But it's like that's weird because you're not. Well, it's not weird, but you're not using that over Hombly. So you have to know that if that's being seen, it's mm -hmm. very likely that, like, that is. Uh... Oh, All right, Hiori. We're gonna put exactly what we want to the top of the life. Um, uh, do we have the Momonosuke to go crazy? Yes. Yeah, nice. All right, so we're back to two life. That's huge. Nice little um, recovery. Now Momonosuke will be on the board with a uh, is a blocker and is it a is a five drop blocker? So it's not necessarily the easiest thing to get to get through. We need a couple cards to to unless we draw into Ice Age here. We need a couple cards to actually be able to either Luchi it or Helmblaze. Correct. the The question I have. Is whether or not he has the uh, the the destruction outlet. Yeah, I think you might be right. I mean, they have Gecko, right? He so, definitely has Hina. But, and Hina. Oh, and he has Gecko. Hina and Ge oh, but no, the trash isn't set up. I think it's just the um, it it's just uh, two Virgos. Virgos. And... I think it's a Suru. It might be uh, a Suru. It's hard to tell. It's a little. Yeah, hard I think so because he he had to combo a two K for that. Mm -hmm. So um. Swinging here with that one opting, like still leaving the gecko, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And this we're is, on this nine is, dawn. Drop a two K for this one. I can't see him letting this one go through because this is the uh, attack he could. Oh, I was no, wrong. I was like, through. that's the. Uh, I was like, that's for me. That's the attack that you know you're going to take. You're, you're expecting a gecko turn, mm -hmm. but like if you take this damage and then he just decides to pivot and hit you with like a Rob Lucci and then just play like two more bodies, I feel like that could be like a perilous turn for you. I agree. So, I kind of am on board with blocking the attack you know you can block because you're not guaranteed to have a block. Later. And we are going to Gecko with the rest of our Dawn. Mm -hmm. uh, Luchi won't do anything. Oh, with the Suru. I always forget that you could Suru Luchi. That, 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 to me, that's like, for some reason, just the most wildest plays. But yeah, should have blocked, unfortunately. All right. We got still only one blocker. We could hoard does Hordy maybe win us the game? Or does Sakaz or does Sakazuki have too many cards in hand? We got four cards in hand for Sakazuki. Four cards of Sakazuki. I mean at one life. Uh yeah, and there's right. not enough. Um no. That doesn't right. Your opponent has to be a one life, right? Cur no, you have is to it, be or is it oh you have to be at one. Okay. I, 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 there's so many different cards that it's like your life, my life, Amaru, sorry. Uh, I, I I just always get tripped up on it. Yeah, and right here, he's already used the Suru. I actually don't think he has the... Uh... I don't think he has the counter power, right? Like, this is this is going through. The question is, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I wonder. I wonder what he's got here. Oh, he has it. Oh, oh, he does? That's... Oh, man. Left with one card. Oh, man, no. Probably should have Probably should have just done the one more Dawn. That's well, I mean, I suppose if you really think about it, though, like the way the way I see this, if uh, whatever play mm -hmm. he has next, right, like if he had like a rusher for any reason, I'm not sure if I saw the rest of his hand, but like my main thing here is with um, – Swinging right there. If you're if you're gonna intend to try to push for game, mm -hmm. your second swing needs to come in higher than your first swing because you're giving them two more cards. Right. So that's like, true. Yeah, it's like that would be a little weird on the sequence to swing with a little lower and or swing with something high and then swing with something low. But this is the what I don't know what happens this turn. All right. So we as the Yamato player know what our life is. Mm hmm So now we are just trying to suss out. Oh, we counter out. Okay. Very shiny, very shiny cards, Jesus. Yeah. And now it's just numbers. Three cards in hand, unless unless the uh oh, do we count out of this two? Seven? Nope. We know it's oh it, yeah. It's a... Uh, oof. We we knew that was there, and it's one of the best cards to be putting there with uh <laughs> with Yori, right? So <laughs> uh kind of good. Kind of good. Yeah, but we still have nine dawn to play with this turn. As the Sakazuki, but we to be fair, Sakazuki's only got two cards in hand. Um, you have to, you have to hope that this last life is in a trigger, and 
you only have realistically two attacks. With two attacks, you could probably do it. I mean, he would need a he would need another way to. He would need to be able to get rid of a. What's it called? Right. A Rebecca. But that's saying his opponent doesn't have anything to play after because that could be devastating. Another blocker right now would probably still game. All right, and then shove everything under uh, Suru, right? Or Rebecca? Tag for nine k. Oof. It's that simple, I think. Right? Am I? Yeah, ten. It's not. It's nine on nine on Suru or nine on Rebecca. No, nah, Punk Gibson for game trust. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, look, yo, the thinking is intense here. No, it, it, this matters. Uh, I mean, I guess. I mean, we're leaving four dawn up. I just can't. Oh man, this might be. Oh no, it it really is just. I think it really is just put nine on on Suru and send it right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, the way this is working right now, it's like that's good. whatever yeah. options. Yeah. Good game. I was like, whatever options your opponent has, they either oh. have it or they don't. Like, even mm -hmm. if they, even if there's something like a Punk Gibson on board, um, is that a Hody? Yeah, they had Hody. Uh, they had double is... Hody in hand, and then all the counters. And I think the yeah. the last life they just healed was the Momo no scare. Yeah, so I was about to say that uh, the rough part about that is no matter what amount of thinking you have, your opponent has that 9K or they don't. They have the ability to get out of 9K or they don't. So, like, you just kind of just have to, like, if they have a Punk Gibson somehow and then a 1K or a Punk Gibson and a 2K, there's nothing you can do about that. They're just going to tie down your whole board. So you kind of just have to just go for it at that point. But yeah, that was that. Uh, that was a lot. Yeah, that that I think it just it, it just kind of fell apart with the Amaru. You committed so much so much stuff to to uh, to play that cracker, and then just for it to all just instantly go south for you, just you just couldn't you just didn't recover for after that. It, it felt mm -hmm. like we didn't have any big we didn't have any big boss monsters come down. We didn't have anything, uh, but that we clearly saw that it was more the more aggressive Wano type uh, Yamato, which was interesting. I still, uh. I just feel like me, like I don't know. I feel like people are. I would. I love playing nine drop Yamato in Yamato. Have you have you tried it? Um, right now I haven't really been playing like too much Yamato. Mm -hmm. Um, it's no. I mean I haven't, but like that's like a good in game. Like for yellow, that's just a good in game in general. You're going to get that low at some point. Uh, getting back into the game, potentially destroying something small, and having a beater like that is just very very good. A character that can uh, mm -hmm. attack like that. Now like. My kind of thing there is, um, I mean, clearly his matches were quick. His games yeah. were all quick because that was, but like, it is crazy. The momentum of that cracker being uh, being blown out was indeed just huge. Because if that cracker was still there, I uh, got at least one been, attack off with it. Like you're just, uh, yeah, man. I would have been just... potentially all of his life gone in <sighs> in one turn. Just, that was just oof. But that's what that one of the, that's kind of like what i'm getting at with like maybe yamato likes to go first because then you can you can ask for you can try to get the early attack with your leader get your opponent down to three in the or two in that situation and then you'll be able to you're you can do the same play and then potentially he uh put put a instead of a cracker you can put a, a, a kikunojo or a um Nekomushi or Inu, Inu Arashi, and then you're there at three, so all your effects trigger, and you don't have to lose a card on top of that because the cracker the tr trigger it, you have to uh, discard a card as well. So uh, that that Amaru just devastated the board at that point. It was so yeah, that, so much value. Was Amano, yeah, that Amano was uh, it was pretty it was pretty vicious. I mean, hey, you have the deck built for the same reasons mm -hmm. that you have. Like that is it's good. It's good. Like he had the out for it um he was able to remove something crucial that game that was probably just the turn of momentum in that game and he turned the beat down back yeah. onto the yum uh the yamato player but either way these guys are all at top tables so i'm sure yeah. that yamato will bounce back uh, i would see a deck like that with the hyper aggression is likely feeding off of sakazuki matchups any four life leader it can come into and i think there's going to be like there's going to be a lot more of those matchups for that so i wouldn't be surprised if that yamato leader took it to the dome and we saw them later. Um, we saw that player later just in the tournament. But yeah, Sakazuki showing its skills. Aggro, control, yeah. like it has the ability to do so much. 
the color combination, the leader adding consistency, and the uh, plethora of good blue events paired with good uh, black characters is just, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a so lot. So much. And the, the black cost reduction as well. Like, that, I don't know. We, we'll, we'll keep going back on it. I think the reason, like, the black black is uh, dominating the, the, the format in terms of utility is just, it's the only color that can make other colors better. Um, mm. Right, like a blue, a blue and a green don't necessarily make each other better. Like black, black really is the only color that like actually amplifies everything that all the other colors can do, other than red. But red has its own way to do it. So it's whatever do you mean? Green is the almighty elevator for debt quality. <laughs> true, true, true. Surely, true. surely it has the most broken carpool of all time. All right. So. Uh, All right. So there's uh, we're just getting word. Sorry, that's that's what we were pausing. We got some word that there's some ish, uh, some uh, BCP uh, funny business going on. We're trying to sort it out. Uh, yeah, similar. Yeah, just apps uh, apps and technology being the bane of the world. Uh, yeah, I mean it is. Sometimes sometimes things mess up. Sometimes things mess up. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Uh, don't really have a time frame. Okay. Okay. I was like, we don't really have a time frame for that one, but we're going to see if we can sort that out real quick and maybe come back with some updates uh, as we get new information. So uh, yeah, if we could uh, go to a break, we'll be back as soon as we can. And anytime we can get an update, we will let you guys know. But thank you guys for being here. Uh, we're still cruising above 300, almost peaked at 400 people in this stream. We appreciate the support and uh, we're, we're only halfway through the tournament. Not even fully Five halfway. We're halfway rounds. through day one. So stay tuned, guys. All righty then, welcome back to round six of the eSports Stadium One Piece Offline Arlington. A little switch that around. <laughs> Regional. And we are now about to see see something that you is going to shock you. It's going to surprise you. Uh, it's you guys missed not. it. I know you guys missed <laughs> it. <laughs> we are so back with the Akata Curry. <laughs> feature match we took it a was, break we had an exhibition match Katakuri said nah we gotta come back he said nah i'd win this time <laughs> and he's back so can we, we go can we go for the fifth l all right can we at least complete a whole hand of l's excellent all right all right turn oh but we gotta turn one play we got we got pudding on board searching five Ah, uh, so again, I feel like Reiju has a solid matchup against uh, Katakuri. Oh, we're gonna get a seven drop mom, so that means seven drop mom on curve is gonna be kind of gross. Although I think Reiju is okay with just saying, "Hey, you take the life." Um, Reiju can oftentimes get a lot of attacks out a lot really quickly, um, but we'll just have to come down to what we see. Uh, getting this, getting uh, the stage out. Oh wait! Oh, we we did use the event, found this, pulled out the stage slightly early, and now are debating on how to either put the last four back or if we want to just yoink something else real quick. But I think it's just gonna be take stage, play stage. Me too. And and also something that's like just really really good here is um, mm -hmm. this is gonna be like kind of like the old law dilemma for yellow. Yes, yellow has gotten better and better at interacting with boards. But for the most part, when you have a strategy that builds off of each other, goes wide, and then overwhelms, mm -hmm. it tends to do a lot better versus yellow than other colors because yellow just doesn't have as many ways to disrupt it. Um, mm -hmm. Some of their disruptions are very costly, like like reject. Uh, you have things like uh, when you're low on life, Amaru can tap things down like blockers, but that's not really going to do anything. Thunderbolt's going to fall under the format completely. Katakuri yeah. is an 8-drop. You just don't have a lot of interaction with your opponent's board. And so Reiju, as long as Reiju can keep uh, her life healthy, 
She mm-hmm. should be really good to go in these situations. Rage, you love like my experience with as Rage is like I love it when my opponent tries to start attacking my characters. Like that is everything I want to happen. Um, we are going to counter out it, uh, out of the uh, out of the leader attack. Play uh, Parasparrow on curve. I imagine Rage is going to follow up with either um, if we have a uh, little Ichiji, we're probably going to play Ichiji just to get some tempo and more attacks in. But I imagine we do have the the little Reju for as a backup plan. So we'll see how this top three goes. I uh, can't really peep the hands. It's a little dark. Oh, we whip. Oh no, we take the. We definitely take the the big Reju one more time. Yeah, there's some solar flaring going on the cards, but yeah, it's the sun gods, you know, <laughs> showing up. Not not in the dawn this time, so we got to get them differently. German six six going off. He's another stage. Probably not going to pick up the stage. I don't feel like that's the play. My only, my only ick about the, about the, uh, what I want to say, the my only ick about how the the sequencing is going, is uh, we use the stage first when you kind of want to use stage last just to see what you draw off of your Raju effect, and now we're going to go up six. That's the difference between potentially searching a card, maybe drawing it right after versus drawing mm-hmm. a card and then searching what you don't have already. What exactly. You uh, and Katakuri is going to take it. Go to four life. That's the first life Katakuri. And no trigger. Very important to make no out of. We are going to trigger Reju. Reju is going to draw two first off of the character for sequencing and then one off the leader. Reloading. Yeah, because if the character Reju has, does have the... The restriction, if you already have five cards, you can't... Uh, if you have more than five cards, you can't draw. So uh, you need a, you need to proc the the big rage you first before you use leader ability. Activate at the same time, choose the order, make sure you, have, you get the character rage you just like Risu said. And yeah, uh, bada bing, bada boom. Very much so blessing. <laughs> yeah. So Katakuri, right? Sitting on five dawn. Uh, still not quite enough to, to get the seven drop. I'm going to go six. Reiju with a huge hand is probably just going to counter out. Yeah, easy counter out. 2k. Playing the... It, it is not... So every all the Reijus I've seen are, are, are transitioning their 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 2ks to uh, playing the... I forgot the name. The Navy character that says on board, uh, if during your if your opponent play uh, uses an event card, they have to discard a, a card. And that devastates Nami, of mm-hmm. course. But is Nami that prevalent that we need this card on board like that? Or in, in relevant? Or is it also for the law matchup just to make law a little worse? Well, I was about to say, like, I don't know if the Nami matchup is that prevalent. However, if somebody was afraid of the Nami matchup, I don't think Reiju uh, often makes good attacks into Nami. Mm, okay. So, like, a card that, like, helps bottom up their hand will probably be very, very good. But, like... I don't know. Like you said, I don't know if that matchup is that prevalent. We just got rid of a lot of one case for that attack. I think we got rid of little green, little little Reiju, and then one more card, which is a lot. There's a lot of one cases we just gave up there, so our hand's back to being small. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering about it, because realistically, that's... Uh, okay. I was like, realistically, that's just kind of in a position where... Nice. Yeah, you... uh. <clears throat> So many cards out of that hand. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, keeping... I don't play Raju as much as you. So it's mm-hmm. like keeping your hands small so that you can always go off of your uh, your good procs. Like potentially you could for a small Raju, though, which is why I'm questioning uh... it. Uh, oh, going and attacking with leader, giving our opponent the third card. So we're... we're uh, it's always so scary because if they if they flip a 10, mom, or a 10 drop big mom off of the Parasparo, it just feels so awful. Not really much you can do to it. Mm-hmm. Rage, you can bounce it with a uh, Niji, but I mean, <laughs> probably saving e- Niji's for I don't know, blockers. maybe a Nokiku or maybe a blocker. Okay, I'm on to. All right, that's, two K. K. that's not that's not the word. That's the most not the mo- most devastating news. I'm gonna use the stage effect, pitching a big Ichiji. And then top three, probably just gonna pick up that small ETG. Yeah, small, small glare. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the small glary card. 
And then going going with six. Uh, life. And a 2K, seven at life. Attacking at higher numbers. It's going to be nine, Hattori. So replacing the Paro Sparrow that we just got. But it does get another card out of hand. And sometimes Raju just, that's all Raju really cares about is, uh, oh, and giving up a reject. Uh, that's pretty strong. That's a, that you want to see that as Raju for sure. So managing to keep extremely healthy throughout this entire game. Yep, yeah, still at four life. Um, five cards in hand, five life. We're gonna we are a little low on dawn. I think we are at we're at four dawn, so we're gonna go into six dawn, so judge is still off the table. All right, Katakuri, what do you got? It's a seven dawn turn, so we could big mom on curve, which is pretty good. We might even, with how healthy we've kept our life, we might even just take the uh, trash the life. Hmm. Right, yeah. Looks like <clears throat> that might just be the game plan is to is this to play up uh, uh, the seven draw mom right here on curve. Yeah, I'm five. saying. Uh, oh, sorry. No, I'm just attacking five. What are you gonna say? Oh no, no. I'm just uh, I'm just looking at this. Game state. At this point, with Reiji's hand being so low, a single neutral attack is just a single card out. That being said, I'm kind of wondering. Hmm. I'm trying to see if there's like a... I mean, he's he's so far off from Judge Dawn. I'm just kind of looking at... He is burning that hand to keep at four life. Yeah, and just... that. I feel like that uh, discarding the little Reiji... Like, I would understand a lot of these plays. Or, or like, everything would be so much better for, for the Raju player if they didn't discard the the Raju, the little Raju earlier. Mm -hmm. Right? Every, everything would be better if it was just was one different card. And then yeah, seven mom and we do choose to trash that life. Um, but that now we 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 have three good attacks going into this turn here. Um, this is a six dawn draws another Ichiji and we have the backup Ichiji in the trash so yeah it's just going to come down to how we want to sequence this. All right, four Dawn. We're just going to go straight for it. Keeping off, off of... You got a minus 2k, the Hatoria. That makes sense to me. Yeah, pressure Draw is a little mm -hmm. Hope we're, we're just hoping we see a a, a second... Or a, our third little Reiju at this point. Because if we don't see yeah. it, we're just... Our hand size is just going to be nothing. Definitely could use that uh, plus one. All right, we're on five dawn, so it's just judge. Just not is not happening this game. Yeah. <clears throat> now the question becomes: Do we just attack live? Our opponent's sitting on four cards in hand. We have two seven Ks and a five K that easily just trade in, or do we try to do we try to deal with the Parasparo and limit our opponent's attacks? I mean, I think the. Scary thing is there. I mean, if you if you attack the Paris Sparrow, you're not setting off Big Mom into next turn. I think it's still two turns away. Um, however, you don't want him. He's already got Big Mom and his leader. You're mm -hmm. probably taking assured damage next turn. So I do believe that let, getting the Paris Sparrow off the field is going to at least make sure that you don't take too much mm -hmm. damage. Because like, let's let's be real with that hand size. Both Big Mom and Katakuri are probably getting through unless he adds something else to the board. So you, you, you probably just have to get rid of the third swing here. Right. That's fair. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we're going to get uh, Yonji, little Yonji out. We'll be able to... Uh, then now the question becomes, will we play it this turn to, to uh, get a blocker out? So we'll see how that goes. Attack five and really debating that the, the conversation we just talked about. Do we attack five into the Paris Sparrow or do we attack into leader? Five into Paro. Yeah, like the, the worst case scenario for me in this moment is swinging into leader and having him get another Satori, another Paris Sparrow, another like a mm -hmm. cracker. Like you just, it goes from not looking too good to worse. So I think you do have to just kind of get rid of this. And if she drops a card to protect Paris Sparrow, I'm swinging at Paris Sparrow again. Yeah. Like you, you defended it once. Will you defend it again? Yeah. 
And no, and, not when it's a seven. Not not, not when you not when you're attacking up like that. Yeah, and well, I mean, for me, I'm not even sure if the first time would have been worth it because it's like you only you only stand to gain if you lose it off the the five k, and then they they are they're only left with seven k Ichijis going into life. Is that what card is this? Category. So that's so shiny. Yeah, the glare the glare right now is a little bit, but yeah, that's just that's just a little rough because. Yeah, if you if you just let the Parasparo get KO'd, mm-hmm. you're just gonna get insurance for it. But the way that happened, yeah, uh, Parasparo just really broke even. You didn't even really go up one from the card. All right, so now we have a blocker to protect uh, our Yonji or Ichijis, um, which is good. I'm still trying to dig for another little Raju. I I just so many of these turns would be so different. We just had one more little Raju. We'd have so many cards in hand, fueling everything at that point. Mm-hmm. And we're still two turns away. We're we're realistically like three turns away from a judge. So, like I said, I don't think judges have pinning. This I don't think there's all. three turns left. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, no, there's three life. There's three life, and he's got really two valid attacks on board. He doesn't have much of a hand. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think. Well, he has two cards in yeah. You have to get to yeah. three. So, so I, I know what you're saying. So it's two turns before it's or three turns before you even to play judge and then you need one more turn to yeah, actually attack out with judge turn. right so that's four like... turns yeah oh three turns yeah you're right yeah so i mean that's kind of rough he's about to hand out and once you hand out in this game it, the math is easy math gets so easy yeah like i wouldn't be surprised if i see uh pudding go in to try to ko something All right, where do we go? Going seven at Ichiji. Lots of decision making going on here. There we go. For sure. Oh, okay. Just going, he just waves his hand. It says says Ichiji. (laughs) Gonna put that life to the bottom. Took a second to think about it, but the 7K is going into Ichiji. And we got one, two, three, four, seven Dawn left. Is it another big bomb? I think we let one of these Ichijis go. I think we I think we let that one go. Um it depends. If you plan on attacking Oof, with the yeah. Oh yeah, and then gotta carry the other one away. But now we're sitting at four life, so I'm okay with that. That's her perspective, but she's definitely trying to Make sure that he at no point can clap back. And I mean, mm-hmm. putting putting the the zero counter to the bottom of the deck really hurts because if you're already walking through that hand, you're still walking through that hand, um, yeah. that life. But yeah, this is kind of a weird position because she's getting very low on life and he is very very healthy. So even if I think the Katakuri is the more powerful deck, I just don't think uh, she's well positioned to survive for too much longer. So we are on six dawn. Six Dawn, we have a little we have a little Ichiji in hand, so we can loop back. And then, then the question becomes, do we attack into Big Mom? Or do we just go for life? We're sitting at four life. I feel like we just can get aggressive. Go mm-hmm. for life every turn. And that's exactly what we're doing. Trying to pick up a card. And that's exactly what we're gonna get. Sure not just like naked swinging into uh or naked attacking into uh Big Mom. Mm-hmm. No Dawn. <laughs> no Dawn up. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna counter out of uh, your 5K <laughs> to my 8K. Yeah, that's definitely happening. Mind chain, mind game. <laughs> All right, so I guess another five into life, just chipping away at this hand. I can see it. I think we want to attack with this Yonji. I don't think I don't think we let it stay on board because we like the fact that it's a blocker isn't really relevant when it comes to okay. Ichig minus 2k the big mom put into big mom okay mm. so demanding a lot of cards here i i kind of would have attacked life yeah double 2k yeah that gets you out nine that's that's nine into six yeah so now the hand is very weak and then we I think we have to attack with Yonji. I don't think we pass the turn with this Yonji standing like that. I'm trying to think. Does he think he's going to survive for him to block with it? Or 
Okay, yeah. No, I just think I just I think you assume that it's it's gonna get dealt with in some way. We do we do have stage available to us. I I I, I believe we're sitting on an ECG and a a little ECG and a all right two one case. So now that we know the hand is very weak, Oof. I think we have to proc stage here, pitching the judge because we're there in no world i believe that's judge in hand i think it's ecg and judge in hand I, I think we have to pitch the judge use the stage get three cards and get get the pick of the litter and we're still looking for little little rage i feel oh it's a queen okay dude is uh trying his best he's going deep in the tank right now I don't think we use stage then. I think we keep we sit on queen. We sit on queen. Uh, oh, okay. I'm just wrong. Oh, I think I think uh, I think I would have said sat knowing that now with the hindsight that it's queen. I feel like we sit on queen, and then we have that available to us next turn to draw so many cards and an established blocker. Correct. Correct. All right, but we do we do have Ichiji, we do have Niji. So next turn we could potentially just bounce a blocker, like uh, if they chose if they choose to play a Sanji. Uh, I think it's this turn. Uh, Sakazuki's or pff, Katakuri will definitely be attacking into life or into characters. That's definitely the safe play. Mm -hmm. If they attack into our ECG, we 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 let it go, potentially, or we we defend it once and then let it go. Hmm. I defending it once, I think, is like it's kind of weird because I guess you could defend it and it's going to draw another card, but with all of, or another attack with all of his dot open, it's kind of weird. I don't. I think no matter how you slice it. Your field's yeah. about to go. So the question is, do we use a card in hand to kind of delay that? Or do we just Save. take one of our cards in life? Yeah. Ah, oh, this is tough. Right, we're debating. Do we, I guess we're not going for 10 drop mom? Because if we're maybe we're, we're, we're between debating all that judge. Uh, yeah. That's in trash, right? So we're, we're deciding if or we're just trying to make sure we're not going to lose to judge next turn, which we can't even play judge next turn. So easy peasy. I think we're going to seven dawn. So we'll be able to minus once. Mm. Oh, oh, nine K into ETG. We let that go because we have the backup ETG, little ETG in hand. Uh, big mom into Yonji. We got to let it go. And then I imagine it's leader into Raju character, fully cleaning up the board. Oh, we're going big. Oh, oh yeah, into the character. All right, we're going to look at the top life. And what is it? We don't know, but it's going to be interesting if they choose to send it to the bottom. Hard ponder. <laughs> Choosing it to go to the bottom. All right. Makes sense. That way you know what you're getting into and in, towards the end of uh, your attacks here. Got a lot of Dawn up. We still have nine Dawn. No, eight Dawn left. Tapping, mm. uh, doing six. What? What's for six? Mm. Am I missing something? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out, too. Oh. Oh. oh, is there an extra Dawn under... Oh, no, there was two Dawn under category, I for... or uh, the, the Secret Rare category, so it was actually for five. That makes sense. Um, Rage, you can win this. Uh, uns... Funny enough, Rage, you could win here. I, I know the hand is kind of weak from category. <laughs> so I think we attack... Do we attack seven with our leader and see what happens? Seven, eight? be a miraculous finish i mean do you do you have to seven eight i guess is the idea for me right now like you have four life um they have to they have to establish 
five valid attacks or, you know, a big mom trashing or something. Yeah, he is. He has all sorts of life right now. Like, he's he's sitting fairly safe. It's bad because with only one card in hand, like with two cards, two cards in hand and one card in life, um, I think there are just too many turns. Like, now next turn needs no a trigger. blocker. Next turn needs a blocker or raise you can 15k a face. Okay. Going to Ichiji. Ooh. Bring it out. Uh, minus two, and then just eight. Uh, I just go eight. No. Did you did you draw the card? Eight so of face. Good. Oh, oh it's all, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to spoil it because I knew oh. that the. <laughs> Not oh. gonna carry with. <laughs> oh, what was it? It was. I see a reject. I see. Was the last? What was the last life? It was a Maru, or was it? Uh, <laughs> no, it must have been the beige. Oh man, that was clutch then. Man. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh man, what a clutch game. I mean, I, I think Raju clearly had the the the, the stakes the whole time. Wait, my camera's um, off. I'm so sorry. Yeah, the uh, Raju had had the game controlled for the most part. As you notice, there's there's still at four life, right? Like, and it comes down to just if you're attacking to Raju's characters. That's kind of where they want to be in the first place. Um, they really like it when you're attacking your characters. And, and like you kind of something I didn't talk about is that one turn when they attacked with the Katakuri for an excessive amount of dawn to get rid of the Ichiji. All that really did was give Reiju another Ichi, uh, the Ichiji back in grave so they could uh, or trash back to uh, to play again. Yeah. Um... Ooh. The curse. <laughs> the curse. It's uh it's been a long day for these category players. It's been a it's been Five a long day. Hells, bro. Five hells. Not uh <laughs> every time, every time my category oh, takes the uh, takes the plate of the feature room or it's the feature so uh, match, there's uh it's so good. I'm starting to feel kind of bad. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold you. Um oh, man, we're 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 cursing all these categories, and there's so many of them. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was uh, that was that was pretty good. I I don't know. It's it's kind of strange because that just kind of showed the power of Reju's toolbox because Reju never got to hit its its boss card, so to speak. Right. It was just constantly operating on like about a six dawn uh, just range. Right. Just... No, I I agree. And they also didn't have a perfect start either. I don't think. I don't mm -hmm. think they started with stage or the uh, event card early. I think. Uh, oh no, no. This stage, game they stage did. was search. Stage was searched pretty quickly. I but... actually no. You're right. Stage was pretty. No, it was actually first turn event into stage mm -hmm. and then stage into something. Never mind. So that's. No, second. So that's kind of to reverse what I was gonna say. Like Reju, when it's firing off in on perfect perfect curve like that, especially a perfect opening like that, arguably. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just everything they want. And if they get to keep playing that game, they're they're one of the best decks in the format. And they can take out a Katakuri, they can take out a Sakazuki. And then we saw it earlier where, like, if Reiju doesn't see that, they struggle. Um, mm -hmm. And they're, they are easily fall down a couple brackets in the tier list in terms of how great they are. Yeah, I can see uh, I can see the next um, video title now. Can Katakuri beat the allegations? <laughs> like that, <there> is... <laughs> I no. can't believe. No, no. I cannot believe. It's funny because um, I think Katakuri can play an out to the stage, which is kind of something amusing that I don't think people think about. Ah, uh, Sir okay. Sir Streeson, Lord Streeson, actually. <laughs> so that was that was round six, right? Five L's for Katakuri. And uh, oh. three wins for Sakazuki on stream, I think. Something something crazy like that, I think we're at. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to go into round seven. We're going to take, take a break, get players ready, get uh, voices rested. So see you guys for that. Hopefully it's more Katakuri, because I want to see seven. Well, the, the hope of ten is dead. So see you. The chosen one. Hey, <laughs> this way. Welcome back, One Piece players, to the Play TCG, One Piece TCG, Arlington Offline Regional. We are going into round seven after a suite of five categories, taking five different L's in six rounds. 
we decided that, you know, maybe we need to go for the sixth one. We're going, <laughs> I'm Reese the Squirrel, co-hosted with uh, Universe himself. Look, we are here to see the legacy of Katakuri. This is, this is, this is a stress test for how well Katakuri does in the OPO6 meta. Um, a spoiler alert, it's, it's good, but it's not good enough. Because like I said, I want to reiterate, I'm not trying to throw any, uh, any shade towards the Katakuri players. Every Katakuri player that's been here has been undefeated until they weren't on camera. It's just a matter of uh, Katakuri not being able to shine, but this could be it. Could Katakuri number six break the curse? <laughs> Seven rounds, six Katakuris, six losses, one epic story. One no, win. Like, jokes that's aside, all, we, that's all we're trying to find. <laughs> one man. win is all we need. No, um, realistically, it just should go to show you that the fact that Katakuri has been up here this many times shows you that Katakuri is actually Loki dominating this event. Katakuri is most of the top tables uh, and right now, and that is just kind of insane. But we have our first Gecko Moria on stream versus the Katakuri. I think this is going to be a very, very, very crazy matchup because both of these leaders are swinging in heavy. Um, Katakuri yep. is able to, or attacking in heavy. Uh, Katakuri is able to see the cards and the life, uh, kind of see what Gecko is getting to hand, see, set up their own uh, triggers. Whereas Gecko Moria is going to be able to recycle things uh, from the trash. So we have mm -hmm. this match where you have two five life leaders, uh, excellent end games. Katakuri's board goes very, very tall, whereas Gecko Moria's board will go extremely wide. And this is going to be a, a powerhouse. Like they're going to be swinging for these big numbers that are going to demand cards from hand or damage taken. Uh, the triggers are on Katakuri's side, but I think the late game boss is. I would dare I say that since Katakuri has to swing to do its damage, Gecko Mori is probably going to be the the wall that has to be surmounted when it comes to the end game with all these blockers coming out, plus the Gecko Mori is raining down. This is going to be a pretty good match. Yeah, I'm Thanks excited to see. And th this is funny enough that th something that we didn't mention is like this is the first time we're seeing two five life leaders. So this game can has the potential to go pretty long, considering like not only are we on two five life leaders, but like Katakuri is going to be able to heal to, you know, have a grand total of six or seven life over the course of the game. So a lot of attacks from Gekko Moria are going to have to connect, but Gekko Moria is able to establish a lot of bodies. So, and they, they're pretty safe too, because Katakuri does not have the removal suite to actually deal with most of Gekko Moria. But Look, we got, yeah, we got, uh, yeah, no, Moria on the left, where I think we're resolving mulligans right now, and then Katakuri mm. on the right. Um, how do you think this matchup goes? Like, is it is it kind of Kree favored? Is it Moria favored? I feel like they both have reasons to. You could argue for both. Like once again, I mean, it's a triangle format for a reason, right? It's. Uh, I mean, I think the thing for me right now is that both of these leaders apply pressure, just doing what they're trying to do. Um, mm -hmm. Katakuri a little bit higher in terms of how much damage is poking through. Seven is indeed a better number than six. However, Gecko Moria is going to be playing things with that six damage so essentially what you're looking at is a wider board versus a taller board and that is not only reflected in their leader abilities but that's a reflected in their uh in their end game as well whereas big mom doing the burn the heal and being a tall wall versus gecko moria who's just building around himself that being said um i do think that the edge for consistency goes to moria moria is not worried about triggers moria is putting a bunch of things in its uh drop and then proceeding to just kind of go in so here you've got a uh a just a base swing or base attack of a uh, just just 5k which easily mm -hmm. gets countered out and then the uh full send into the parasparo uh good start from category right now the putting into the parasparo max ready for start, extra right? flare <laughs> max ready really for extra flare it doesn't get better for category in terms of stars right putting into a three drop and then into moria like they could potentially have the 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 great eruption into an absalom play here to get rid of the peril sparrow but peril mm -hmm. is still gonna bite it uh oh but we're gonna just play a borsalino so we're actually gonna have two real attacks this com coming turn uh, going into our five dawn play what can uh cutter crew i mean we could play an okiku i see i don't see much in katakuri's hand in the way of like being able to push this turn i see i do see the okiku actually so I imagine attack five, see if we can get uh, the block or just a card. 
Yeah, I think uh, right now it's it's going to be kind of rough because Moria is incentivized to counter out of these things. If Moria gets mm-hmm. to late game with a healthy life total, you're never really touching that life again. Meanwhile, Katakuri has to know that that is the case and needs to pressure as much as possible. So yeah. we get the Kikinojo coming out, and um, you you really just have to get momentum against Moria because Moria is that late game wall. Said it a gajillion times. Katakuri has astounding offensive power, but this is very much so going to be a tempo oriented battle. Yeah. And we got to see. Does did Moria? Oh, Moria did draw some of the the cost reduction going into six dawn. Do we have we have Absalom? And we have Helmepa, so we can get rid of this Kikunojo before we can get rid of Kikunojo before uh, the three life threshold for the the heal. And it's very important to do so as well. Like I, think I know that's you got to have to be the play, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to play the cards when you can play them, but playing out the uh, Kikunojo before it's actually live is going to present itself to just get swiped off the board, which is unfortunate because. Gekko Moria should you should have the knowledge that Gekko Moria has the ability to do that. Uh, we have the two K. I think we take this. Oh, okay. I I would have said if we had the two K, you should have uh, uh, countered out. But we're we're going to choose to just lose the Pearl Sparrow, get an option from or get a two K off of the top three. Here comes the Helmepo, and then here comes the Absalom, or maybe the yeah, it's gonna be the Absalom. Yeah, going in for seven. And trashing, I believe, uh, Lucci to play Absalom, getting rid of the Kikunojo. Yeah, I'm seeing right here. Sabo is uh, Sabo's going off. We got Hogback down. Sabo and Hogback down to the uh, bottom of the uh, the deck, and Lucci going to the trash. But yeah, that Kikunojo is gone, and that damage is taken, and we mm-hmm. couldn't get a heal. All in all, that was probably just the most advantageous way to take here at the Kiki Dojo, and we can't see his hand, but I have to wonder if there was any better play to put out than the Kiki Dojo that was not live. No, I think, yeah, I I don't think we did the all, but we do have seven drop Big Mom on seven, attack five. They don't have an easy block, but it's going to be a card out of hand if they choose not to take, if they choose to to counter out. Keeping it tough, trying to keep our life, really considering keeping our life total healthy here. Yep. And then seven mom, we're gonna trash the top life. It was a brand new, and then we're gonna draw into a meteor, a uh, great eruption. So now, now we're we're gonna go into eight dawn, and I don't think we have more in hand. I could be wrong about this, so it's always hard to kind of fully see the hand sometimes. And uh, it it is also I do we a... do have the gecko on, in hand? I think. So. Yeah, and I think it's it's also very much so telling um, when you play big mom seven just the choice that's made allows you to know a little bit about what their state of mind is at. Um, if he felt he had a weak hand or felt like he was not going to stabilize, it would have been a give you life because I can't afford to go down life. But him taking a life is very confident. It's showing that he believes he's about to curve out. He's about mm-hmm. to set up the board in excellent ways. And uh, yeah, it's also him not giving you the extra life, knowing that he's probably going to have the power to push it in soon. So I really do feel like uh as the as the category player you really do have to kind of feel sweating just a little bit right now because that's that's a huge show of confidence in your hand and setup oh attack five we know that attacking five here just proves that the oh, yeah. cat, uh, guy is coming down <laughs> just like the attacking the the <laughs> blank category attack on tendon you know it's coming so I guess we'll see how this resolves. We do take the life. That's a little risky. Uh, especially since I, we know we got the 2k counters in hand. Correct. Was he hoping to maybe get a trigger? Uh, taking the life there seems a little reckless because the Gecko Moria is going to put you on a clock. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't even say that blockers will save you here because Moria is a black deck that is prone to destroying things quite easily. So now you're sitting at a point where Ooh. So now you're sitting at a point where um, it's going to be all too easy to blow up blockers Ooh, and push past. Yeah, I'm like, I'm looking at this. That's brand new. Getting the Ice Age is huge, but but we are all tapped out for the turn. Yeah. And so that big I mean, mom is going to have at least one swing. Yeah, the And what are we going to send back for the Lucci? Are we 
do we even bother sending the something back for the Lucci to to KO the the, yeah, pudding. Not, the pudding, and then we're gonna opt to not. So we're just gonna establish uh, a, an, an attacker, a search card in hand, four cards in hand. Um, we know they're kind of dead though on our side. Little bird bird's eye view uh, privilege, but is, I know it's an ice age, a great eruption, and then two cards that we probably don't want to be countering out with. So some of this we can get some attacks in. Correct. It's like realistically, if uh, if a pudding goes sideways with Dawn under it, your his hand is bad enough for Gecko Moria to mm -hmm. win, regardless. So I don't think you have to worry about potentially ha like he's cutting his gray uh, his uh, trash in half if he ends up uh, if he ends up using Luchi's effect. So mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. But moving on to this, uh, did he pick up a brulee? Was it? Yep, brulee blocker right. was picked up off of the pudding. Okay, so picking up the brulee to get a little extra protection for what it's worth i wouldn't really call that extra protection because that's you could like that gecko more you could sneeze at brulee and it would just get evaporated so if you're if you're kind of curious the play to try like your opponent you know is on you know somewhat of a, a weak hand at this point they played their best they didn't really play like they haven't done anything crazy other than like a, a pretty optimal uh, moria you know they're sitting on a ice age so three cards could be countered. Do you just try try going for board and start see what you can get out of your opponent's hand, or do you do you, do you just go for life and go for game eventually on the next two, turn? Two life is very precarious. If this board gets left up, I I don't think he like he survives next turn. But most of his hand, most of his comparable cards or counterable cards should be gone mm -hmm. in a second. Um, it really should be. There's a lot of pressure on this board. Borsalino doesn't even have to turn sideways, but just Absalom can be donned up. You've got Rob Lucci. It makes an easy seven. Um, you've got the leader that can still play cards from the uh, trash if need be. You have the yep. Gecko Moria going in. There's a lot that can happen just in this turn alone. So it's kind of weird. You Three life is a lot. I don't think you can push for, for game here. Um, yep. Well, I mean, obviously I not agree. for this turn. You can try to set up, but I think right now you just try to destroy the board. And even then, I think we're in a not great position. We're going nine into, I want to say, Borsalino. Yeah. That was interesting. All right. Just clearing the board. It, 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 it works. And are we gonna, we're going to go into that. We are going to go for the for the uh, board clear a little bit here. Eight into the mm -hmm. Absalom. Absalom is gone. Not going to give our opponent any cards, any things to play with. Oof. Play the Gadatsu. And we just cleared three bodies. Um, not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. Um, I mean, he still has to watch out. Mm -hmm. um, his hand his hand is pretty thick. So I don't think that's... Uh, it's not It's not tender enough for, for Matthew to think about donning up and just trying to waltz him into an early game. Uh, but this is, this is a pretty good setup. Big Mom is a thick enough body to where it will require Gecko Moria turning sideways at it to even threaten it. The hand is very, very, very thick, and so you just don't want to potentially lose out on swings. Mm -hmm. He has put momentum a lot more on his side, and then he's going into his 10 dawn turn. So if this field doesn't get absolutely toasted right now, it's going to start gaining some serious momentum, especially with the fact that uh, Matthew's hand is Great Eruption, Ice Age. Uh, is that a... Lucci. There's definitely um, a Lucci in hand. Yeah, there's a Lucci there, so and then... Yeah, so this big mom is just not going to stay on board. We're going to 2k yeah. out of that attack. Oh, do we? I think if you're Moria, you just you just Ice Age, bring back Ice Age the big mom, bring back Absalom, and then that's it. Uh, that's going to be a very easy board cleanup. Maybe we could try to go for the. Uh, the, the double KO with the Great Eruption. Greater, Big Mom's now at two. Great Eruption gets Skidatsu to three. No, we don't have enough to quite clear. Unless it's a Helmeppo at the left side of the hand. I can't quite tell. Yeah, it's a little dark over there. All right, I think we're just going to go for the Absalom play. It is so gross. And I know that's part of this deck oh, success, okay. but it is so gross that like you put the Absalom out and what have you and what happens. <laughs> it gets them back. With a vengeance. Okay. We are just going to play the... Oh, we're going to play Sabo. Okay. Draw two. See if we can get a more optimal uh, discard hand. And gets us a couple cards in hand. All right. I was about to say that. I was a little confused. Like, I get this, but I was like... Mm -hmm. 
what what do you think he would have played? Like that's the line I'm not seeing right now. Mm-hmm. Playing the uh, playing the Absalom after the Sabo. I just want to know what he was going to potentially draw that would have caused him not to use his leader effect. Yeah, I guess just maybe going to it. It's just great. It's just good to go into an, an uh, into a turn or into an attack with all of possible information. Mm. But yeah, it probably doesn't change much either way. Um, all right. Do we? We can't just keep. So we're kind of curious. We can't. We can't just keep going for a board. We're just falling too far behind. Do we have ten drop mom? Ten drop mom does stuff for us for sure. It'd be a changer because uh, Nasabo is going to get in your way. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just thinking about it. If you know you have to get Big Mom off the board, I don't know what he was going to play that would have not been under mm-hmm. Sabo's protection. That's. It's interesting. Um. We got Brulee, but Brulee doesn't really stand a chance against the the hand we're looking at. Another Absalom easily gets rid of a Brulee. Brulee is high fraudulence <laughs> against black decks. <laughs> it's pretty. It's not the greatest. Deep in the tank, he is thinking, and this is a crucial turn. And you know, unfortunately for the yellow player, it does not seem. Like they have a ten drop yeah, in hand. They have the seven really drop, good. but they not, haven't found ten. Amaru, oh, wait, no, ten on the left. Ten, I think. Ten drop. Oh, I'll turn ten drop. I, see, I, the see left. I see. Is that the best play though? Mm. That's the hard part too. So we've got Brulee. We've got Amaru. We've got. It looks like another pudding at the very minimum. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong about the. No, it's definitely a ten drop mom. Yeah. So ten drop mom Amaru pudding, mm-hmm. and I think there's two cards left. I think we attack leader five, or do we attack? See if he just auto blocks it. See if he auto blocks it. That way you can try to go in with Gedatsu into into the Sabo. Your opponent's on a two card hand anyway. I just, I don't see how, I mean, we could, there's no world where reject is live and we get, we get, we get some damage in. So we have to, I think it has to be 10 drop mom is the best play. And then we hope with, uh, honestly with cards, no, not giving it up. No, no. Cards with, what? with cards, not being able to attack the turn their plate. I think that as tight as the plate is, um, big mom is looking better and better simply because if you don't play at this, like it has to get mobile at some point with a Sabo out with the Gekka Mori out, big mom has to get mobile at some point, And it's always going to be the turn after you play it. So like, it's not even about windmilling big mom. It's about surviving, but also putting your giant piece on board because right now, most of his board, like two of his uh, battle cards or wow. Two of his characters do not actually do anything right now. They're just sitting there. Uh, Gadatsu is cool, but Gadatsu can either be one for one or, you know, neutral by Luchi or uh, even worse, you know, just swung by Gekko Moria if it really wants to be off the board. This is just not a good position. And I know he's thinking about it for a long time, but the thing I'm thinking of is you have one life. You have one life and not that much counter. And he goes, he opts not to play Big Mom. And uh, with one life, Yes, he has two cards in hand, so he's not going to be able to counter out of it. But realistically, uh, this this is still lethal on board. Mm-hmm. Very much so lethal on board. There are four valid attacks coming this turn, and he needs to figure out how to neutralize that. And even then, it might not be enough. No, I agree. Big Mom felt like the biggest, the best play. Um, all right, four. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, the Absalom came out after the the Sabo. Yeah. I almost I, I I almost felt real bad. <laughs> no, no, that's that's yeah. why that's why I was kind of confused because I was like, if you are always going to get rid, if you are always going to get rid of the uh, Big Mom, I don't know why the Sabo came out first. Uh, the only uh, it was mentioned, but uh, the only the, to protect the Luchi from the uh, in case the second life was an Anonami. But then that, in turn, does put your Absalom at risk as well. So you're kind of right. It, it, it goes either way, I think. Are we attacking into life with this Gadatsu? It must be.
And we take. All right. And then end the turn with Brule. All right. So. Ah, Brule's just gone, though. Brule does not. We already have Absalom in, in uh, trash, so. And we did we did already use the Ice Age, so it's not open knowledge that the Great Eruption or the Suru or like mm -hmm. anything. Yeah, this is just woof. Um, Sentry in hand. I guess we're forcing our opponent to commit to using two dawn on leader effect instead of just shoving it all under. Which kind of staves off the blow a little bit and we do uh, to be fair katakuri does know what their last life is they do so that a lot of this knowledge is based on a lot of their play is open information for them like they know what trigger they're potentially hitting here yeah and i think uh i'm not gonna say overthinking it but we're we're at a pretty good like this is about to be extremely rough uh we get the ice age Mm -hmm. Gecko Moria down into the uh, yeah into the Absalom, removing the Brule, and that's uh that's pretty rough. I mean Gecko Moria is about to come in with twelve. Yeah. Oh, so it was a it was uh, a it was a beige. So now we just attack ten. Sabo. <laughs> Sabo for game. Oh my gosh. Oh, but it makes it hard. We we this is ten if we put put all four under. Do we have it as Katakuri? I don't so, think we do. Funny enough. Well, yeah. So it, it's at this point the way I'm seeing it, right? Um, oof. he so, could he could if this doesn't go through, this is potentially um this is potentially lethal. So it's like you don't necessarily want to do something with your blocker. He's only got three cards in, hand. and that is that is fear. I mean. His opponent has four cards in hand, and he has no way of knowing that they're all dead. Oh, and he but goes in, and that's game. <laughs> he's gonna risk it for he's gonna risk it for the biscuit, yeah, and it that's all it. No counter. Uh, so taking the sixth L, Sakazuki <laughs> or Kata, <laughs> Gecko Moria takes the win. Katakuri, um, yeah, Katakuri man. once again. Latakuri, oh, no. Latakuri. Oh my God! Oh, I, I, we got to stop. We can't keep putting them on the spot. No, no, no. It's La not working La out. Latakuri, Latakuri. It's not fair. It's not fair. That is, that is. Uh, Katakuri just hasn't been the same after Luffy invested him in, oh my God. in just versa. It has just, just not been. That's uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's rough. That is. Oh man, Epson chat. <laughs> I think all right, so mapping that turn out though, um like what could you like was it really was Big Mom really the play? You know, like um, was you I think it I think it's one of those situations where since your hand was weak, it kind of had to be 10 mom, like you were saying, just so it guarantee it kind of guarantees you game next turn, right? Because now you have a 12k beater. You're going to be able to do what you want, and you got two life. They're down to two as well, and you're going to be able to establish board to do something if you make it that far. Yeah, Whereas cause... here, it was like you played the brulee for just to get KO'd for free. You know what I mean? But you did get to clear some bodies, so it's like, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's it was tough. it was very close to a lose lose situation regardless. But I feel like knowing knowing that Bege is your last life, hmm. Big Mom gives you a second life you know beje is going to come out at like at, at uh, from the jaws of defeat to stop something from swinging and if you, um, you can Sanji. count the attacks on the board yeah you, you can count the attacks on the board i do think that playing big mom not only gives you a little bit of a pocket for life but per, but potentially puts you in a position to clear more of their board the following turn mm -hmm. um i just it's like you just have to know like there's an absalom in the trash your brulee is not surviving. It's not like you're just watching out for an ice age. There's still ice ages, great eruptions, surus, helmepos. Um, like, yeah. There was so much that was not going for that brulee. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I personally feel like at that point, if you know you're going to lose the next turn anyway, you, you might as well. Play, right? you might that as would well guarantee gamble. you game next turn, right? If, it's if like, it comes back to you, you for sure have game. Roll the dice. Roll the dice on a win. Mm -hmm. rather than taking the 99% chance loss, you know? Yeah, something Actually, like not that, even 99% yeah. chance. Like, he knew his last card. So, like, if yeah. you can count the things on board, that's mm -hmm. it's wild. 
that was wild. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe they were just hoping they wouldn't have it. Uh, like because Absalom KOs two costs, so they were like, okay, well, you played so you played so many things at this point. I don't know. I mean, mathematically, that's kind of wild because, like, what we saw like two ice ages, two or three ice ages. We didn't see any, we didn't see too many great eruptions. Actually. Yeah, I think, I think one... that great eruption might have been the only one that we saw, or maybe one mill, but we didn't see any surus. I don't think mm-hmm. uh, there was still like we saw one Helmepo. Um, I personally, I mean, this deck not really. I don't think this uh, this list ran Hina or Rebecca, but like, I just feel like mm-hmm. we saw a lot, and I just yeah, it's, that one's rough. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. Well, I mean, it's what it is. Um, I mean, like they probably lost either way. I mean, at the end of the day, unless unless that you healed something insane, like a Sanji or a second beige would have been mm-hmm. wild. We didn't get to see what the top deck was. So that would have been the power, the true power of yellow. That's oh, but all right. Well, uh, that was round seven. Uh, we are on Katakuri's sixth loss because we decided to take a break on Katakuri's. But uh, <laughs> maybe. Maybe round eight. Maybe round eight will get the will break the curse. For, for I the see. Here's my thing. I want to know how many of these categories are about to end up in top thirty two because this is the, the, the way this is feeling. It, it just makes me feel like every other table has a category deck. Right. All right. Yeah, maybe it would be fun what to see cat- the breakdown. We don't have the breakdowns, unfortunately. What if uh, what if Katakuri loses every game on stream just to get through the top bracket and win the tournament because there's just so many of them? That would be a great, a great tournament story, and we <laughs> would get to live it. And I'm so here for it. Already then, already then. <laughs> so uh, with that being said, uh, I believe we're going on a break now until the next round. We'll be back for the legacy of the uh, the saga of Katakuri. Uh, we'll we'll see if it turns around, or maybe we'll get a match that. Doesn't actually have category in it. We don't know, but we are up here at these top tables seeing people play their hearts out. We have got three more rounds before we uh, end up cutting to standings and then uh, going into top eight tomorrow. So stay excited. Stay here. Thank you guys for the support. We're uh, above 300 people in the stream. It feels great. And uh, yeah, we'll be back to the games soon. Hello again, Pirates, Marines, Unknowns. We are here back for round eight of the Esports Stadium Arlington One Piece Card Game Offline Regionals. I will say it enough times until you guys remember the entire title. But we are currently going into what may or may not be another chance for Katakuri to prove itself. I really don't know. We got to see what we have on camera. But uh, I mean, with all the Katakuri being represented and doing well, it could just yeah. be Katakuri again. You don't know. But we had a uh, we had a bunch of awesome matches so far. We've seen a lot of decks show out. We've seen people recover from stumbles, fumbles. Um, and, you know, it's just been a really good run thus far. But the question is, what's going to come out on top? Um, so far at the top tables, we have seen Yamato, we have seen Reiju, we have seen uh, Sakazuki, Katakuri, 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 Moria. Um, it really has <laughs> just kind of been a lot of uh, a lot of variety up at the top tables, and we're gonna hopefully keep it that way. So I'm excited to go into this. What are your thoughts right now, Reese? We're going for the seven. We're going, we're going for seven. Like there ain't no way, like, and that's the that's the jump of it. I feel like, I, like because we keep bringing Katakuri to the screen and they keep losing, but that has to mean that they've been doing well at this point. Like the previous Katakuri was six and oh, right? Like that is straight up a fact. <laughs> so like it's not like we're getting like it's 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 not we're not like you know where I'm trying to go with that, but we're going for seven. Maybe maybe. Num- Katakuri number seven is the one to break the curse, and may- like at-, at this point, I'm here for the plot. Um, I want to see. I want to see how the how the story unfolds. Who's the who's the chosen one of Katakuri's to, to to break this curse and end it for us? Because I I don't know if I can watch another Katakuri after <laughs> after this man. Oh Katakuri boy, Al-Gaim. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's the thing. The um, first Katakuri to win is Katakuri Al-Gaim. Right. That's that's really it. And like I I honestly am sitting here just uh I mean it's it's I don't know. 
I don't know. Sometimes, who knows? Maybe it might be stage fright. Maybe it's just like the luck of the draw. We mm -hmm. have talked about how Katakuri is a solid deck, but does require a bit of high roll to perform at its peak efficiency. Um, I'm trying to think what I want to see here. Honestly, I would not mind a Gecko Moria versus a Sakazuki. That would be um, interesting. I kind of want a rematch. I want to see another Yamato up here. That will be. I, awesome. I, I think Yamato um, needs redemption, man. 100%. Still want some. I still want some white beard. Um, white beard would be cool. I haven't seen Perona. I haven't seen Sanji Zoro. That's fair. I want. I won't hold you. Sanji Zoro would be flame just because we'd be able to see some wicked things that we just don't get to see it often. Um, in terms of like rematch, like what if rematch from the story? I do want to see. Uh, I do want to see White Beard versus Sakazuki. I think he needs to run back. One. Um, there's just a lot of things we can do here, and I am excited. I think players are currently getting ready to settle in, and so we should be able to use our cross-country observation hockey to see who is playing who. Uh, so it, 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 we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But we have three more rounds left, including this one, before we end day one, uh, putting us about, let me look at the clock, it's about to be 8 p.m., I think, on the eastern okay. side, which means it's going, it's uh, it's it's 7 p.m. locally, you know, uh, CST, which probably puts us out closer to two-ish hours, two-ish hours, just above two-ish hours from now for the end of day one. So strap yourselves in, get your popcorn out, and um, prepare to see some more premium one-piece card game plays. Welcome back, One Piece players, to the Arlington One Piece Play TCG Regional offline. <laughs> Some order of those words is right. Uh, we we don't have a seventh category. Um, I'm sorry. I we let you guys down. I know the story was the plot was great, but we instead have a Reiju versus a Sakazuki. Not Reiju's best matchup, but loving that arm fat hand tattoo by that one guy. Full stop. Um. Well. And I'm co-hosted by Universe X, so you talk. Um, realistically, we still have uh, we still have two more rounds to see the the end of the category plot, so like uh, fret not. But um, we saw this matchup a little earlier, and it did not necessarily end well for Reiju. But as we discussed many times before, um, Reiju is Reiju can have some very high ceilings, but it also has a very 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 low floor. So we really just got to see. What kind of hand they keep now noted this Reiju looks like they kept their hand immediately jackie kept his hand and uh that should mean that he did not keep a brick so with that being said um we start off with sakazuki playing he turned one again tashigi just offering sakazuki a turn one hand fixer is very very nice oh, and we're gonna okay. snap pick the great eruption it's a um, card I... powerful enough to get banned so <laughs> Reiju hard keeping uh, a hand usually doesn't necessarily mean stage. I feel I feel I feel like there's three playable hands from a Reiju going first or going second or at all is a stage being one. At least seeing stage is great. At least seeing uh, a German sixty six is good. And then the other one is seeing the full uh, Reiju character combo. Any three hands, any hand consisting one of those three is a keepable hand to me. So, so that because all of those will get you into your draw engines correctly but it turns out it is stage unfortunately we pitch a little ichiji just to pick up a uh big ichiji so not the greatest feeling for sure we won't be unless we have another one in hand we won't be able to use this ichiji it was picked up yeah i feel like we've all i think this is uh this is pretty nice all right run a 2k out of the six and oh <laughs> one of one of sakazuki's mm. my, my my buddy strongest wizard always mentions this play the turn one tashigi into turn two brand new attack for six he absolutely loves this play full stop <laughs> he I mean, does not good. have any hard feelings it is so good like we're out here we're out here um the the hand fixing looks very very good we're starting mm -hmm. to get off to a excellent start the hand is getting sculpted this is I mean, it can't feel that good for uh, for for Jackie because Sakazuki is a deck. It's a combo deck full of options. When mm -hmm. it's able to stack up like this, you know that whatever you play is going to be removed. Um, Germa Stage, activating, ditching the big Gigi, getting the uh, Niji. Uh oh, a card being accidentally oh, dropped. We're still good. Oh, Ooh, good. I guess we just have it. We just have it. We do. Yeah, we're just built different. Yep. We're gonna. Go into Reiju or go into big HG minus 2k, something that's not going to be too relevant. Draw off of our leader effect and then attack for seven. 
uh, really nice to do this early on when uh, Sakazuki hasn't gotten too many of its uh, uh, leader abilities off, crafting their hand every turn. Um, they just don't have the quite yet the counter power, probably trying to store up uh, great eruptions early, trying to store up ice ages early, and then, and then kind of punishing for them for that. Mm -hmm. But this Ichiji probably isn't long for the world. I mean, it's the thing is you've seen them, you've seen them search uh you've seen them search Great Eruption, but you don't know if they have access to Ice Age yet. Mm -hmm. So realistically, this early in the game, it's not like ETG is auto destroyed. But Fair. no yeah. no vote of confidence with uh with these attacks coming through the way they are, or these uh minuses that are coming through the way they are. Because uh if he had Ice Age, it just would have been played. Ice Age into you know uh, Hound Blaze is destructive, but we still have the opportunity for a Helmeppo um Helmepo's two right so i'm looking at this Helmepo ice age or Helmepo uh hound blaze can definitely come through and then put more pressure when you swing with the brand new so there's still a lot that can go on here mm -hmm. um if i had to say i would say like we we probably are looking at either a suru or a Helmepo. gonna gonna pitch the little niji instead better. of the big one and then second ice age getting our uh ichi to great two eruption. yeah great eruption goes crazy here twice yeah. all right man that's three great eruptions we've already uh been essentially seen or used by the sakazuki player getting rid of the bottom decking the ichi which oh it's so painful to see uh and then we did helm blaze the brand new we're gonna 2k out of that and then to she get to wrap up the turn what a what a good turn like you filled got rid of the threat attacked got rid of a card in hand twice and now we bottom decked a really key piece and now reiju just doesn't have a hand size but we are about to we're definitely about to refill it with the uh the reiju character yeah, yeah. We're just gonna straight up hard play it um instead of trying to combo but could just we could go for the combo too the momentum was absolutely great there like that's that's where you want to be he reset the board immediately now that being said we are looking at two life uh on sakazuki side and reiju is not the type of deck to sleep on with how many uh with the, the, the way they can accrue resources um of course we're still a fair amount of ways from like just dumping a bunch of cards on board but still like reiju plays very strong and sakazuki doesn't really have much presence on board yet uh mm -hmm. just a lot of just a lot of cards that we're getting to hand and right now we're going to see a straight check of sakazuki's oh, hand value. size right yeah and we're gonna get out of it two two k's mm -hmm. two, oh no oh. we're gonna give up three cards for this and the three important cards on at that another searcher rebecca gonna discard a reiju a big reiju to pick up a 2k like that and then we're just gonna draw three here. Too. Oh my gosh, we are we are moving. Shmooly. We are moving. And draw three cards. Oh, and we picked up a little Ichiji, but not not. I don't know if we have the the big Ichiji yet. No, we definitely do not. So I haven't recovered from the first Hound Blaze, and I think one Hound Blaze is already in trash. So we're looking at two more Hound Blazes potentially over the course of the game. Mm-hmm. Depends on if we're playing Amar um, Amino. Uh, that's an, another great card. Oh, just the blue cards being able to bottom deck so powerful against Reiju. All right, that's the is that the fourth great eruption? It's man is at least the third at this point. The way he's slinging this lava, these hound blazes, these great eruptions. He might be Sakazuki in the flesh. This is oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> hmm. but do we have the removal i can't quite peep the hand for what what the removal option another hound blaze i imagine i mean if we if we don't have the removal we plan hound blaze or we plan our great eruption kind of i have four, questions four. counting out our dawn <laughs> we got six six dawn to play with it's definitely oh no it's amino i think it's amino so we're going to be able to uh bottom deck uh the reju I mean, Attack. Amino is uh, pretty strong. Not getting the full value, but it is what it is. Yep. Not a particularly great... Like, the, the fact that he was willing to uh, put two Dawn under uh, Sakazuki and mm -hmm. then attack, leaving two up, well, being able... To, yeah, okay, this is much better. When he when he looked like he was about to put two down, I kind of worried because that kind of shows that he doesn't have anything to really play here. And then we are seeing just an easy counter out 
for that. Uh, we've got the third Hound Blaze. <laughs> Brand new coming in. All right, 2K. And uh-huh. he's, oh, he's not taking any of that. He said, my life is going to stay nice and high. All right, so what do we have? We could. What do we have as Raju? All our, all our big characters are gone to the bottom of the deck, and we Oof. have a backup Rebecca in hand, going to bring back a Virgo, and then keep it in hand. All right, what do you got, Raju? Going up to six dawn. Maybe we do something. We still got we got stage to do something. Gonna probably uh, pitch the Kaya. Oh no, little little Raju. Oh, that's bad. Look at top three. Uh, get the German sixty six. Yeah, that's a quick that's a quick take. Use one. Now we get to look at the top five. Uh, I think I I think I peeped a, a big Ichig. What? Pressing damage is pressing damage right now. Mm-hmm. Especially since uh like they're they they clearly don't have the two Ks. We've just picked up a two K, but it doesn't mean Yeah, we we dropped a two K and two one Ks before and then he just went out of his way to pick up a two K. The hand is counter light. Like it's just mm-hmm. that's that's what's been shown. So now we're just sitting in a place where we need to see if uh Jackie can capitalize on that. So what do we what do we do? We're, we're just we're we're trying to think over what we're gonna pick up here, and it's looking like okay we pick up the Raju. I like this because we can just hard play it. Like everyone always like everyone kind of forgets that the 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 German sixty six cards can just be played, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go forego the uh, leader effect to uh, draw a card and just hard play the Raju, attack for six. Uh, imagine that life and we know we got the 2k already and we we actually reveal a different 2k so that's yeah i Ooh. i don't know about that one now like granted that's hand information <laughs> yeah everybody everybody can have their own opinion about this but if you search a card and it serves no other purpose but to just be a, a different that needs to be the first card that's dropped you did mm-hmm. not need to know that you still have the virgo in hand yeah absolutely um, it's the same thing when you play alt arts in your deck if you pick up an alt art and then you end up playing the same card, but it's a different alt or a different art, you're you're giving your opponent information. That's not good. Mm. But we're we're being a little bit picky. I mean, it's just tight. It's just tight play. It's just tight yeah, play. yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so Sagazuki, we're sitting at nine dawn. Our hand is kind of weak unless we finally drew into the Moria. I feel like maybe, maybe we haven't had Moria. Uh, maybe that well, maybe Moria is but what's been clogging our hand. But I imagine we would have pitched it by now if that was true. Yeah, this uh, is a, uh, this is this is yeah. a little scary. Um, we we need to against Sakazuki. You need to overwhelm their ability to remove your board, and we're not mm-hmm. there yet. Um, like we're just simply not there yet, and that's kind of that's kind of a scary thing here because Sakazuki doesn't have anything threatening, but all it's really going to take is a nice pitch into a Moria to change that. Yeah. All right, minus one the uh, the Raju on a two K. We're just been keeping our life so safe, and I feel like we we I feel like early on we kind of pitched a, a couple like little cards that kind of would have gone a long way for us, but it's fine. Next turn. All right, gonna play the Gecko Moria for eight. What are we bringing back? We gotta get rid of some Tashigis. Hmm. Well, definitely, definitely Luchi's coming back. And then we have to play Suru. Makes sense. Get rid of the Raju. But it looks like we're out of bottom decking a potential for uh, the Sakazuki. So I think we're we're happy about that. Yeah, and this is gonna be where it comes into play. Um, this is gonna be where it comes into play just being at a high life total because now he has a little bit more room to potentially stabilize his following turn is that eight dawn is that eight dawn i think it is but we don't have any of the big characters which is the biggest problem right now we are gonna play judge okay yeah that's what i was that's what i was wondering about all right we got a disco we do have the big ag ichig uh we definitely have ray juice do we have niji's Oof. Oh, do we we just have everything? Oh, this is gonna be sick. Did we draw off of the Raju effect? Please don't have missed the Raju effect. 
draw and then draw two. Uh, did uh, I didn't catch if they drew off. I don't, I don't, I don't remember if he drew off Reggie when he used Judge. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So maybe we missed it. Maybe we didn't. And it's a, it's a you may yes. Uh, I think it's mandatory. It, it, it it's the biggest deal is of it is, um, if you are at six cards or more than six cards, then you can't yeah. trigger uh the Raju character, and things like this. I hope he wasn't a. I I really hope that he wasn't a. Oh, he did draw. I was thinking somebody said he did draw. Okay, okay, okay. He did draw. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, this is this is a huge turn. This is the exact turn that the Raju that Raju was trying to build on. up, right? Oh, yeah, this is this we... is why the life was kept so healthily, uh, and this is going to be very very insane going into uh, next turn. Sakazuki generally will have a problem trying to clear. Like, there, there's not really a way to clear all of this. Mm -hmm. There's too much stuff on board. Choosing to bounce what? So if you bounce any four costs on the board, is is is. Is Luchi better? Is it better to bounce the Luchi than it is the, um, than the Rebecca? I mean, so, I guess Rebecca is guaranteed something else. I don't know. So my thing is with uh, with two with Judge and Ichiji. Um, now with Gecko Moria being on board, the Ichiji isn't safe. Uh, mm -hmm. That being said, it's very it's gonna be very. It's only gonna take an Ice Age. She's already used a, a fair amount of uh, things like Great Eruption, but it's like a Zuki effect. Yeah, like I can easily see Ichiji going down. He doesn't have like that much out of me. He actually, no, he actually just drew a lot. So he might be able to defend Ichiji from a swing. I think just with four bodies on board, he has mm -hmm. set himself up to be very much so able to hold on to two of them. And uh, for the most part, that's all he, well, not quite all he needs, but it's going to go a long way. Sakazuki is going to need to expend quite a few cards to break a punch a hole in this board, and it still won't get rid of all of it. Which is just essentially what Reiji wants to see. Mm -hmm. um, even if he doesn't end the game this following turn, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that Jackie can at least put uh, Moxie at one and or at zero, and then threaten game next turn. And with a full four life, he is likely to survive to get to that hole. Yep. Um, and then, oh, man, seeing and we do have the counter, and if we end up attacking, like there's there's no good attacks too, because now attacking into life is just going to give your opponent cards, and then attacking into the ECG, you have to attack up into the ECG, so you need some dawn commitment, um, because uh, nine into seven, I mean, this is pretty easily defendable, I feel, um, and and I think you would take that every time. Uh, short short side note: Why is Gecko Moria nine for eight dawn? That doesn't make sense. What? Look, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that tracks. I don't think. I don't it's think not that's even, fair for anybody. Not even just nine for eight dawn. Like uh, Gecko Moria literally plays fourteen dawn for eight. That's just insane. <laughs> true. True. All right, Sakazuki is really trying to map out this turn. We do have the Ice Age in hand. Uh, I don't. Do we have the fourth? Uh, do we have the fourth Great Eruption? Even though I feel like all the Great Eruptions are gone. It's it's zero to four. Four or three have been trashed at this point. He's got to think hard because this is potentially game on board, and he knows this mm -hmm. for sure. All right, Ice Age going to do the judge. Judge is now at three. We can easily attack with our leader, um, and get that last one. So Judge will no longer be a factor. It will. Be, it can very easily be KO'd by. Lucci. All right, attack. One more on the judge. I imagine a life. It has to be a life. What am I saying? And we're gonna counter out this. Okay. I mean, I yeah. I, I get it. If it's if it's one of the big, the big spandex guys. Uh, if it's one of the big spandex guys. <laughs> is Jerma is Jerma gonna show everybody why he is the Jerma daddy? Is he is he gonna close our game here? Okay, and here's the combo we got. <sighs> Oof. Rebecca will be bring, absolutely will be bringing back uh, a luch, or no? We're gonna play the Hina minus something else. I imagine the Rage. You. It could be. It could. It could be. It has to be the Rage. You. Yeah. yeah. The only way he's gonna two for one here, and Gecko can still swing into Ichiji. Oh, choosing Ichiji. Okay. So we have one more way to cost oh. reduce. Oh, no, is that Neji? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. 
Did I miss him? Oh, okay. Well, no, no. So he oh, just no. chose the he chose the Naji and right. Said, he needs four. I, it's so hard to remember every single, um, every single cost reduction. Yeah, and then you put the uh, Amino on. So you you really have no more judge, which is the biggest swinger, uh, the biggest mm-hmm. attacker. And then you, you just basically this is this is rough. Um, the board was neutralized pretty handedly, but not only was the board neutralized. And it's still going. There is still stuff that. Oh, okay. Uh, so board was board completely cleared, and you set up to uh, to a uh, second Rebecca. So now we are in this burnout turn where Judge cannot be played. Your board cannot be reestablished. His board is stronger than ever, and that four life is there, but it's not looking like the best. Mm-hmm. Um, Moxie has what three cards in hand? I think two. No, three. Yeah. No, two. Two K out of that. I think it's one card. Now is one card. No, it's two, two cards. Okay. Two cards. Yeah, absolutely. We have three total. Cards. So now we need to see how we even try to mount an offense. Like each of you would be great. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey, get the draw card, and then stage dead stage. We got a stage. I mean, not dead stage. He can drop it. Yeah, he can drop the stage. The stage. <laughs> Funny enough, we're gonna minus two k the Hina. Okay, but I think it's just. I think it's a, a some combination of just attack attack leader as much as you can see if you could bait a block it's true but do you want hina to stay around though like i i can see a gg going life but i'm wondering if uh if you want the hina to stay around mm-hmm. it's just one more attack on you like he has four life right now so he needs to be hit five times but i mean i can easily see those four life being taken but this is so going to go seven Garrett gets the block stage mm. the stage. What's he pulling? Uh, I see big Ichig. And mm-hmm. we, uh, do we have a follow up Ichig? We actually we do because we have the. I think we have the two K at hand that like the mom that brings back the little ones. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll see. I mean, Garrett, I I don't think I don't think there's enough on board for Sakazuki to go for game here. So it's just going to be another board clear turn. Oh, we do have the Ichiji in hand. Oh, we do have the little Ichiji in hand. So this will be very interesting coming up. Yeah, I think one of the biggest issues there right now is uh, we still get that blocker out. No telling what we see this turn. Like another Gekko Moria could be devastating because you could just remove... Mm-hmm. Uh, you can really just get an attack in with um, with Hina and then play and override the Branu as well as the Shigi. And just have a really strong board in general. Another uh, another Gecko Morio Rebecca, I think, closes this game out because it's going to put you're going to be able to punch out most of his life and then kind of sit back. Just sit on blockers, yeah. All right, I guess we'll see how it goes. I mean, if you if you punch into life and you still see these characters on board, only three cards in hand, four cards in hand. Mm-hmm. Got a card on the front there and some cards on the back, so it's hard to really know what the hand is. Just counting up little little ones. <clears throat> what are we doing? Oh my. Is that his own grave? What is, oh, this is the search off of Tashigi. What am I saying? Okay, that's what's happening. We're still consulting on what what our we're still trying to resolve Tashigi. Mm-hmm. With the uh, with the zero to four life lead, uh, this would be a crushing stabilization. And return um so i'm very much so interested to see what's going on here. i want to see how yeah this is this is this is kind of tight uh so Tichigi, okay we're gonna take the 2k all right i, I believe that's virgo sun god's not really allowing me to yeah. do that but i think it was it's virgo. 2K. yeah so now we do have a 2k all right nine dawn to work with hina goes in we defend that mm-hmm if we if we have the cards, we definitely defend them. There ain't no way. Just drop a single, because mm-hmm. like th- this is the scary part. Like it's scary. Swing with Hina to get the value out, chip a card from somebody's hand, and then just play, play you know, good stuff. Oh. Opting to opting to let it go. Maybe we're trying to get some cards out of life. Maybe. Um, we we've it's been a struggle since we haven't had life, and maybe also saving the dawn. For... I was about to say, yeah, saving the uh, saving the saving the cards in hand for each EG. Mm-hmm. For sure. And we're replacing uh, a card. It's five Dawn Saba. Ugh. That's that. Don't want to be seeing that. that second sucks. blocker blues. Now, I mean, we can still bounce, mm-hmm. but that's really it. All right. 
Pitching dropping a hound, dropping a hound blaze, and then I, don't know, I think it's another Amino. That's confident. Tag it to the Ichi-G. That is we, very confident. We definitely, we definitely counter out of that. Yep. Yeah, you have to. One more time, Ooh. five, and it's at nine into seven, so another two, two Ks. Took all of those cards back from me, and, and that's that's rough. That's a tough choice. This is such a tough choice. I see Sora in hand, I believe. But we we have Sora and then little Ichiji, so we we really can't. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, what are we? Oh man, the board's just broken now. Going into our seven dawn turn. And it goes. All right, draw for turn. What did we draw? I think we're on seven dawn, I believe. One, two, three, four. Yep, seven dawn. Pitching a big Ichiji. C3. Get little. Ooh, that's good. Mm. We're going to be able to. We'll be able to play little. Uh, play the little Niji. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We're going for. Right. Are we full sending it? You say maybe we might be in full sending it. Draw off of leader, uh, minus two the Sabo makes sense to me. Seven at life. We know we have the two K, so it's two cards, and it's not like Sakazuki was playing with too many cards to begin with. It's only yep. three, so it one it definitely is the two K. And this is the this is the crazy thing because you either drop a two K and a one K, mm -hmm. or you block, and once you block, the the uh, you should be catching can he bounce? I'm starting to see the rest of his hand. Uh, he has the, okay, we are going to block with the, okay. the, we're going to block correctly. I think we just attack eight now or seven and then use, I think we have to, oh, mm. he, he has the life. Mm -hmm. Um, he definitely has the life. So we probably, well, in all honesty, we probably just got rid of the entirety of his counter value. The mm -hmm. bad, the scary, this is the scariest part of the turn. He has his draw for turn. His draw for leader effect and whatever else he uh, may have, mm -hmm. he might already just have it in hand. But you just have to pass and hope, pray even, that he does not have yep. a way to put another blocker on board. Because you potentially have a way to bounce. Oh. Going 11 into EGG, it's gone. Okay, okay. Immediately trying to put stuff out. Mm -hmm. And then this is this has got to be good. So what, what's happening right here? Four for another blocker. No, it's Kuzan. Draw a card. Did we draw? Did we draw another Rebecca? That's what I think. What's what we're hoping for is Rebecca off of that draw. This is what we like to see because that's not Gecko. <laughs> he to seven. Instantly take that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, give me that card. Give me that card, Brev. Give me that card too. <laughs> yeah, this is um. Oh, we, oh, we are gonna counter out of that. Um, I think bros. that's game. Rage is going to take this. Uh, so what's going to happen is I think that Rage is going to attack for, or we're going to play the the mom, bring back the little Ichiji, play the little yeah. Ichiji, and we sh that should be the numbers we need. Unless we find another little Ichiji off of this, and no, Ooh, find boy. look at this. We might. I think we have the numbers. Look at this. We'll have to figure it out. Having two to cards in hand, two seven eight. going okay, seven. Okay. Do you have no oh, way to bounce? Is that oh that gets us out? Oh no. Did you have no way to bounce? No, he can't bounce the oh, he can't okay. bounce the sabo. But, uh, yeah, that's my bad. My bad on his effect. You're good. Uh, we got queen in hand. Hmm. But with no hand, this is so much better than it could be. With uh, without any hand, he can don up what's on board, mm -hmm. hmm, but he can't necessarily. I think we play the queen. Yeah. I think we just play queen. Stock up on counters. And Stock up can't... on counter. You're you're at three life. Yeah, and then you still have you just you just still have the the Ichiji play next turn. Your your opponent is top decking. Hmm. All right, we, we pitched a card off of the the queen, drew one more card. This is interesting. Great. This is a, this is what is the top deck? Nah, how uh, the top deck would be great eruption to Houndblaze. 
and leader slang. <laughs> that would be the top deck. That would be the top deck to end all top decks. All right. Uh, attack minus. I think we just block. Uh, I mean, you're banking on that one card being good or not good. He still hasn't used his uh, leader ability, but we have to see what happens here. Because this this might just be a, mm -hmm. let me get this out of the way. But that being said, if you can, what is that? Oh, it's brand new. I oh, mean, what did we see? The Sea of Virgo. Oh, he was like, you got too many awards. A Virgo, 2K, and uh, a Rebecca. Yeah. Now we have perfect hand. We still have Sakazuki effect. I mean, but dropping a 2K to hopefully get this. This, right, is, so this is interesting. No, it's so tight. Um, so we know the hand is still. We just take, right? Yeah, we know that no. we know exactly what the hand still is because we haven't pitched the, the 2K. A singular 2K, and he's got to worry about uh, the Sobster. <laughs> Yep. Now I will say right here, uh, with what mm -hmm. we have, if he if he attacks again, I'm probably uh, you don't want to throw the queen in, but the worst thing possible happens right now is he pulls up some uh, some removal. With four dawn left, what could you possibly draw at this point? Well, any any removal at this point will remove. Uh, we'll remove, remove the queen. queen. You're right. But I mean, and then you do have to essentially, I mean, I don't, I think it would be bold for him to try to go for game here. He might realize there's no other option, but like keeping the Sabo back doesn't no, I don't think, anything, I, but yeah. it's, this is, this is a very rough play. You, if you, if you don't get the queen off the field right now, then your, your opponent has two different attacks and I'm not going to hold you. If I had the queen or if I had a way to remove the queen, it just would have already been played. Packing there's, seven. So there's no way. Left, so it's did we really top deck a hound blaze uh draw a card off of the stage what's the last card what's what is that card oh, i wish i knew he has to know he has to know right now that there's no reason oh yeah, and he takes it yeah there we go because oh, <laughs> it's like it's like at this point you even shotgunning to what is that he has four dawn left so going up to 10 the, the hand is too big at that point, and there's the blocker. If it, if you swing too yeah. high, then he can always block. But if you swing high, he can just shotgun everything on his leader. So yeah. that was just it. He he, mm -hmm. he took that out, and uh, that was that was really good for what we saw. That was um, so good. I love that. That was a that was a good match to watch. It was a little clingy. That was a little clingy. Like Raju definitely looked like they were in a sticky zone for a while, but mm -hmm. they hung in there. They pulled it out. The 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 king. Well, it's not a king. The judge play was magnificent, and even though it was kind of like half neutralized, it really made the momentum swing that was needed. I think Sakazuki was just, they both played very, very well. That was so and tight. Right I can't even... the wire, it was awesome. That was, that was so cool to see. I, I can't even, maybe because I don't play Sakazuki, maybe there was maybe a turn Sakazuki could have either been more aggressive, done better numbers. I just, I think right, I think that was just Reiju's game the whole time. Mm -hmm. Or, or, or Reiju was. Oh. All right, yeah, oh, so. man, that was a long game. So I think I hopefully the, sh the break this time is shorter. We didn't get the story of Katakuri continuing, but we got to see Rajo win. So odds a win for me in my book. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we don't hate it. We don't hate it. We don't hate it. We don't hate it. So that was the end of round eight. Again, 10 rounds, two more to go. If I'm counting right, uh, we're going into round nine. We're going to cut to break. See you guys then. All right, next installment. We are going into round nine of the eSports Stadium. One piece, well, Arlington, one piece card game offline regional host by play TCG. And uh, we are now back for the for the ninth round, the installment of the Katakuri Saga, the, the Katakuri, uh, Katakuri Wars. We are currently about to see Katakuri versus Moria and yet another matchup of Katakuri versus the world i'm gonna appreciate that by now all these katakuri mains have the alt art they're showing a lot of respect but um <laughs> we are going to see if katakuri can finally break the chains they only have they only have two more chances today to break <laughs> the chains on stream 
I mean, you say it's round nine of the tournament. In my heart, it's round seven of this journey we're going on. <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's about to be it's about to be wild. So, it's it's it's. You said the uh, the glare the glare feels bad. Oh, that's a local. That's a local. Um, I'm not sure if that's anything we can adjust right now. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of how it is. But um, realistically, once again, we've got two five life leaders. Uh, they are going to be crashing into each other. And we've already seen this matchup once before. We've kind of already explained how the base of this works. You have two decks that both can be very aggressive with their swings, uh, both have strong end games. And now we're just about to see, again, this matchup work out. We're starting off turn wolf, turn two. Well, turn one with Gecko had nothing. Uh, mm-hmm. We would like to see a Syndra, but um, we're going into turn one with uh with katakuri seeing the immediate putting into the paris barrel love these max ready decks really feels oh, like they, 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 they look so pretty that's the one thing that i love about uh one piece and on top of most bandai games at this point they really they really know how to to, to fill out a set not with just not not by doing with it with super rare cards but giving you the incentive with very pretty altars being able giving you the chance to, to uh just make your deck as pretty as possible but while also giving a uh, people a a cheaper option for everything and going mm-hmm. to play the 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 oh my god the perona the four drop perona on uh on turn uh two here and then being able to take a card out of katakuri's hand we are we did end up pitching a uh a 10 drop big mom Whew. um this is i mean it's still it's so early you know you gotta you gotta it's weird because you have a bunch of uh, a bunch of time before you can play that looking mm-hmm. at his hand i see perona um i see i think there's a, another big mom over in the corner of his hand he's mm-hmm. dropping a uh he's dropping a seven cost big mom and he's playing the Paris Barrow. so yes i do think we have a follow-up big mom for later which is why it wasn't a big issue if yeah. i'm not mistaken I don't and, think we uh, there's a world where we get to play two. Every Katakuri has not like we've barely reached the point of getting to ten uh ten dawn and making big Mo- ten drop big mom like irrelevant play. We yes. play brand new. Uh, we actually get a hit off brand new. I think it's only one hit. Yeah, it's the only viable option. But uh, we're going. I imagine we just go in again with the Gecko Moria, right? The two dawn under attack. Very much so. Bring back a uh, hogback maybe. Yeah, definitely. I think that's just straight up the play. It's gonna bring be bring back the hog back, allow hog back to bring back a drop Moria, and then we're just set up for the rest of the game. Oh, Perona going in. Thank you. Take the first life we're taking as uh, Katakuri. I think we took a we just picked up a seven drop mom, so we're gonna be able to play seven mom on seven. What are we gonna do? Okay, we are going to discard two cards, choosing to discard an Ice Age, considering we, our hand is very weak. Um, we have Absalom, uh, or maybe well, only four cards in hand, so Perona's not the best. Uh, what's happening here? Just gonna oh, we're gonna bottom deck two cards for the for the Hog Bag, picking up a Perona two K, and we're actually gonna take that life. Um, both both hands seem pretty counter weak, so I guess this makes sense. I think we're gonna go. Uh, imagine we just go five five twice and then play seven drop mom on curve. Or am I missing a dawn here? Uh, one two. Oh, I'm missing a dawn. Um, I'm, I'm a I'm a step behind. That was five dawn into so this is six dawn. My my my, 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 second. Mm-hmm, my mistake. All right, so I mean that just means we Katakuri attack at least for one done under look at start looking at some life mm-hmm. two life no triggers from katakuri is a little feels bad but it happens that's part of the game i mean even when you have two thirds of your deck as uh triggers you can it every time oh going into perona okay 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 keeping trying to keep the board clean we know perona's in hand so we do have the 2k we know we have the 2k for this but that's not exactly bad if he drops the perona in hand for a perona and on uh on field we then have the ability to attack into it for seven and know it's gone. Oh, no, and uh, all right, a seven into look at our own life. Okay, and that's good. That top, that's probably a good trigger. Uh, and then, so all right, cleared the body. And then for four, Kikunojo. Oh no, Sanjo. Oh. All right, Sanjo. Oh man, where are my shades? 
Cheek That's damage. That's such a yeah. bright card. I think even if he, uh, I can't tell. I see a Satori in there. Even if he has Cuke and Ojo, I just, I, I, I am forever scarred from the last opponent playing Cuke and Ojo into a, uh, <laughs> into a not, not live effect for it to get popped. That was. Yeah, just but we tough. are live. We will be live now, though, right? Yeah. Three live. So a Cuke and Ojo would have been probably the perfect play there in terms of optimal. What he was doing. Yeah, but I don't think we have it. So. Yeah, that would definitely be preferable because this Sanji, if it needs to get popped, is getting popped. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, what is our hand? Our hand is it's Ice Age, Hogback, Great Eruption. I think it's two Great Eruptions, an Eight Drop Moria, Hogback, and then one more card. I can't tell what that one card is. All right, so that's where we're going off. Oh, let's see, let's see. All right, where are we going? Where did we go with this attack? All right, we're gonna pitch a card. We're gonna great eruption. It's the play. You said uh, earlier, I'm trying to see his drop, because I think there's an Absalom in there. I haven't seen the Absalom. Oh, actually. yeah, you're actually right. I'm looking through there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So we're dawning up on uh, on brand new and getting the attack in. Oh. Do we counter this? No way. And this is going for life, right? Huh. Is there not a good enough target yet? I because he kept it there and then he's uh he's actually blocking it. That's interesting. Yep. But uh, I mean then again, past turn, Kuzan past turn, okay. Yeah, we don't have a uh, huge here. Let's see. Oh, we just drew into an on Onami. So now the question becomes, where do we push our attacks? I think we have to push our attacks into life and then play seven drop Big Mom because this is the only turn you're going to be able to play that card. Otherwise, for the rest of the game, it's going to be kind of dead um, because on your 10 down turn, you're just going to want to play Big Mom. So I think you have to go pull, pull, attack five with uh, Paro Sparrow. Um, probably mm. at life, just to just pressure hand size. You already know their hand's been kind of kind of not the best. I mean, what is brand new? Uh, brand new's a three k. You don't want to necessarily allot the dawn to pudding. In yeah, order to stop that's the brand the problem, new. But right. even so, we got a um, card. Now we yeah. tag seven life. Yeah, tag seven life. Right, yeah, we're getting we're to debating. a skin. We're getting to a scary point because we're getting to we're getting to the point where uh, where uh, you don't want him to enter gecko turns with four life. Yeah, Even if you want to, we should have. We should. I think we should have attacked uh, life. Uh, all right, big mom, and they choose to trash. See, I feel like if we went for if we went for uh, face uh, with all these attacks, I think we would have pressured uh, getting a heal out. From our opponent, which is really important, like being get, going up to three for the following turns would be huge. Uh, it's true, but I, I do feel like with with Kuzan out, and uh, I do personally feel like this was kind of a darned if you do, darned if you don't kind of mm -hmm. turn. Like you attack the life, and yes, you put him in a worse position, but his field is still there to potentially close you. It's like you're not guaranteed your triggers, and then mm -hmm. otherwise, you know you're on the opposite end you go for his board and he might have a little too much life going to some very crucial turns i i think this is a sticky situation for the category regardless and he snap took it there is yeah. not a lot going on in the ways of triggers yeah this uh we're we gonna see a luchi i think that's exactly what we're gonna see happen uh no moria yeah no moria into luchi's probably or an absalom maybe all right is absalom uh, getting rid of the big mom. Uh, shame. Uh, For yeah. the shame. No, it's just no. the momentum swing is absolutely disgusting. Like, imagine 
imagine <laughs> putting your boss card on the board while expanding your board by two while getting rid of their best card. That's just mm-hmm. that's so much. Absolutely. And we're going to put two back. Uh, Big Mom will be KO'd. And I think, oh, what does Cat Creek do? Uh, is, this, is this, this is probably the only turn you could potentially play 10 Drop Mom. So do you just do it? I mean, the worst part is you probably have to send two shots over to, um, you have to attack Kuzon first. There's no way you can, like, you have to clear the way for your big mom. And mm-hmm. obviously, the opponent is going to stop it. And the moment he swings five neutral, you know it's in hand. If you have the 1K, you drop the 1K. I think you drop the 1K too as well. Like, there's, there's, not, the... any, there's mm-hmm. not anything to think about here, in my opinion. If you do not drop the 1K, he will play big mom, and you will likely not be able to remove it next turn. If you drop the 1K, you at least have a chance. And I think that's a great eruption in hand, too. So, yes, if you drop the 1K, you at least have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. And now he still has to make the same play. He's committed to it, but you have no choice. Like, or you you just, like, you know it's just, it very well could not survive. And in his hand, in his hand, there's a great eruption. He's already got the Kuzon down. Mm-hmm. Great and eruption, he Kuzon, so that's six in total, right? Because Kuzan's minus he, four. Kuzan's minus four. The the good part though is as long as he can um there is a world where you great eruption, as long as he he could potentially, since he's at four, he could override his board. He had to drop this injury, so that's the thing. Oh no, Absalom's there, and no, I didn't see the Absalom in his uh, trash. Never mind. We he take it all another, back. He needs a he needs a way to get uh he needs a way to get two more reduction. Uh, this is Big Mom ten, right? So we have. I think is see. that a a drop Moria in hand? No. No. So we have Great Eruption and uh, Kuzon minusing six down to four. Yes, yeah, so we need a little more. We'll see. We'll see. This is off the top. What is that? Uh, it's Lucci. Uh, not, not good not enough. The, not the reduction we've been looking for. And he's got to be careful because if that Kuzon swings, that Kuzon is not making it back. Is this the is this the game? Is this the game that that Katakuri breaks the curse? Um, I would say it's pretty even. Like a, a wrong decision from either player can, or not not to say wrong, but an unoptimal decision from either player can just botch the whole thing right now. Um, my name it might be the draw more than anything because uh, R and Jesus just said no reduction like a like anything right there would have worked a suru mm-hmm. um a helmepo sakazuki would have gotten it no i'm kidding um legit <laughs> <laughs> sakazuki would be at one life right now <laughs> True. or zero but True. all right Ooh, okay Here, okay here's the six into where are we going with this life all right we'll didn't really so, no indication of where it's going he has already committed to not destroying this big mom. That is incredibly scary. Mm-hmm. Going so. to play Perona. Mm-hmm. That's the reduction we needed. I believe that's the reduction we needed. So now that's over. I, I think. Right. And I, I believe he still has the uh, the Absalom in yep. hand. Yeah. Wait. Did he? Did he drop no, he, the Absalom? He, he has. He has Lucci in hand. Okay. 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 Oh yeah. Big mom's gone. So that top deck was nuts like if, if not perfect well didn't he uh didn't he just top deck like what did he top deck was it the luchi or was it i, just think, it was the, card? I think it was the luchi yeah okay he top decked the luchi off of the great eruption I'm gonna get up a I'm gonna pick up a pudding just for some counter power yeah i think uh it could have been really any since he had the absalom in hand could it not have been any card uh because he could have just dropped any card i believe for uh for moria and still gotten the absalom because it's still two uh, but the the Lucci is going to rob the entire board. But get yeah. it? The Lucci is about to rob <laughs> the entire board. But a tiss. You're great. You're great. <laughs> no, I think I think the sequence had to be this because the Perona had to uh, minus cost because that was the extra cost reduction. You needed the removal in in hand and top decking the Lucci was was the yeah, out that we needed. Yeah, and it's it really is gonna make sure that he can't mount any sort of offense. But um, this one's a rough one because now we just see him mm-hmm. clearing everything. Yeah, 
And right. um, play Lucci. Yeah, I'm not saying this is the end, but um, we see a tin a tin cost big mom in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, he definitely has a play to follow up next turn, but he's probably also dying next turn. I think that's a cat. Is that a category? It's a category seven drop big mom, mom and two. it's both big moms and yeah, uh, he's, category. he's got the entire upper echelon of the Charlotte Pirates in his hand and it's, mm-hmm. it's about to. What what, oh, what is this? Is Amino? Oh, we're gonna pitch. Oh, we're gonna pitch. Woo! Oh, is that the right one? Do you want to be sitting on ten drop mom in hand? Is that the correct one? And both will be popped. Please, bottom deck two cards. And past turn three cards. My bad. I mean, so hey, it's your boy calling for <laughs> kind of knocking on the pearly white gates of orange. Jesus, uh, we attack, attack who's on. You have to attack who's on. Hopefully, it goes all right. 10 drop mom. <laughs> all right. Can do we have we? I think we just have enough attacks on Gecko side. I think it's just unless we have something really. I was like, nah, bro, believe double beige, <laughs> double beige. I mean, it's possible. Like, Kakata Curry can look at their own life. They probably set up the life at the bottom. I don't think they did that this game, but I mean, actually, to be honest, like, if he if what swing with one, he has only one card in hand. That's not good. Swing with one, beige, swing with two, beige, mm-hmm. swing with three. He would actually be triple Vijay or Asanji or something. Like, this is not mm-hmm. this is not it. And the Sanji might not even get there. We're gonna see. Oh, is it a trigger? Oh, bro. No way. No mm-hmm. shot though. Oh, oh he took the Para Sparrow. Which doesn't is, help is at nothing. all. There's nothing. Tag seven. Take it. Is it another trigger? I can't see it. It's a biggie. Oh no, it's a it's a, a Onami. Ah, uh, which ju- just as good. All right, and then Kikunaja, and that's game. Oh my God, the curse is right. not broken. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop laughing. I'm so sorry. So oh, oh and seven, mm-hmm. oh and seven on stream and eight rounds. That is absolutely insane sorry oh. is it is it is it no it's we're definitely around nine right yeah it's oh and eight or it's oh and seven it's, it's oh and seven and nine rounds yeah yeah because we yeah. had two rounds without a without a yeah, so, oh uh <laughs> oh and seven <laughs> oh that's that's it's good but is it the best i don't know i don't, I don't, know. I don't know if that's uh, the meta we want play. but that's the meta we're living <laughs> play katakuri if you want to make top cut but you don't want to go xo i don't know it's kind of crazy because a lot of a lot of the previous like events were just rolling categories were getting to these these top slots uh they were they were going undefeated they were going x1 but Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's every time a category has made it to the to the the top the apex it is uh it has been been not shot to the ground oh that's so unfortunate did you have any thoughts? Ah, it's not that unfortunate. I mean, it's unfortunate for the players. I think mm-hmm. for the color, <laughs> I'm not really bothered. But like it's for the okay. players themselves, the players themselves, it, it it always stings to be this late in the game, undefeated, and then to take the L. Like, yes, they're probably over to top cut if they can if they can uh, clinch this last round. Mm-hmm. But you just never want to get this far only to lose. Now it's better to lose this late than to lose early. But it's still it's still good. Yeah. So, did you have any thoughts for this match? Uh no, I think I think Katakuri just couldn't just it's just one of those games. Moria had the uh the out every time and Katakuri never got a turn to like really use anything. I mean, and that's kind of like the frustrating part of this game sometimes is just like you you have these big drops and they they just don't get to do anything. Like not a single big mom was able to attack that game. We played seven, we played ten, both got removed, we played a third ten, but didn't end up mattering. Um yeah, it's just I think I think it came I think that one turn where uh, we were attacking into a character probably might have been better off attacking into life and then giving our opponent to say to say hey um, I'm playing seven drop mom you need you probably should let me heal and that could have changed a lot right that would give that might have made the difference it might have not I don't know 
but uh, Moria piece is looking pretty crazy in this game. Yeah, game but that's, I think that Lucci top deck, if if we really sit down and map it out, that Lucci top deck was insane. Like that won him the game. It definitely was insane, but if he kept the Perona on board, because he would have been able to dawn up the Perona. Mm. I mean, you want to be able to, you needed the Lucci in hand to uh to KO the 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 big mom, the ten. Well, that, that's well, well the Lucci in hand kills uh it uh, it KOs the it KOs the big mom, mm -hmm. but and, and it KOs the uh, Perona, which stops two swings. But like he had an Absalom that he discarded for um. The problem was so, so the right. problem was he needed. He could, he did ice he did Kuzan into Great Eruption, which is only six, right? So you needed a way to get one, two more reduction, and correct. you couldn't do it off of your leader. You could like you couldn't just Absalom with your leader effect, right? You needed. Oh cap. wait, but are you saying you had Absalom? Did he have Absalom in hand? He, he discarded the Absalom when he oh. was going to get the Prona. So it's like he was going to destroy Big Mom either way. But oh, Luffy okay. being the top deck off of Great Eruption allowed him to destroy both. And I think that was the crucial part because there was a play where he dons up the Perona and dons up his leader into literally Just like a card in hand. Mm -hmm. So like that Lucci, I think that Lucci was actually the goaded top deck oh. because it allowed him to get rid of the Perona. Yeah, fair enough. But that was um that was wild. Or sorry, I said I keep saying Perona, but I do mean pudding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so we uh was the end of round nine. So we got one more round for the night. Um, we'll be going into uh, the only. It should be these should be the final undefeateds. So we'll get to see who the champion of Swiss is next round. Um, so catch you then. Maybe it's another category that would be hilarious. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I would laugh. I would love to see just at this point. Just send it if it's category. Just just end it on the day. I think, <laughs> eight and zero oh, or zero oh and eight would be great. I think that that would be a meme. Zero oh and eight and ten rounds would be a meme. So. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately I, I think i think if table one is katakuri we we just have to see it's a that. katakuri mirror oh we're gonna catch up on losses oh my god are you serious no i don't know I don't oh know. my I'm gosh it up. I, oh it up. my gosh that'd be funny though <laughs> right, we gotta see guys we're gonna go on break and we're we're gonna see we're gonna see how this legacy the story ends and we will move from there fade us out brock Welcome back, One Piece players, to the uh, Play TCG uh, online offline regional for the One Piece TCG card game. Uh, going into our final round, these are for the final two uh, of ten long rounds, seven categories. Um, I, I don't have the exact decks for you right now. I know one is a Sakazuki. I think one. We're waiting on to hear what the last one is, but we're getting into round ten. We're gonna see who is the king of Swiss. And, but that just because it's the final round, just because it's King of Swiss, does not mean where the fun ends. Because tomorrow we will be going into a, we'll be we will be going into a top thirty-two for uh, One Piece today tomorrow, and we'll get to see who is the true, true tournament uh, winner after that. So I'm Reese the Squirrel, joined by my co-host Universe, Our, Universe, Universe X. X. and uh, we actually we actually got a little bit of an update. It's not Sakazuki. But it is Ooh. Moria versus Reiju. So we got two Ooh. OPO6. It's very okay. nice to see in the most dedicated tournament so far that we have had since Nationals. We are coming yes. down to two OPO6 leaders. So it is Reiju versus Moria. This should be a good thing. Um, I will say it's going to be a little odd. Moria doesn't necessarily employ Rebecca. It's more of a spicy tech than not. So they don't have exactly the same blocking power that... Um, that a black Sakazuki decks that black blue Sakazuki would normally have. Uh, they still employ Borsalinos, uh, but those can be bounced back. And we are now kind of at a point where we have to see which is more. It is up to Raju to survive until they get to the uh, the faithful judge turn, and then attempt to hit the blowout on that. And then another thing that's uh, crazy is that while Moria, like. When it comes to looking at this, the one thing that uh, Sakazuki had over Moria or over Eiju in that matchup was that it had both Luchi and uh, Amu, uh, Amuno. Amuno. So with yeah. both of those, yeah, you and had Amboys. two different ways. You can bottom deck. It's the most devastating. You can part. bottom deck, so it, yeah, it can't come back. And on top of that, they have a, they have multiple cards, two different cards in the deck that can two for one once the yep. correct conditions are met. When it comes to Moria, they're doing a lot of one for one with Absalom or Luchis. 
And so without that, you might have more boards that get out of control on Reiju's part. And when Reiju does get to judge, if Reiju gets to judge, that board will not be broken as easily as it was a versus Sakazuki. So we definitely are in for a cool matchup. It's great to see that a Reiju got all the way to undefeated. Um, we knew Moria was going to do it at some point. So it is what it is. <laughs> and um, we are about to go over to the table setup, I believe, soon enough. I think they're sitting down. They're getting set up. But um, your thoughts on this matchup, because you are a Reiju main. Uh, I think, I think, I think, yeah, because straight, it, I think it, it ends up being very similar to the Sakizuchi matchup. Just the biggest difference is the, the two things is the five life makes it harder to go for game. Obviously, you got to get through one more check. However, the the thing that goes in your favor versus Sakazuki is Sakazuki can bottom deck a lot of your key pieces and it makes it very hard to set up your trash if you're not going through Derma 66s or the stage uh, quickly enough or early enough. So that's very possible. However, um, it just comes down to draw sometimes with uh, um, of Reiju. If you don't see stage, if you don't see Derma 66s gunning your way, you don't go wide enough. Um, you might just lose out. However, I would also say Gecko, I think Gecko has a harder time getting the cost reduction just right. Sakazuki is very consistent, has way more draw power, has way more Navy searching ability. And that's where usually where you get a lot of your cost reduction through Great Eruption and Ice Ages. So they get to see those more. And so it's very possible that he could have the removal in hand, but just doesn't have a way to get the cost reduction correct. And even then... It's not that it's, it's it's like just think about any time we're gonna sit here with a luchi on board and he's one cost off remember sakazuki would have been able to deal with it and the other thing that's kind of crazy for me here is um of course we've seen we're just the final round the undefeateds have likely been undefeated well they're undefeated all day they, it's not like yeah. now they've they've both been on camera though so we've had some experience with how both of these players do play and one of the things we were talking about is uh the successful judge turns and whatnot we saw jackie cling onto four life for the entirety of the game to then have the breathing room to set up these consecutive pushes with uh tgs and and laughter judges so if we've seen anything it's mm -hmm. that jackie is adept yeah. at managing his life and he knows when to keep his hands up in order to avoid getting blown out at a crucial moment where he's right on the cusp of stabilization. And uh, we've also seen Matthew play. And I think this is uh, really cool. If we could get the life uh, on Jackie M's part uh, fixed to start at four, because uh, he is a dual color leader. Uh, but that is, uh, that is pretty much where we are at right now. I am very excited to, thank you. I'm very excited to see how this plays out because I think that Jackie has shown great promise and how he is able to control the flow of the game and, stick defensively where it matters oh okay so we're going second as reju go gecko morio going first no one draw no first turn play uh does have stage with uh reju so really good start we're gonna pit oh and we got one of the really good pitches mm. um just getting mm. that non-counter out of the hand but <laughs> pick, immediately picking back up it was our only option i believe it was a miss double finger and a queen that we just sent to the bottom there do we have one more dawn play no we're just gonna pass all right we're gonna go gecko moria Two Dawn, discard a pudding or oh, no. got Perona. No, it's and we're gonna give up a card. We're gonna give up the card that uh it's gonna matter. And then we're gonna 2k out, keeping our life total pretty high. We've seen we've seen Jackie do this uh the, the previous time we followed him, just emphasizing protection of his life when he can, when it's just these little numbers. Are you gonna discard the big Raju off of the stage? Looks like we're gonna search the mom out. Oh no, drama 66. And the cool thing about this is just like Gecko Moria is incentivized to uh, protect itself because it needs to build up its uh, trash, just like that, Reiju is a deck that is very much so able to just combo, sorry, counter out of a lot of things, uh, drop mm -hmm. things into the trash to protect itself, knowing that as long as it has its little pieces, it's going to be able to get back into its bigger pieces. This is just yep. a very, very, very good strategy. Uh, keeps the life healthy keeps the uh, trash full and at the end of the day oof, nice, yeah, nice yeah nice. our hands a little awkward so we are going to just end up attacking for eight and then uh moria does take it yeah and um it's just very really, really good because this especially with the stage in hand to turn like your top decks into other things 
I think like Jackie understands perfectly that as long as he makes it to the judge push, he will likely overwhelm Moria mm-hmm. by that time of the game. As long as he's hitting his pokes consistently, he will likely overwhelm at the judge. So what's a hand when you're about to play one card and build everything up? Yep. That is, yep. it's just very, he he understands how the matchup works and it shows why he is undefeated with Reiji. Yep. This is... And this will be a massive win. For him to go undefeated in Swiss with Reiji will be a massive win for all the Reiji stands. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, we are seeing an awkward start from the Reiji. That being said, like not being able to find the little Reiji, not being able to... Uh, play, but just essentially play that Raju to draw three on time is going to be bad. We do have ETG live this turn, which is good. So we're going to pitch stage off first stage, search top three. Um, I wonder what we take. I didn't quite see what we searched. Uh, looks like, uh, all right, just we're actually just peeping the hand again. So what are we going to take off? We got the mom, we got the German 66, and we got the little, little Niji. I think we're gonna take the mom. Yep, just start Dude, getting cards to our hand, getting counter power because we're kind of low on it. How many cards does Moria have in hand? That's a question we have too. We do have that pudding. All right, gonna attack. We're gonna uh, we're gonna use four. Use the little Ichiji to play Ichiji minus two. I wonder if we're gonna minus two the Borsalino or the Perona. Hmm. What would you do? Do you want to try to make the blocks worse for him or actually allow yourself to attack into a, a blocker? I think with his character. This early in the game, it's kind of like I so this is this is where I, I have to be honest with myself. I think I would have hit it on Borsalino because mm-hmm. realistically, one dropping two ish cards out of hand um to save the uh the uh the uh perona would have been a little wild. But at the mm-hmm. same time, the other part for me is putting Prona back in the uh, back in the uh, trash potentially sets up for another Prona play, and that's not something that uh, I am always too keen on. Mm-hmm. But the other the last part is I want to make it difficult. If he blocks with Borsalino, I want him to just pretty much lose Borsalino. But I think that the two K differential is enough for me to not want to minus on the Prona. But he made the choice to put on the Prona, and again, like there could be a skill issue on my part. But that's just personally what I would have done. I want I want both choices to be hard. I don't want you to be able to decide to block with uh, Borsalino and then just drop a two K, and then me to be out on that. Yeah. No, I agree. It's it's, it's interesting. We we obviously wish see which which uh, which uh, out he went for, and I, I kind of agree. With it. He kind of ended up in his favor being able to take a card out of out of hand and then well additionally also uh getting the character off board is pretty important um we are going to pitch get the three get the perona back like you said because we're gonna lose a card we're gonna lose the big niji and we're gonna take this life oh this is oh we oh but it is the little reiju that's 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 gonna be key yeah and then borsalino going in for eight I mean, it's it's just simple. Look at him; he's he's in attack mode. Uh, when Borsalino is in his uh, in his uh, right. altar form, you go in with it. That's that true. All right. So, what do we? How do we? I mean, we are going to be able to draw a lot this turn, thankfully. Um, I'm um, not sure if I agree with the the discards. We could have discarded the the big Raju, but maybe we have something else planned instead of the two uh, K. Instead that of is... the little, instead of the little a, uh, e, a G. Um, so I, I, I guess my question is, if he is planning to build up to one of those like major push turns, does he just hard cast the Raju? Does he want to use the small Raju and minus on uh, on Don this turn, or does he just well, want to simply cast it? I don't know. I mean, we don't have access to Judge yet. We could try to dig for it. I think this attack's going into the Borsalino. Oh yeah. no, it's going to. It looks like life, double two K. Or is that, or is that, uh, I know one was a Tashiga, I didn't quite catch what the other card was. True. Is that double uh, Raju? I can't tell. It's, uh, it's little Raju, big Raju. It's double big Raju, yeah. Okay. That's, so, that's what I was asking. So it's like with this, he's going oh, to be able to yeah. draw twice and then still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Raju. we're, we're going We're off. looking good, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now we can actually play, we can either, we can play the little Raju. And then draw 
three more cards. And we're yeah, going to pick up uh... Raju one more time. Still Sorry. not finding Judge. I mean, but we're speeding towards it. Pop that. Like, dude is going <laughs> off. True. So do we... Oh, no. We're going to attack seven. Seven to Borsalino one more time. Just three card Tear. hand. That yeah, is... Tear out this hand. And we do have the 2K, though. It is... Yeah. That feels bad, but... It, it, like like you said, we if we see Judge soon, like this is gonna be so clean. And as a Ragey player, too. Hmm? as a Ragey player, do you do you max out on four? Max out one? on huh? Four max judge. On four Judge? No, no. I think you only play two. I think them. The, I think it's very, it's very fun. set in stone that everyone's like on two Judges. Um, I think the only the only place where cards move around is whether you're running the, the Yonjis or not. If you're running Queens, if, what kind of techie 2Ks do you feel like running? Because the only 2K in archetype for the deck that people actually run is the Mom. We do counter out. Um, we're going to attack one more time. Oh, it's just, we're just playing. What are we playing? Is it? Oof. We're on 9 Dawn, right? So is it just going to be Gecko Moria coming down? Uh, that would be at this stage of the game. Gecko Mori would be like, I'm not okay. I'm not going to count Jackie out because Jackie has been playing out of his mind so far from what we've seen on stream. But um, I think I think a Gecko Moria with his board setup could be particularly backbreaking. He's got two cards in hand, mm -hmm. two life. Um, Gecko Mori would be scary. Yeah, I mean I agree. We're really debating this. Oh, and we're going to give up the little Raju. That's not great. Uh, Ice Age, H -E yeah, Oh, We're going for a removal turn, which is going to be the uh, Gecko Moria. Oh, no. Who saw this coming? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. It's the best card in the game. All right. Absalom into... Uh, Cedra. Her name. No, oh, yep. Sendra. Sendra? I think it's Sendra. It's the on play, uh, mill the top five cards of your deck. Yeah, I don't think he hit particularly well. I'm trying to see because I see Sabo. You see Sabo, but not much after that. Sabo would get another Sindri. Yep. I, I don't think we got too much going, and we got two life. We draw a card for turn. What did we draw? Oh, is that two Sabos? I think it was two Sabos because he put one back that was the altar, and I think that's a monger right under it. All right, did we see Judge or not? That's. Oh, we we have a little Raju. No, I'm scared. Maybe. I think we 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 have. I think we yeah we want to draw a little bit first. I think maybe we should have staged actually. You might be right on that. Uh, look at top three. And where where's where did his mm -hmm. hand go? Oh, this mm -hmm. is his hand. We drew the cards. We're not searching. I'm I'm. Mm. All right, so no judge I'm... still. We're gonna pitch the HGs. Look at top three. We saw big, big blue. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I don't think this is tough. I think this might just be cooked. Like he's he's gonna be able to play, but like, mm -hmm. look at this board. Yeah, there are there are five valid attacks, and he is in no danger of dying. Mm -hmm. He has at least two turns before he's even close to it. Like, yes, he has two attacks coming in, but there is one card in hand. Uh, if these attacks go neutral, like, ah, this is a very sticky place to be in. Mm -hmm. We are going to be able to potentially draw two more cards, though, with this uh, this extra little Raju. Mm -hmm. Or do we have to go aggressive? That's, that's, a, that's a really important question. Yeah, not seeing Judge. We really needed to see Judge. And it's going through all these cards and not finding it bites. Man's out here uh, hitting geckos on curve, but no judge. We, no judge, we bro. have another Raju. Uh, I think we do. We, I think we've seen three Raju. I, I'm questioning if we have Raju and Grave or not. Trash. All right, we're going into Perono. Trying to get. It. I mean, it's one card in hand. There's not much we can do to defend it. I mean, if we do, we do, but it's gone. Uh, yeah, no, I think really, realistically, the part that scares me the most about this is, like, when it comes to the copies, you're like, it's hard set in stone, too. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, this deck has more draw and search than the average One Piece deck, but I can't, if that's my master stroke, 
it's very hard for me to justify not playing like maybe three of it because like this game would be a completely different ballpark had he just seen one judge. Yeah. Um, and especially, you know, like this is, this is scaring me. Are we going into, we're going to go into, into big H -H -G minus the Borsalino. Do we attack into Borsalino? Just try to get rid of everything we can. Okay. Uh, that's very good. That's very and good. And Sindri. All, All right. right. Not, not bad. Looking at a two card hand. I mean, not completely out of this. We still, yeah, we still get a chance for uh, for Judge to work his magic next turn. Um, mm -hmm. We get a what? We get we get probably both these life to hand, but they're ah, oh, he's got to defend. This is the worst part. The mm -hmm. he he's been so good at poking while keeping his life up, but because of his awkward hand start, he was not able to do either. And so yeah. now he's arriving at that Judge turn with very low life, while his opponent is not in any danger of dying in like the next two-ish turns mm -hmm. i mean he has he has a low hand if we do the etg needs to go and i'm sure gecko mori will take care of that um absolutely but the thing is like much like sakazuki this is at this point the, the removal in this deck is all combo based and unless there is a another gecko moria in hand we are probably just seeing the uh actually even with gecko moria yeah like we this is just not a good look for um mm -hmm. It's EG actually surviving. It's probably going to survive unless he just has no plays in hand, starts dawning up Gecko Moria. Yeah. yeah. But it could, could be possible that there's no plays in hand, though. That's it not is out of the true. question. But just because uh just because Gecko Moria is out of cards in hand does not mean Gecko Moria is out of options. Like we, got... so we give up each oh. for no dawn commitment. That's unfortunate. But so he doesn't I mean, have... that means our life is one one little bit safer. Mm -hmm. Going to go seven into Reiju. We're gonna let that go. I mean, of course, if your plan is to uh, judge next turn, like realistically, you have the ability to neutral poke with uh, mm -hmm. with Reiju and then just immediately try to set up your turn. All right, we're going to attack. He oh, said, "Hurts." Judge, <laughs> please judge. And then there's Kuzan. Okay. Oh, he's setting up. He's setting up. He said, play your turn. I will survive, neutralize your board, and probably destroy you on the backswing. But we are at perfect judge energy. We got a 2K in hand. Um, I'm trying to see his hand. So, Judge? Uh, did we? If we see Judge, we're so good, though. It's still such the important... Like, I think we still are, are alive with, if we see Judge. Yeah, um, so at least here, we get a chance to swing on Absalom. Mm -hmm. um, and after swinging on Absalom, we also get a chance to poke neutral at life and see if he takes it. Um, mm -hmm. If, I mean, I guess, ooh. We're gonna go Ichiji. Yeah. Bring him back, draw a card. How do you feel about stage not being used here first? Um, well, I think we you always wanna save stage as one of like your last things, just because- After all your- Yeah, because you wanna be able, like you wanna be able to pitch something bad, right? Is one of the it's one of the key things is you want to you want to be able to uh, toss out discard a card that you mm. don't want. Um. Oh, oh, the Gecko Moria is gone, so we're gonna go five into life. We are he gonna sensed, take it. He sensed the weak hand on that one. Oh, is it a trigger? It's like this. He's given up on. Is it? Is it great eruption? I imagine he's given up on. Yeah, he's given up on judge, and he already knew. He already knew. He just and we're it. gonna send this Kuzan back actually. To the hand. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to yeah. send Kuzan back to the hand. Oh, my gosh. What a mad lad. He might get it. I mean, we, we give up on Judge, and we probably pressure. But this is the whole thing. This is why I asked the questions, because he's, he's, he's tearing it up, man. Yeah, no, he's going to be able to eat. The whole board is now cleared. Bounce the Kuzan. And now, yeah, your opponent's now sitting with a refreshed hand. And then we're going to be able to, all right, we're going to discard big, big EG. And then, oh, did we finally find Judge? It looks like we finally find Judge, but I don't think we can take it. We can't afford to take it. We need the counter no. power. Wait, no, we oh. don't need the counter. What am I saying? Wait, wait, wait hold on. Cool. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he's not dying next turn, and so he can't afford. But the, the main issue for me is, uh, I mean, he has the Judge in hand now, and we are set at a position. This is disgusting. Um, so right now, Matthew has to, he has to see Aluchi plus removal to get over this board because there is a mm -hmm. very high probability that next turn can be in a full out of salt on life followed by 
potentially uh, another Ichiji play to yep. finish off the score. And that is powerful. Like, honestly, Jackie's a madman. What's our dawn situation? I know. I like, what is our hand? I see two ice ages. Oh. So we're going to be able to Absalom something. Um, But I can't, I can't quite make out rest. I can't make out the hand past the ice ages. Just doing some math. Ice age, ice age, man, that is very. Is it, is it going to be like ice age, ice age, gecko moria? Well, the the worst part about right now is unless there's a Luchi, my eyes can't see. His best play is using Absalom to get rid of something, and that doesn't catch him. That doesn't get him out of the fire. Um, on top of that, I gotta, I gotta, man, I'm really trying my best. Hold up, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm trying my best too. Hold it's up. hard. Um, he's got a two cost, so I believe that's a Helmepo. Okay. Um, the very far card on the uh, on the uh, in his hand looks like it's the Kuzan cost. So yep. yeah, the Kuzan that was bounced, uh, I believe that's a Helmepo, and I can't tell the middle card, but two Ice Ages, uh, a Kuzan, I believe a Helmepo, and then one middle card I cannot quite make out. Okay, so we're going to Helmepo the one Raju. Okay. Bro knows we're trying to see into his hand. Mm -hmm. Like he refu <laughs> he actually refuses no, to let okay. us see. It's okay, it's okay. Is it though? All right, so that's two Dawn, so now... Now, as as Jackie, you're either expecting maybe we're expecting maybe a Gecko Moria to come What's down. That? What's that? What's that? I still can't see it. <laughs> oh, that middle card is juking. Is that another Kuzon? It might be another Kuzon, just a different art. No, I, I, I they they look like the foil looks kind of the same. Oh, it might be the maybe it's just the same card twice. We're gonna attack seven. Where are we attacking seven? That's so key. Where are we? into raid you i we counter out you have he's to counter it. out if he's got it he's got it i see the mother in there yeah you have yeah, the mother and the 1k it's too perfect please counter out yeah he's he's keeping that he has the ability to press so hard next turn and then set up even more you just need the attacks because you can win next turn he knows that jackie i i have faith jackie has made me believe right it's, this is a tough this is a tough choice because it is two cards and you're staring down five dawn He's staring down five dawn, but like his opponent cannot actually beat him this turn. Yeah, and especially since his only attack went into a character, you can just take you just use that attack. Yes. All right. Cool. Sick. Yeah, we're out here. We're out here. We outside. We outside. <laughs> oh, <what's that? laughs> Let me see what's going on here. Man, right. I need to know this card. He is looking so. Yeah, the hand One cam. More. The hand cam trying. Ice age. Okay. Ice Age. Is it a Luchi? It's a Luchi. Oh, oh my god. god. Okay. Wow, he was holding deuces. Oh my gosh. Why did he hold that Luchi so close? We could have never known. And that is the biggest thing. Now I know why he sat so long holding that. Mm -hmm. Because playing this play completely exposes the strength of his hand. His opponent knows. Look at how quickly Jackie is snapping those cards back into place. Because yeah. he knows. This first swing is free. The second swing is close to free. The third swing is going to drop him down to mm -hmm. uh, to zero. Like, and we have right an ECG if we really want, but I think it's just commit the proper amount of dawn to everything, right? Oh no, this no, this is this is absolutely game. Yeah. Like he 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 swings five, it goes through. There's a Kuzan in hand. You know he it's a Kuzan, right? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he swings five again, and whatever he picked up, if it has counter. He's gonna have to drop it. Then he swings with Raju, and that's the last life, no matter what, because he's back at zero cards in hand. And at that point, he's got the ability to go into ETG, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, that's so, it. That's that's game. All right. Raju goes in. We know it's Kuzan, but we have to we have to be a good player and pretend. Easy. Easy. Yep. Okay, no, 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 no. We know that's Kuzan. What is he, this, this is not good play. No, we have to be a good player and pretend. Like, it, it's, it's nah, fair. Jackie's stressed. Like, we have to. <laughs> this is this is, this is is taking time off of the clock. Like, we that's a zero cost, my guy. Or zero, uh, zero counter, but yeah. Okay, we are going to use stage. Get rid of Ichiji in hand. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so like. No, um, wait. I'm paying attention because I see, like, Clyde talking, like, legitimately. It's like he could pick up a 2K, but since that Kuzan's in his hand, the next attack just has to drop the 2K, right? And then, I mean, but I suppose, 
I do suppose if he eats both attacks and happens to get a 2k and a 1k, or a 2K and a 2K, the he's GG is there too, right? Boys. Yeah. Yeah, he knows about the Kuzan because uh, he bounced it with knee, right? So, <laughs> judge to find judge. That doesn't feel good. I mean, it's it's not the worst. <laughs> uh, 2k. I think it's just, yeah, no, actually it's yeah. free. And you know, you're right, because we know about that's, the Kuzan. That's so what I was this, saying. This is attack seven, and then that's you just shut the rest over. of the, 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 the Raju. Yeah. It is, that's what I'm saying. It's it's literally over. He swings into a zero cost or a zero counter, and yeah. that has to go through. He picks up a card. He can, whether he combos out of this one or just doesn't, he's going to have to either drop the only card with uh with counter value and then take the Raju swing the hand. And at that point, he's got one card in hand. Back and in he eight, just spins it. Huh? Attack, we're attacking eight into life. We take it and Wait. yes, rest. And that's oh, Rage you wins. <laughs> hmm? Okay. I mean, he still got there. I was just kind of confused because I was like, he could have swung all three of those like Nike. And that would have been. No, fun. yeah. No, I think, I think in his, in, in the, I think he just for, I, I'm not, I, I believe Jackie just kind of yeah. overthought it that was and good. forgot that, was that good. they sent back the Kuzan. Yeah. And it's been a long day. It's been 12 Absolutely. hours of playing. Oh <laughs> so I can understand him being like tired, but yeah, it's like he had full knowledge of the hand and it looked like he might've forgotten. He's supposed to have full hand. knowledge of the hand. He could have forgotten. Right. And that's why Matthew's correctly like, Oh, you attacked for five. Let me consider countering out or not. Like, you know, you know, <laughs> it's true. That's why I'm saying you gotta be a good player in that situation. It's definitely true. It's definitely true. Um, yeah. Like that was, that was actually, that was that was amazing. Um, right. I really I really did like the end of that. Uh, mm -hmm. It was very unfortunate, and I I like what you picked up on that. The fact that you realized that Matt realized that Jackie had forgotten <laughs> what was in his hand because he sat there and just kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my my silly self was sitting there going, "Oh, it's free!" But he knows. I was like, "Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he knows." Your hand is your hand is blank right now. This is this is easy maths, but. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's definitely the that's what twelve hours of playing can yeah. do. To you. Mm -hmm. So, understandable, understandable. Absolutely. Woo! That was cool. <laughs> that, was, that was so cool. Uh, Raju goes undefeated. I, well, to be fair, unfortunately for Raju players everywhere, this does not mean Raju wins the tournament. We uh, Raju is the champion of the Swiss. And we will be going to a top 32 tomorrow. We're going to a day two. So make sure you guys follow the stream. Get notifications. Click. Because we will be. And, and we're just getting word. Uh, round one starting at 10 a.m. Central time. 11 Eastern. So make sure you guys are here. Make sure you guys are following. Subscribe. Uh, notification bells. Whatever you got to do to be here. Um, follow us on Twitter, too. We, we advertise. <laughs> <a little> bit. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. But, yeah, be back here. 10 a.m. We're going to have a lot of fun matches. We're going to see if Jackie, after a good night of rest, can take this Raju and convert a top cut into a win. But um, I have to ask the voice in the sky. Do you think we can get a – do you think we'll be able to have standings and just see, like, a top uh, a top 32 bubble tomorrow? Okay. So that'll be coming tomorrow. You guys have to wait a little bit to know what exactly converted into top cut but we will be here with the graphics we might even talk about that for a while while everybody's getting settled in see some things about that but yeah this was an excellent run and i am so fun. happy to have shared it with you guys um i know reese's been happy we've been, we've been chatting whether we've <laughs> yeah. been on camera or off camera we've been chatting about this all day this really is the biggest most skill intensive one piece tournament that's happened since nats we are normally sitting at eight to nine rounds of you know best of one swiss this is 10 rounds of best of one Swiss. If you got into top cut, you know, you always earn it. You always earn it. But this is a definitive line. If you played yeah. your heart out and went X2, you still have a chance of playing it out. Winning the whole after you, thing. Like, yeah, getting, yeah, you, you, well, X2, I wonder if you're going to make it in the top 16 X2. There's a lot of people here. So it still might be an I know X2. 64 game. is guaranteed, but I think 32 is, it gets yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think we're cutting the top 16 for the plays because it's, uh, it's four rounds, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to see the top of the X1s play it out. But this is just, this is skill intensive tournament. And now we have the top cut. So people really get to grind even harder. This is going to be awesome. So I can't wait That's to see dope. you guys there. And, uh, you know, like it's, it was great. Peak. 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 All right. Well, that's been us. I'm Reese the Squirrel. He's Universe X. Play TCG. Thanks for having us. Brock and the Ramen Bowl. Thanks for putting on the production show. Great job. Uh, it was cool to see the new setup. 
cool to see Reiju Goteno. I think we're just gonna we're gonna close out the show here. So fade us away <laughs> one last time, Brock. Unless you got anything to ghost in on. No. See you guys tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.